Alrighty, I believe that means we are set up. That means it is time for me to throw it over to Freedom Pulse for the Shin Megami Tensei Digital, Digital Devil Saga 2 any percent speed run. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what up everyone? It's me, Freedom Pulse here, bringing you Digital Devil Saga 2, the second game in the Digital Devil Saga spin-off series of the Shin Megami Tensei games. Uh, I will be taking you through this wonderful, wonderful game today. And today joining me, I have my commentator. I'm Zero Blade Edge. And uh, our other most important commentator here, we have our, uh, our good friend Hiho right here. Uh, here, to, uh, here to cheer us on and maybe throw some shade if things don't go well. <laughs> he's, a, he's a very, uh, has, a, has a mouth on him. So we'll, yeah. uh, we'll try, to, try to hopefully keep it PG, okay? Got it? Okay. All right, <laughs> without further ado, we will uh, be needing to close off the fifth character bid war now uh, because I have to do that before the uh, lock that in before the run starts. Uh, so uh, if I can get that in now, I think I don't think there's been any change unless some like Roland's like three fans have uh, come out of the woodwork <laughs> here. Let me give it one last refresh just to make sure. And yep, that is heat in the lead with $30. We will get right. that bid war closed. Yes. So we will be, uh, those of you who don't know, this game does have a data transfer feature with uh, the first game. Normally we don't do data transfer at all uh, in these speed runs, but if you do tra do a data transfer from a completed save file, you have the option to use heat from the first game as your last party member in the final dungeon. So we'll be, uh, we'll be showcasing that for you all tonight. I just have right here, this is a 100% save file. This isn't what we're going to be using. We're going to be using this file. This was just a random any percent save I made once upon a time. So we'll be getting heat, but we'll basically, we won't be getting any of the other super broken stuff you get for a data transfer. Just a, you know, little fun continuity. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll be loading this up and time is going to be when I confirm my difficulty. So we will be getting started here in three, two, one, one go. go. All right. So Digital Devil Saga 2 picks up like pretty immediately after the first one ends for, for those who weren't able to catch Pink Pajamas run of this game back in 2018. Uh, essentially, we play as Surf and his, uh, his tribe, the Vanguard, as they... They fought to conquer this purgatorial world. Essentially, DDS-1 is like the Matrix, and DDS-2 is like Matrix Reloaded, except this is actually a good video <laughs> game. So, uh, By the way, this event cannot be skipped, Frito. Yeah, th this event can't be skipped. Uh, you can skip most of the cutscenes in this game. Any cutscene that has a dialogue option in it, uh, you are unable to skip entirely. So uh, the game lets you know, and sometimes I just absentmindedly press the start button. So uh, be sure in chat that uh, if you see this pop up repeatedly to, uh, to just uh, let everyone know this event cannot be skipped. So the whole reason that we can't skip this event is because Surf forgot to how, how to shake hands. Yeah. So it's that simple. <laughs> a lot of the time there's like some important decision that has to be made. Very few of them have any actual impact on the game. But uh, we'll see. This one is, is rather funny. But uh, yeah, this game picks up right after DDS1 ends, uh, where we now find ourselves in the real world. Uh, and are immediately attacked by these Karma Society soldiers and find the, these kids here who are hiding from them. And they kind of fill us in on what's going on. We are, uh, we're located in the desolate and dreary and threatening landscape of Portland, Oregon. And you heard me right, this game takes place in Oregon, of all places. And uh, yeah, basically the five years ago before the events of this game started, uh, some great tragedy occurred that caused the sun to turn black and basically anyone who's directly exposed to the sun gets turned to stone. And uh, this caused the form basically collapse of society as a whole and the formation of the Karma Society in its place who have a, uh, you know, rule the world with an iron grip and are basically uh, their rule is enforced by soldiers who have the same ability to turn into demons that the party has. Essentially, the party was infected with a virus that allows them to uh, change into demons and use magic and all cool stuff. And apparently the Karma Society has access to that virus as well. We'll later find out the reason they do is because we were essentially the test subjects for that, but we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. We're 
basically, we want to find, we only have three of our, of our five main people with us right now. It's a surf wheat, and then we have Argilla and Gale with us. We want to find our friends Cielo and Heat. And so we're, we're talking to this kid here, his name is Fred, that essentially we want, to, we want to infiltrate the society to see if we can locate our friends. And right now, uh, Gale is, uh, you know, convincing Fred to uh, take us to the leader of the human resistance against the Karma Society. All right, I'll take you guys rolling. And so here, this is the reason why, we, uh, why we're incapable of skipping this cutscene, because he offers us a handshake as a means of truth, as a truce, excuse me, and uh, we're just like, you know what, break the wrist, walk away. And he's like, no, that's, that's not what you do here. What the heck? Um, that's Surf. He's the leader of our tribe. All right. I'm Argilla. Mr. Personality here is Gale. Mr. Personality here. You'll, you'll notice that a lot that Gale is very much Mr. Personality. He is the, the stoic, real hero of this game. Uh, Gale is the main character of the DDS games. So now Fredo's going to walk through this apartment complex, grab a few treasures, and be on the way. Yeah, so, so in this room here, there's some chakra drops. Uh, MP restorative items in this game are fairly common, but uh, less than, more common than you would think, but less common than you would hope. Uh, especially because later on we're going to be using very expensive spells, because, you know, more expensive spells tend to be pretty strong. So we're, we're going to be needing to uh, just stock up on our MP items, mm -hmm. and, and pretty soon here we'll be getting into our first fight where we can explain, uh, explain this game's battle system and why I and uh, many others love the SMT game so much. We're just making our way downtown, climbing ladders not quite fast. Here, Fred tells us, like, hey, this is a terminal you can save here. And uh, also later <laughs> on we're able to download uh, skills from there. But uh, here we get our first fight. Where these soldiers are like, if you start tuning, we'll know. And we're like, what are you talking about? And then they transform into birds, as one does. And so now we're introduced to combat in this game. So this game utilizes the, uh, the press turn battle system that a lot of SMT games tend to use. Uh, essentially, you get a number of turn actions equal to the number of, party of members you have in your party. Uh, so you essentially get one action per, per round of combat you are able to uh, pass with characters in order to uh, essentially give yourself an extra half blinking turn there. And later on, we'll see that if you're able to hit the weakness of an enemy, you're able, or get a critical hit in a physical attack, uh, that you are able to turn that one full press turn into like a blinking half turn as well. And so essentially the entire uh, combat mechanics in this game revolve around just getting as many turns as you possibly can to just wipe out enemies very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, Likewise, though, you can lose turns if you miss enemies or if you hit something that they null or reflect or etc. So we're, we're going to be watching out for that. Uh, specifically, we're going to be watching out for it on Gale. So it, it's a bit of a meme in this game that, uh, that our friend Gale has, uh, has a bit of an accuracy problem. It's uh, established his uh, his human form in the because uh, everyone in this game is a recreation of, of someone else in uh, pre in the years prior events that uh gail's previous uh person needed glasses and that is <laughs> demonstrated very well by our dear friend's ability to hit things so uh, what Zero is holding here is, is, a, uh, is right now a blank counter that will hopefully stay blank for a while, but you, you never know. Uh, every time Gale misses, we will be donating $2 to charity. At least I will. Uh... I'm doing $1 for every miss, and we encourage you to do the same. Yeah, so uh, thankfully Gale did not whip his first <laughs> attack, which uh, <laughs> can't say is, uh, is the norm. Oh, he hit Depends. again. Yay, all right. So after each, um, or for each level up that you get, at least for Surf, you'll see Frito get three points. He can dump that into anything that he wants. The other two characters are balanced. Uh, uh, well, their, their levels are fixed. They're not their, balanced. Their levels are fixed. That's what I meant. Uh, but we're going to go pure magic uh, because in SMT, DDS 1 and 2, and um, among other games, magic is very busted. So we'll be able to uh, pretty much... Make Surf a glass cannon, we'll put some points into vitality, but we're gonna go pure magic and just, you'll see by the end of the game, Surf will have a lot more MP than HP. Yeah, to, to help summarize, see so you grasp the scope of just how ridiculous magic is in this game. Uh, 
magic determines, you know, obviously your magic attack. It also determines your maximum MP that you can have. Uh, and then we get to other stuff that it does. It impacts your magic accuracy, so more magic you miss less, which is pretty cool when you're punished so heavily for missing. Uh, also, it impacts your magical defense. So not only will we be hitting like a truck, we also won't mm -hmm. really be getting hurt by a whole lot magic-wise. Uh, to contrast that <laughs> with, uh, with Fizz, which is, you know, generally the other route you would go, uh, strength, your, your, just your Fizz power is impacted by strength, and that's all that does. Your Fizz accuracy is agility, which agility also slightly impacts your magic accuracy, but not enough that just going all in on magic won't, you know, overpower that. Uh, your physical defense and HP is determined by your vitality stat. So magic essentially does in like one stat, one and a half stats, what uh, it requires Fizz 3 to accomplish. So uh, yeah, this game just doesn't like Fizz very much, and uh, as a result, neither do we. So we're going to go all in on <laughs> magic, because that's cool. So you'll see Frito just reverted uh, with Argilla. This is to do the combo Earth Shot. We'll get more into combos later when they matter. Oh... That's fine. <laughs> but uh, basically, it uh, it takes two or th all three party members uh, to do an attack, and it has to have certain requirements met. Once you have those requirements, you'll go into the next battle, and it'll be when that character's turn pops up, it'll say, hey, you've learned XYZ combo attacks. Do you notice that I saved before that fight? <laughs> yes. Uh, so that fight's supposed to be really easy. You just revert Argilla, you're in no danger of dying, and you win. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I've lost more runs than I can count to, uh, to that fight. Uh, <laughs> so we saved I've seen because, it. Uh, because that's the smart thing to do in this situation. Uh, I actually have to use a chakra drop here on Gale. We've been getting a lot of fights really early on, and so his MP is kind of low. Uh, and this fight is more bugaboos who are weak to force but resist ice. Uh, this is where the game is going to give us the tutorial on void skills. Uh, essentially... Uh, I believe this is where we're getting that tutorial. Might have been earlier and I wasn't paying attention. One of the two. But, I, I might have missed it too. But uh, essentially, in this game, you have, uh, in addition to your attacks, you have, you know, a, a myriad of other abilities, uh, including in this game, you have void skills, where essentially you can use, like, void ice on Surf, for example, to put up a uh, force nullifying wall for that turn. So if any enemy crashes into that with an ice skill, then they just lose two turns, which is pretty cool. Uh, we will be making use of those primarily against bosses. Uh, void skills are also important because that's where we get the ability to do combos from. Uh, uh, essentially, in order to initiate a combo, you have to have two characters that meet a, rec a certain requisite skills in order to do that. So in the case of like Earthshot, which is what we've seen so far, uh, we needed Argilla to be in human form and we needed uh, the other person to have a void element skill. So in that case, you know, human argilla plus void anything is earth shot, and there's a tier two and tier three version if you have like the repel and the drain version of that spell as well. Whoops, hitting my mic. And then we uh, will get a lot of combos. Combos are a super important part of the battle system of this game, and honestly, one of the reasons why I love the DDS games so much. Uh, because there's a lot of very, very cool things you can do with combos. You can get access to uh, a lot of abilities earlier than you would be able to otherwise, which just gives you a lot more uh, freedom of expression with your, your play style through these games. So going through here, we're going to check this random shelf here and pick up a medical kit. Medical kits restore 150 HP to your entire party, which is very, very good for a lot of the game because we... Uh, are not going to be putting very much. Oops, we're not going to be putting very much HP on Surf for a while. So 150 HP is going to be a full heal for a lot of our party for uh, quite a quite a long time. Birds. And, yeah, birds. And while we're going through here, we're uh, we're going to be finding encounters just enough so that Argilla would be able to learn her mantra from the uh, from a forced encounter that's coming up here pretty soon. So essentially, the way skill learning in this game works, you see that in the battle menu, we have like two columns there. We have our, our level, which is gained through karma, which is just the, this game's fancy way of saying experience points. And then you have your mantras. Uh, essentially, uh, if you've ever played FF9, you where you would like equip a skill or you, you know, you equip a piece of armor that has a skill on it. And then once you get enough AP, you learn that skill. Similar thing here, mantras are like titles. You equip the title and as you gain AP, you work towards mastering that title. And once you have it mastered, you learn the skills and you can 
uh, set or unset that skill at your leisure. So here all of our characters start with certain skills. Gale started with Dragon, which has Xan, which is a force element skill on it. He learned that very quickly. Uh, Argilla is working on a mantra called Earth Spirit, which has an Earth Elemental uh, spell Terra on it, in addition to the Void Earth spell. Both of those are going to be essential for the upcoming boss fight. Oh, so here there was this whole thing where this guy was holding a was holding a man captive, and it's like, if you don't surrender to us, we'll kill the captive, and then as soon as we go over there to surrender, he just kills the captive anyway, and we're like, oh, well, I guess we'll just beat you then. Good talk. So, nice distance. So whenever you level up in this game, uh, you or any of your party members, you gain the, uh, you have a chance of a random effect occurring, uh, which is either you find an item, you get a full heal, HP, MP, etc., cetera, uh, or you can find a, uh, you can find a random item, or you can get a random stat point. Uh, random stat points are interesting. Uh, because they're random, they're something we never really want to focus on. Uh, but, you know, if we get certain stat points, it's cool. Uh, extra vit on anyone is always very nice. Uh, extra magic on uh, on anyone is also pretty cool. Extra strength points are uh, situationally kind of okay. Hello, Tarask. What are you doing here? Uh, and pretty much any other stat, we just kind of laugh. Uh, especially luck. Uh, luck is really bad. And so uh, that means you get luck points all the time, and you just kind of chuckle at uh, that the run is blessed. All right, so here we change. You notice we changed our party order again. Uh, your turn order in this game is determined entirely by your party order. So here we wanted to move Argilla to the middle. That way we're able to do this Earthshot combo, get rid of this bird here, uh, and then basically just optimally deal with this encounter. And it'll be reinforced by the Tarask, you know, that giant turtle thing. And Dungeons and Dragons is one of the strongest monsters known to man. And here it's a turtle in the first dungeon. So, uh, you know, pretty much we're like the coolest D&D &D adventurers you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, going into a lot of random encounters, Frito already knows the weaknesses, so he's able to take care of the encounter quickly. And we've just got Terra and Void Earth on Argilla and Surf Learn Devour. Uh, so now this is the social eating part of the stream. <laughs> yes, uh, anyone who's been around my streams this, when I play these games, I, uh, I stream with the social eating tag because I find it funny. You did it forever until I noticed it, and I was like, that's the best joke ever. All right, so we now that we have our mantras learned, we don't need to fight anything else. In fact, I'm going to change my party here now. We're going to set Terra here, Void Earth here, and we're going to keep going. Surf so got a, a mantra with, called Devourer. That has the mon the ability to devour on it. We'll get into that into the next in the next dungeon what uh, what those abilities do. But for now, we're just going to be running from uh, running from fights and hoping we don't get into a million mm -hmm. encounters. Uh, these games and the other SMT games are rather infamous for their encounter rates uh, because the your encounter threshold is has a very low. I think I don't even know if it even has a minimum of the uh, encounter, the like minimum steps per your next encounter that you can get. So you can just, you know, get like five encounters and 10 steps and be like, oh, well, this is cool. Or you can go like a whole minute without getting a single encounter. So it's, it's very random. And so we'll be seeing throughout the run, hopefully we will be getting exactly the number of encounters we need, <laughs> no more and no less. Uh, sure. And now while we're, while we're picking some stuff up, some items up here and uh, about to go to the first boss, we can throw it over to, to Ghoul real quick. Alrighty, we have a $75 donation from Revenant saying, Hey Freedom, awesome to see you running not once, but twice this event. You're amazing and you'll knock the run out of the park. $75 now towards singing the ending and another 100 later if you can beat the hard mode score <laughs> target in the shmup. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rav. I appreciate it. Uh, unfortunately, your money is probably safe, but I really appreciate that. Well, uh... The, the shmup incentive has already been met, so we'll do that as soon as it's available to us, which will be uh, about an hour into the, uh, like, yeah, about an hour into the run. Hour and a half-ish. We have $25 from Ema Cooney that just says, Heat did nothing wrong. <laughs> I agree 100%. <laughs> Get this man off my couch. <laughs> you invited me! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we uh, we have to explain the first boss. We'll uh, we'll throw it back over in a minute. But this is the first boss of the game. This is Vitala, uh, world's swollest elephant. And uh, essentially, uh, a lot of the bosses in this game will have ads with them that generally, one, as long as they're alive, they will put up a barrier. Uh, like we mentioned before, we were using barriers. Bosses can use them too. And so our goal through a lot of these fights is to just kill the adds as quickly as possible and then focus down the boss. So here you see uh, Vital is weak to Earth and then the, uh, well, that was rude. 
The birds throw out a uh, void void force. Also, uh, love love Vitala's pose. It's great. Uh, just flexing on us. That's that's why they got the crit. We're just too intimidated by his flexing. Right. But the cool thing about the battle system is. What applies to you with your press turns and such also apply to the enemy. But Frito can work around a lot of that. Yeah, so the birds are weak to force, so we're just going to be chipping them down. I'm going to be trying to keep my party members at a somewhat good HP amount. He can kill us from about 25, so I'd really rather keep everyone, you know, as much as possible. Uh, one hit on him on Surf and Argilla will put them at that threshold, so. Ideally, that doesn't happen. You just got rushed. There we go, and now nice. we are next turn. We're gonna be good to start uh, focusing down the boss. And he's just gonna keep attacking Argilla. That's cool, I guess. All right, so we're good to start using our Zan spells again. Uh, Surf is going to continue to use ice here because the uh, everything in this fight's neutral to ice, which is very nice. Uh, really quick to the tech. Can I actually get the game turned up just a little bit? My next move will crash you into the ground at your feet. We've uh, decided that uh, this boss sounds like Arnold because, of course, he does. You know, he's a body bodybuilder elephant. Of course, he sounds like Arnold. There we go. So something to something to note that before this run started, I turned on witness the fury of my body. I turned on the uh, auto memory ability, which uh, essentially means that whenever I press the triangle button, and you see that auto on. My characters will all repeat whatever their last action was, which is uh, very very nice. Casually, it's not something I really ever used at all, uh, but in the speedrun, it's nice when you're doing the exact same thing over and over again to uh, to just know that your characters are gonna do what you want them to do. And it, uh, you know, saves some time on inputting, even if you're like mashing with turbo. Right. So you, uh, if you could watch, if you've been watching the uh, damage that Mr. Elephant was taking before he uh, died there, you'll notice that it went from white to red. That's Frito's indicator that he's almost done with the boss fight. Yeah. So any enemy in this game, bosses included, will uh, their the damage numbers will turn red when they're at 25% HP or lower. Uh, so that's just our indication that the, the fights are near dead. Uh, also, many fights in this game will also, uh, bosses at least, will have like a, a flinching or like a, a slumping animation when they're low health as well, which is pretty cool. Dungeon 1 and no Gale marks. Wow, that uh, has to be a new record, actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of you, Gale. Good job, Gale. All right, so here we're going to be uh, in for... <laughs> What is one of the most important cutscenes in the game for explaining DDS1, and it's entirely skippable? Yeah, we couldn't skip the first cutscene because Surf didn't know what a handshake is, so that's cool. Uh, essentially, there is when uh, we meet Roland, who is the leader of the Lokapala, and he explains to us that uh, basically the entirety of DDS1 was a simulation, uh, goes all Morbius on us, and we... Uh, we're pretty upset about that. He also tells us, like, hey, by the way, we know where we know where Sarah is, aka the Cyber Shaman. She's the one that created the the virtual world and is partially responsible for the disaster that took place many years ago. Uh, but if you want to to find, we know where she is. But if you want to find her and save her, then you have to help us rescue a bunch of uh, prisoner of wars from a containment facility or from a yeah from a, a facility that they're using that the Karma Society is using to. Uh, to process food. So we're doing our shop here. This game uses a point system where uh, every uh, $100, this game uses US dollars, even though the uh, you know currency is a little out of whack. I also wasn't supposed to buy disc stones there, but it's fine. Uh, the uh, Every 100 points or $100 is one point towards uh, ranking your shop up. When you rank your shop up, I also forgot to buy revival beads, you uh, gain access to more stuff, you can sell items for more money, etc. Uh, it's very cool, we have our, uh, our shops routed out so that we get access to those, uh, to those benefits as we need them. Uh, also to note, I mentioned we get pretty minimal benefits from the data transfer we're doing to get heat in our party. Uh, one slight like asterisk to that, 
is that if you finish DDS1 with over a million Maka, which is the currency that game uses, that you have an extra 10k to your starting wealth in this game. Uh, which is really, really cool starting out. It becomes not a whole lot of money later on, but it does, uh, it does mean that those disc stuns that I bought on accident don't really affect my money rat at all. Uh, it also means that, uh, for you know, the sake of the marathon, because in the, in the any percent run, Roland sees, like, no use at all. Uh, and so, you know, to make it more worth y'all's while, we, we kind of routed out some fights to, uh, to, include, to include our, uh, our friend Roland slash Heat. Uh, in the final dungeon so which does involve buying a couple of extra mantras than we would otherwise so having the extra 10k is is very nice uh to explain the mantra grid where that you saw i was at uh in this game the mantra grid works sort of like the license board in final fantasy 12 where you you grab your mantra and mastering that mantra unlocks all of the surrounding hexagons around it and that's how you kind of navigate the mantra grid uh, and it's very cool. You have a lot of, uh, again, just one of the things I love about this game is uh, freedom of expression in your character builds. Because you're able to do a lot of really cool things with how you move around the grid. Because because you master all surrounding mantras and there's a lot of mantras that are co-linked to each other, you're able to uh, to just navigate the grid and do very cool things with the, the skills that you learn. So there we picked up a couple mantras for our characters. Surf picked up the fire spirit mantra so that he can learn the Agi spell, which is the fire elemental spell. Uh, Argilla gained Ice Spirit, so she can also get access to Ice Spells. And Gale got the Devourer Mantra, which is something that Surf learned and will we can explain in a fight or two. But uh, most of these abilities, like Gale learning Devourer is important because uh, he's going to be doing some hunting later and uh, we need him to have Devour. Uh, for most everyone else, we're working our way towards our endgame build. Uh, Argilla will eventually be like a primarily a fire mage slash healer. Uh, Surf is gonna be all over the place. He's our main character. He's gonna need the most mantras on him. Uh, but right now, primarily a lot of the stuff we want is we want combo pieces. Like we mentioned, combos are really good and having access to uh, two set combos is very good uh, early on. So now that we've, uh, once we got uh, Terra learned on Argilla. We unlocked the Mabufu combo. Ma is essentially the prefix that uh, indicates that you uh, the, it's an area of effect attack. So with uh, Terra on Argilla plus Bufu on Surf, we're able to use Mabufu. And our goal is to just get as many of those combos as we can uh, early on. We also get rings. Can you explain rings for me while I'm doing this? Yeah, so... Um it, unlike the first game, we have the ability to put rings on. Rings boost power, magic, or strength, magic, and other stats. But, it, like most RPGs, they have slots. So Frito's going to be doing certain things throughout the run to get gems or crystals. or uh, There's many different levels to them. But we're going to be pretty much putting swapping rings all the time. But we're able to buff them with crystals and get them more power without having to worry about pushing as many points into Surf because we've only got Vitality. We're going to be doing Magic and Vitality, but we can actually add more Magic to Surf and other characters. So it's really a useful thing to have. Yeah, so from that first fight there, we got the Power Ring, which gives us uh, a couple extra points of strength, which is going to be very useful because we haven't put any points into Surf's strength, but we're actually going to be using some uh, physical adjacent skills here. and. We need Surf to do as much damage as possible here, so that's why it's so nice. So here we uh, we run into some two uh, two friendly water snakes here. Okay, I guess they're not friendly because they're using no. Palimpa. Palimpa is is awful. The antithesis of friendly. Mm -hmm. So here we are going to be healing that, and these snakes are weak to force and fire. We're going to be hitting it into low HP. This might kill. Nope. So basically what we're going to be doing here is uh, there is a, a subtype of, abil of physical abilities in this game called hunt skills, uh, where essentially what they do is, in this case, Devour makes a weak physical attack against an enemy. And if that attack uh, finishes off the enemy, uh, then that you will see the, char the enemy gets devoured by the character which essentially means that the character who did the Devour gets all of the AP from that enemy to themselves in addition to a, uh, a bonus Devour AP. So here throughout this dungeon, Surf needs more mantras uh, at the moment than Argilla and Gale do. And so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be devouring a couple enemies to get this mantra that Surf is working on done immediately. 
And then we're going to be grabbing another mantra and devouring one more time so that Surf is then caught up with uh, Argilla and Gale's progress, uh, synced up, I guess is a better word, mm -hmm. with Argilla and Gale's progress on the mantras they're working on currently. Also, every time Frito devours a water snake, that is y'all's reminder to take a drink of water. Yes, staying hydrated is very important in general, especially uh, during the summer. I had a whole thing uh, prepared about staying hydrated during the, the hot summer months, but it actually rained today and has been very cool. So that's been nice. <laughs> uh, I mean, look at Hiho here. He, he was a whole snowman and now he is a he head. So uh, remember, stay hydrated, stay cool out there is my reminder to drink some water. There is my water bottle. There it is. While you're getting a drink, do we have time for a quick donation? Absolutely. We have $101 from Lisa saying, thank you, RPG Limit Break, for hosting a great show and for a great cause. Tommy Hype, shout out to Ghoul02 for hosting DDS and his choice for incentive. Thanks again. Uh, my choice is going to be, of course, I want to hear some singing later on in this run. So I hope... Uh, Pulse and Zero Blade have their vocal cords ready for that, because we're going to hit that incentive. We're at, right now, 374 of the $500 for that, so we are so close, y'all. Oh, I didn't need to do that. Eh, yeah, whatever, it's fine. So I was telling Frito um, when we were doing the practice run, you learn something new about SMT every time you see it. I did not know this demon had legs behind him the whole time, and I've been playing this game since I was a teenager. So there's your fun fact for the day. And Fire Spirits mastered, so now we have Augie and Void Fire. Yeah, so we're going to do a quick menu here. We're going to put Surf in the front of our party, since he is our main damage dealer, and he has the most sources of damage now. So we're going to throw him in the front, and we conveniently mastered that mantra right in front of another terminal. So we're going to be grabbing Surf's next ability. Surf is going to be grabbing the Earth Spirit mantra, which Argilla has learned, so that he also can, uh, can rock people's world, so to speak, with uh, Terra. Uh, one neat thing about the Mantra Grid in this game is that the, the way it works as far as advancement is that you see we mastered a mantra that was kind of at the ed edge of the ring. I'm going to save. Uh, that we mastered a mantra that was kind of at the edge of the ring there, and then the Mantra Grid expanded. It does that a couple of times to show, you know, like, hey, you're progressing the grid, and it's a really cool touch. So we'll be, we'll be getting, uh, expanding the Mantra Grid as we go. Uh, we're just going to be running here through the uh, underwater cable. This dungeon has a lot of like a lot of back and forth with uh, how the dungeon mechanics work. Especially, uh, essentially, this entire dungeon's gimmick is backtracking. We have these uh, we have these doors that open that are opened by pressing switches. Some some doors require pressing two switches. Some are just one. And when we do uh, open them, uh, generally there's just a lot of back and forth involved with with them because sometimes you have to travel to a place to open a door that's in a different location and go back to that so this dungeon has a, has a lot of backtracking so uh while we're while we're walking in here up to the next uh, mini boss fight we can uh throw it over to ghoul for a little bit more we have another 25 dollars donations from runesworn saying so glad i finished my first playthrough of dds2 this morning so i can stay up and watch this run good luck on the run freedom yo thank you rune Another $25 towards that 500 that we need for the singing incentive. We are so close. It's, I think it's $394 now? $399. So just $104, y'all. Yeah, the credit song, it's, it's a very, very cool song. Uh, I kind of came up with the incentive uh, Watching, you know, watching a lot of, you know, Final Fantasy X runners, a lot of uh, Dragon Quest runners, where, you know, when they would PB, if the the song, the, if the game they were playing, you know, had a credit theme with a vocal track, they would celebrate their uh, their personal best by singing the credits theme. And, you know, I thought that was really cool when I started running this game and realized that this game also has a, a vocal track to the credits theme. So it kind of became a a celebratory occasion to me to. To be like, yeah, I got an awesome PB in this run. Let's uh, sing the credits theme. And, you know, this is a pretty celebratory occasion. This is an awesome event for an awesome cause. And so I uh, would love to uh, to sing the song for you all. All right, we can uh, throw it back to you for a tiny bit. We're just, we're here we're going to get to the, the point where essentially these soldiers uh, cut the wires to this uh, to this computer so we can't open the doors. Thankfully, we uh, we know that there's a repairman around here somewhere. Unfortunately, the repairman was like three or four rooms back, so now we have to go back to 
back to the repairman to ask him to to fix these uh, these wires for us. So we're we're just going to be backtracking. So back to you, Ghoul. I do want to have a quick reminder that we are donating towards an incredible cause. RPG Limit Break is raising money for NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness, which was formed in 1979 as a grassroots advocacy organization by a group of parents whose children suffered with serious mental illnesses, and NAMI has maintained that focus to its day. Uh, we've been supporting them ever since our first event, and we're very, very happy to continue to support them. And again, we have some fantastic prizes. This is the last chance to get in for those Kingdom Hearts Perlers, the all-in-one kit and the Kingdom Hearts 2 copy. That is a $5 minimum donation for the Perlers, a $5 minimum donation for the Kingdom Hearts 2 PS2 copy, and a $20 donation for the Kingdom Hearts All-in-One signed by the voice actor for Ansem, Richard Epcar. So get those donations in and they could be read live on the air. How's our social eating progress going, by the way? Uh, we have uh, sufficiently uh, stuffed our face for the time being. We are quite satisfied. I mean, I could go for a snack. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're done eating for now. We'll uh, trust me. There will be there will be plenty of social eating upcoming. But uh, here we just got our mantras learned just in time to buy some more. This is where most of our money is going to go yeah. in this game is to uh, is to our mantras because skills are pretty important. Uh, levels in this game, of course, are very nice, but the the you know the big meat and potatoes of this run, really, uh, so to speak, uh, we're we're apparently just gonna keep rolling with the food references here, uh, is our magic and the abilities that we're able to cast as we you know move into having like tier two abilities, tier three abilities, and so on and so forth. And we got a reinforcement. Those are actually pretty rare in this game, so that's fun. I will say though, this ha this game has some quality of life changes over DDS1 that make it a lot smoother for a beginner SMT player. Uh, one of those big ones that you'll see Frito use a lot is the recover button, which should be in every RPG, in my opinion. It just uh, it automatically heals your party with whoever has a healing spell, so that's pretty helpful. And yes, say a wise Dragon Quest speedrunner once told me, always Montan. Uh, Montan is the, the term they use in uh, DQRTA for, you know, maintain, maintenance, or heal. Yeah. So uh, always Montan. Right, here, Gail is going to be grabbing Ice Spirit. Uh, you are going to be grabbing Bolt Spirit for Zeo, which is the final element we have not seen yet, electricity. And Argilla is going to be going for Agi to begin her journey as a fire mage, despite being the earth elemental character in our party. We uh, we tend to not uh, follow the the assigned <laughs> elemental roles for our, our party members in this game. And DDS one, uh, Surf being our uh, our ice uh, ice character weak to fire, we just go all in on making him a fire mage. Uh, in this game, we uh, we're just going to be all over the place with our affinities. I think Gale will actually be. Uh, Will will be a force. Uh, will be a force user, but otherwise, uh, not to be confused with Jedi's. He, he's going to use force skills. Yes. Uh, but otherwise, people are going to be all over the place. So there was a three-person combo there that you just saw called Micro Nova. That's a perfect example of the uh, the combination that takes all three press turns, but it gives you a lot of damage back because it's almighty. Yeah, so almighty skills in this game, we won't be seeing a ton of them because they, they tend to, uh, while they are initially like very powerful here, like Micronovas, they do have some drawbacks to them. Uh, almighty skills are, are usually magic skills that will, uh, that have the benefit of ignoring resistances of any kind and including going around uh, any sort of magic barriers or anything. So that's really cool. Unfortunately, because they are, you know, unelemental, they, you can't hit weakness with them, and they're generally a lot more expensive than uh, regular spells. With combos, you're spending MP on all of your characters. And Micronova either costs eight or 10 MP from every character that uses it, so 10, yeah. So uh, it gets very expensive if uh, we use it a lot. So we really only use it as like a last resort or if there's a fight like that one where it's, uh, where we can't really deal with the encounter quickly otherwise. But uh, it is good that we have it as a resource available to us. Mm -hmm. So there, we, we rescued the uh, the repairman from from those Karma Society soldiers, and we're like, hey, so uh, we have this problem. The uh, Karma soldiers kind of snipped the wires on the. Did I grab my new mantras on everyone? I did, yes. Uh, on one of the on one of the devices, so we can't move forward. 
And so, you know, he's like, oh, okay, sounds good. So we go over here and he's like, oh, here's the problem. It's like, yeah, yeah, we see the, the problem. That, that wasn't the, the concern, but... But thank you anyway, we appreciate it. Now we can hit this button and we can uh, continue with the dungeon. By the way, for everybody, update on Gale. He is still not missed. I am very surprised. <laughs> you know what else never misses? What is that? Uh, your singing incentive. It just got met. Woo! Nice. Let's go. On a related note, we do have a $101 donation from Zenitario that just says, singing? Yes, please. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all so much for meeting that. I am very <laughs> excited to uh, to be able to showcase the, the credits theme for y'all. Ooh, Berserk Mode. My favorite theme in the game. So um, when it hits seven, if you notice up at the top left corner, there is a solar noise gauge. When it's between 7th, 8th, and max, there's a chance that you will enter the next encounter in Berserk State. Well, it's like a half transform state. Pretty much, uh, if you attack and you hit, it's a guaranteed critical, but you'll see Frito take maybe it's one. It's not guaranteed. It's oh, very likely. Very likely. Um, but you'll, you'll see Frito maybe take one shot, and if it doesn't hit, we're out of here because it's 100% run rate as well. Yeah, so you have 100% run rate. You deal a lot more damage. Your, your physical attacks become like an almighty physical, uh, which leads to some pretty funny things. There's a lot of you know <laughs> enemies in these games that traditionally in every SMT game is uh, Knolls or Repels physical, and it's, it's very funny to... Uh, I still have a comics on right, yeah. To be able to just like like punch Gira Makala or something, which anyone who's played SMT knows that you, you don't punch the elephant. It's not a good no, idea. No, not at all. Unless you're in berserk mode, apparently. <laughs> you can you can punch all the elephants you want. Wouldn't recommend it, but uh, you know, live your life. We're uh... another thing with berserk mode, like Zero said, your accuracy is heavily lowered. Uh, and the enemies all also do way more damage to you. So, like Zero said, if I get into Berserk mode, I'll usually just take a pot shot to see. It's like, oh, well, can I kill this encounter? If I miss, I'll immediately run away in terror because uh, we don't want to die. And Because if you miss, you use up two press turns, and we yes. don't want that to happen. Oh, uh, if you look up at the top right here, Frito just got a clover. Clover and other flowers in this game sell for a good chunk of money, so we're pretty glad to see that. Yeah, so this game's the last game you had cells as your sellable item, which is always fun to tell people to sell their cells. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, in this game, they're plants. Uh, the other fun tag to stream this game with is the plants tag. Uh, because, you know, the world's in a uh, pretty bad state. You know, the, the black hole sun, black hole sun. The black sun has been. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I, been... I don't even have chat up, but I can just see the chat now. <laughs> <laughs> and wash away the rain. Uh, Will has uh, turned, uh, you know, turned people to stone. It's also like, you know, killed plant life that's not behind like the dome. Uh, if the last game was uh, was this was uh, the Matrix, this game is also the Simpsons movie uh, because the solution to you know the sun killing everything was to just put a dome over every uh, over our problems. I never even put those two together until now, <laughs> and now I can never watch this Simpsons movie again. Because <laughs> I'm going to be like, oh hey, this happened in DDS too, and then whoever's watching it with me is going to go, huh? <laughs> and then I'm going to have to make them play DDS too. <laughs> So Which since, isn't a bad thing. Yeah, it's a very good game. So since plants are so rare, that becomes our like our sellable item, that the item that exists solely to uh, to increase our money, which is pretty cool. You you usually don't get very many of them in this dungeon since technically the mechanic hasn't been introduced to us yet. But you can uh, occasionally get clovers from those guy wands, which is pretty nice. Yeah. And I can also guarantee nobody will ready, be riding a motorcycle on this dome, and I do apologize. All right, so this fight can be a little spooky. These shadows here can, uh, their, their general game plan is to try to shock one of your party members and then buff their attack and their accuracy to full, uh, and then use an explosion ability to just instantly one-shot your party member. It, it's lovely. Yeah, last resort is not a fun ability to see out of that encounter. Yeah, thankfully we were able to take them out and they only used electricity. Uh, so this game's buff and debuff system, we can we can talk about a little bit here and we'll talk about more as we get into fights. Uh, essentially, buffs and debuffs, you have kind of four types. You have your physical, uh, your physical attack, your magic attack, your defense, and your accuracy and agility. 
Uh, and each of those attributes has a buff associated with them and a debuff associated with them. Buffs in this game stack up to a maximum of three, three ways, uh, three ways positive, three ways negative. Uh, and they have some uh, sort of diminishing returns on them, so getting one or two stacks uh, ends up being more impactful than getting three, though you want to maximize or minimize your damage. So we will be going for th three buffs in most cases. Uh, so I actually haven't been needing to fight stuff. I've just been kind of absentmindedly fighting You've, you've been vibing to this theme in this dungeon, which is really good. Yeah. Th this game's music is fantastic. Uh, Shoji Meguro, who... Uh, did a lot of SMT games during this era, composed the soundtrack for this game, and in my opinion, the two DDS games are like the absolute best OSTs he's ever composed. 100% agreed. And uh, it's really, really awesome. So here we're going to be grabbing our mantras for the boss fight. We have the boss of this area coming up. We are going to be grabbing the Angel Mantra on Surf, which has Hama, which is a, like, expel ability. We don't care about that at all. More importantly, uh, first of all, Gale's going to be getting Fire Spirit. Uh, and the more importantly, it has Terunda on it. Terunda is the physical attack debuff. Uh, and then our Jill is going to be working on getting Maragi. And uh, whenever, in this game, whenever you get the area of effect ability uh, for a spell, for an element, you also get the uh, the boost ability for that element. Boost buffs the the damage from uh, spells of that element by either 25 or 30 percent. I don't remember the exact number in this game. Atlas likes to change things. I think it's 25 percent. But uh, yeah, just a, just a way to increase our damage even more. So here we have our next boss. So uh, y'all saw the Final Fantasy 13 run earlier in this week, right? So uh, come on out, Hecaton. We uh, we all we all love Hecaton Curies. And uh, Vanille is a great character in Final Fantasy XIII. So here, weak to Earth. We're uh, just going to be reverting our Jilla, Earth-shotting this boss down. Uh, this fight is fairly scripted on our end. What he does uh, varies pretty wildly. He uses a lot of physical skills. Uh, one skill in particular that he can use is an ability called Hundred Fist, which when he first uses it, you'll, he'll like advertise it by being like, let me show you my most powerful move. Uh, and then he'll like hit us for like 10 damage. <laughs> Uh, the, the gimmick behind 100 Fist is that every time he uses it, it doubles in strength. So, you know, first off, it, first time he uses it, it does like, you know, 10 to 15 damage. Uh, second time he uses it, it does, you know, 40 to 50. Uh, but when he uses it, so, you know, that's manageable. Uh, if he gets to the point where he uses it three times, he's going to start rolling like, you know, in the 60s of damage. And uh, our party, uh, two of our party members, uh, don't really have much higher than 60 HP, so if uh, in the situation where he was able to use 100 fists three times, uh, it would probably just be a party wipe. See, there it did like a bit of damage, you know. Yeah, I mean, you did get him to red before the first 100 fists, so that's not too bad. Yeah, so if, if he doesn't, if he's in red HP before he throws the 100 fist, we're usually safe to kill him. I'm gonna throw that medical kit there just to be sure because you can miss with gun combos, so. Just in case, we'll uh, use that use that medical kit, heal up, and he's dead. We did it. We beat Hecaton. Good job. GG. Fang tanked very well for us. Yes. Ooh, wild card. Is that guaranteed? That's guaranteed, yeah. Oh, that's what I thought. All right, so wild card, basically that Micronova ability that we used, uh, it, it essentially uh, uses a medium almighty damage to all targets. It's pretty good. Uh, we'll be use, making use of wild cards and the upgraded version wild bombs a good bit later on in the run. So earlier I was talking about the uh, crystals for the rings and gems and such. He got a guaranteed yellow crystal there and got the tutorial for uh, adding uh, crystals and such to the karma rings. So he'll be doing that a little bit later. Yeah, so uh, we're going to be selling some more stuff and that will actually unlock the ability to buy some karma rings from the shop, including the magic ring. So we'll uh, we'll be swapping that onto Surf and then immediately putting the yellow crystal on the magic ring to uh, to make ourselves even more powerful. Well, now we have uh, everybody's favorite character, Cielo. Yeah, so we got Cielo into our party and uh, no one else no one else joined our party. No, just Cielo. just a just a really cool plane. Yes. So here we also find out about uh, we find out we're dropped in right at the uh, the processing center where we need to rescue the POWs. 
Uh, and there we uh, were, there was a Karma Society soldier or uh, scientist that was feeding us information, but apparently he's also working for, uh, for Angel, who was the final boss of the first game and who is, uh, <laughs> seems to be scheming some stuff. There's been some intermixed cutscenes here showing, uh, showing Madame Cuvier, who's the head of the uh, Karma Society alongside Jenna Angel, and uh, it's indicated that there's, uh, there's a little bit of uh, contention brewing amongst the uh, upper echelons of the Karma Society. Uh, apparently including, you know, Angel just casually feeding information to the, uh, to the resistance. So here, uh, Gale is going to be grabbing this mantra here, Adamant, which has the ability Palimpa on it. Uh, we're also going to be grabbing Spirit on Cielo, which has two abilities, Taru Kaja, which is a physical attack buff. Not super useful, but it will get see some use later on. Uh, and Maka Jam, which is an ability that inflicts mute to, uh, to a target. Uh, and we'll be using that for the boss of this area because the boss of this dungeon is actually susceptible to getting muted. Uh, but Palimpa in itself is a pretty terrible ability. It, it just uh, inflicts panic to an enemy and it's not great. Uh, however, it has some, uh, let's say it has some hidden potential to it when it's combined with another, I'm just going to run, I don't know why I'm fighting, uh, when combined with another ability, and uh, we're not going to spoil it now, but no. let's just say there's, uh, things are, things are going to get real exciting at, uh, at the end of this dungeon. So here we meet Johnny. Now, uh, unlike SMT uh, DDS1, where you had shops in uh, your home base, now you get shops in dungeons, because... Johnny's just like, I'm going to sell everywhere and help you guys out. Yep, this is where the shop is. The shop is where I say it is, and that's where it is. Exactly. And we love Johnny for it. He also shakes his uh, his left leg. I believe it's Don't left leg. start that. <laughs> it, no. It's very important trivia information that I need Zero to memorize. Oh, no. <laughs> it, it's true. So there, we're going to be selling our uh, selling our plants. We're going to buy a magic ring, uh, and we will be equipping that later. Uh, and here, apparently, one of the uh, one of the people who was infiltrating the uh, the plant got detected. And uh, oh, hey, Roland's here. I wonder what's what's going on with that. So if if I push up my glasses like Roland, does that mean I'm like 10 percent cooler? Maybe. Oh, uh -huh. hey, uh, we have a we have a mysterious demon in our party. I uh, wonder wonder what's up with that. Do you, yeah. you know who this is? No, I I thought his name was Reginald. No, I thought it was Rolando. What about Ronald? Hmm, Roman. Ah, yes. I think I got that memo before I came. Yeah, so uh, that's a bit of a weird bug. Either way, let's put Cielo in our party because he's <laughs> infinitely cooler than whoever that was. It's the dreadlocks. So here we're going to be powering up the uh, that crystal there. Oh, I also need to do some more menuing. We're going to be putting Zio on you, moving that down there. So you'll notice in this menu, Earlier, he only had spots for four skills, but he hit level 10, so that gave him two more skills, and at level 20, he will have the max amount of skill slots uh, to be able to equip stuff into. Yes. Uh, also, over here, we're going to be picking up a blue diamond. Blue diamonds uh, give you, like yellow crystals give you plus two magic. Blue diamonds give you plus two vitality uh, on the karma ring you have equipped. Uh, diamonds are very important because vitality is pretty cool. All right. Uh, speaking oh. of cool, we froze that bird. With so, so freezing the bird. Uh, some, sometimes, a a elemental attack such as Bufu Zio or specifically Bufu and Zio. Specifically Bufu and Zio. I'll get it right eventually. It's a little bit late for me. Um, have the ability to either shock or freeze their uh, the opponent. If you if if you hit them with a physical attack while they're shocked or frozen, you'll get a cool animation and critical hit. <laughs> yeah, so you always crit an enemy that's shocked or frozen. Also, when you attack a frozen target, if they resist, if they had any sort of fizz resistance, uh, nullification, etc., it's, uh, it's zero. removed when, uh, that resistance is removed when you attack a frozen enemy. Not so when they're shocked. Uh, however, if you try to devour a, uh, a frozen enemy, you will do two damage <laughs> because uh, something something can't eat frozen food. Also, ice cream, if you have cream. headphones on, I want you to listen to when these enemies die. Nue is so cool. Yeah, so uh, for some reason, Nue is a seagull. Uh, you know, I see this like weird lion monkey chimera thing. And, you know, obviously the first noise I think it's going to make is seagull noises. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why everyone's so surprised when they hear that. It's like, I mean, come on, like. Hey, you got two free cat's eyes. Yeah, that's actually really good. We're going to put those on Gale immediately. Yeah. Uh, you... There's a, a good, a decent bit of like 
opportunity here with uh, your with your drops. Uh, most of the time, you don't get very many gem drops, and if you do, they're not particularly useful. But at this point, where we are actually devouring some stuff with Gale, uh, and we will be in the next dungeon is or not in the next dungeon, the dungeon after. Uh, it is very nice to get some extra strength on our uh, on our power ring just to, to take advantage of that. And there will again be a boss fight later on in the run where we'll want that as well. That is one loud kitty. Yeah, some of the uh, the audio balancing in this game is really fun. <laughs> fun, yeah, that's the word I'm going to use. Fun. So uh, we're we're going to be walking. We'll we'll have some more to say in a, in a second, but uh, we can throw it over to to Ghoul for a little bit. Monkey. Monkey. Yeah, just uh, we have a quick reminder. Also, we do have T-shirts as well. So. Uh, if you go over to theyeti.com slash RPGLB, take a look. We have some really, really sick designs this year. Pick up the ones you want. And $5 for every one of those shirts will be donated directly to NAMI. That's Y-E-T-E-E. -E. So uh, theyeti.com slash RPGLB. <laughs> so, so there, like I said, you can get random stat points on uh, level up. And uh, I mentioned before that when, uh, that when you get luck, you just kind of have to laugh. And uh, Gail got luck, so that's cool. All right, so here we need to tag this terminal. Uh, so lar we most of the time we've been uh, like tagging small karma terminals where you can just grab uh, new mantras. We've also been grabbing life terminals that give that heal you. Uh, large karma terminals function uh, as both. They also function as warp points and kind of HUDs for all of the uh, small terminals in the area, and they can warp between other uh, between other large terminals within the same area. So we're tagging uh, internment facility one here. Uh, so that we are, we're about to, to climb down into the depths of the facility, but we'll have to backtrack here in a little bit. And so uh, rather than, you know, having to climb all the way back up, we can just warp here uh, from, from the B terminal or from terminal two rather. All right. So here we are going to be introduced to the fearsome jailer of the, uh, of the prison. The, the one, the only, the terrifying Kumpanda. Our favorite skeletal horse friend, and he is going to immediately capture us with uh, Black Bind here. And uh, he's going to tell us to go straight to jail. Uh, do not pass go, do not collect, do not collect $20. You took my joke. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, we're in jail now. So free to speak. Uh, gonna hear from the resistance next door. For some reason, none of these jail cells are unlocked. None of them are locked. Or none of them are locked. That's the word I was looking for. So um, here we get to do a fun little chase mini game. Essentially what we're doing here is uh, there is one cell in each of these blocks that we need to interact with because they have a resistance member hiding in them. They're going to ask for a password. We're going to give that to them. Uh, they're going to give us the key to the next floor along with a bit of information as to what the plan is to deal with the jailer because we can't rescue the prisoners when there's this, uh, this scary fella running around. So this first guy is going to ask what the weather's like. We're going to, oh no. He, we're going to tell him it's unbearable solar noise. He's going to let us in, etc. cetera. Uh, so these uh, prisoners have uh, suffered from what I call Kapora Gabora syndrome, where uh, the uh, option to repeat whatever they just said is the default option. So if uh, you're using a turbo controller to just mash through text or you're not paying attention, uh, sometimes they'll, uh, they'll tell you their life story three or four times before you catch it. All right, so here, this cell right here, we need to tell him that we have canned surprise, surprise for dinner. Oh boy, what do you think canned surprise is, Frito? I bet it's delicious and maybe spam, I don't know. Spam comes in a can, that's surprising. You know you're not wrong. All right, so now we're introduced to, uh, now at this point he will spawn snares on the floor that'll just hold us in place for a little bit. Uh, there's not snares on this outer ring here, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to lead him over here to chase us this way, and then we're going to run around here and right to the door. I forgot how funny his run cycle was. Oh, his run cycle it's is great. fantastic. It's so good. All right, so now he's going to have snares out from the from the beginning as he's running toward us. Also, for floors two and three, he'll, he'll start out just standing in front of the door, uh, kind of daring us to approach him. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll have to lead him away from that once the once the time comes. Uh, this is the correct door. Uh, okay, so we're gonna meet Bob here. Everyone say hi to Bob. Hi, Bob. So this is Bob the Blob. Uh, he is essential to our plan here to to defeat Kumbanda. 
Uh, we're also finding the key. So, so Bob is, uh, has met a, a very unfortunate fate. And uh, his sacrifice will not be in vain, however, because in this <laughs> game there is a, a hidden mechanic where whenever you try to devour a foul uh, race demon or clan demon, uh, that they will, uh, you have a higher chance to get a stomach ache. Stomach ache is a mechanic whenever you devour something, there's a chance that you, uh, that you get a stomach ache, which means that if you don't cure the egg at the end of the fight, you don't get any AP, you have a chance of missing your turn, etc., etc. Hey, I got the corner, nice. So you can cut that corner there, it's pretty difficult to do, your movement has to be pretty precise, and, uh, if you get it, then you can, uh, you make a perfect cycle for the rest of the snares along there. Good job. GG. Right. So that was the Companda chase. Oops. As I then proceed to run into a wall. Very cool. <laughs> I love the bass on these headphones. Just like there's so many more bass effects that you don't usually. Uh, I know. Here, like that, uh, that that treasure chest had some reverb on it. it was very cool. <laughs> so here we're at the uh, we're at the bottom of the prison. If we didn't tag that terminal before, we would have had to walk all the way back up. You wouldn't be chased by a uh, Mr. Scary Horsey Man, but uh, it's it's still a bit of a long walk. So we're going to come in here. This is the observation room. Uh, you can see Mr. Uh, Mr. Horsey Man is a very messy eater, but we do find the the key to the uh, to the power room for the uh, for the processing machine. We're also going to pick up this item here. This is the trick ring. The trick ring is a special karma ring. Karma rings, in addition to boosting your stats, will generally have some sort of uh, special bonus effect. Some of them are uh, some of them are pretty good. Some of them are absolutely terrible, and some of them are like completely broken. Uh, the, this ring is uh, on the pretty good side. Essentially what it does is at the beginning of battle, it gives the character that has it equipped uh, an automatic stack of, uh, of Suku Kaja, which is an agility and evasion buff, uh, while also giving them a stack of Tirundo, which is a physical defense or physical attack debuff. Uh, since we're using magic so much, that, uh, that physical attack debuff doesn't really come into play all that much. But the uh, the extra stack of what am I doing? The extra stack of uh, of evasion will hopefully be very nice because we're gonna have it on Cielo for quite a bit here at the beginning. And uh, to talk a little bit about each of our characters, every character follows their own set uh, follows their own set character growth that leans in a certain direction. Uh, Surf you can build however you want. Argilla, who we had at the beginning, is sort of your mage glass cannon character. Gale is your balanced character. Uh, which is part of why his accuracy is normally pretty bad because balanced since that way since he's not <laughs> excelling in any particular category that means he's usually not fantastic in either but since he's not terrible in any field he ends up being good to use the whole game uh cielo is our agility character he mainly leans into like agility and magic so he he's very quick he dodges a bit he has good accuracy also we're sending bob on his way everyone say bye bob bye bob bye bob so uh, we have a we have a very lovely sound effect here. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard that sound effect, but I never play this game with headphones. Yeah, so so we're gonna send Bob on a, on a fantastic journey, a a bizarre adventure, a strange journey, a, uh, a confounding quest, if you will, uh, where uh, at the conclusion of his journey, he will he will lead us to victory. And perfect. Now I can go for this devour here. That's a big devour. Yeah. Entire spider crab all to himself. Lucky you, Cielo. All right, perfect. So we're setting up some devours there. Cielo ate one thing to just immediately master his mantra. Uh, and then we're, uh, we went for another devour on him just to uh, to, to sync up his uh, his next mantra with Surf and Gale there. Yeah. But you, nice that, crit. now you're starting to see where that... What? Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, All right, then. That's cool. Good oh, luck. I would have ran away. <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh, good job. I just didn't want him to kill me if I failed that run. Uh, so, so, also, a strange chunk of meat is moving, moving down, down the, the conveyor. conveyor. So now you're starting to see we're pumping all that magic in the surf and starting to pay off because he has like 67 HP, but 202 MP. Always Montan. Yes, always maintain. A strange chunk of meat is moving down the conveyor. Also, Bob has been canned. So, by the way, what is, what's the Gale miss counter at so far this run? Surprisingly, zero. Zero. Uh, camera's right there. I was also showing Ghoul all the way over oh, yeah. there. 
Oh. Can you ever remember I'm getting this far with never this? It, this is no! <laughs> a strange chunk of meat is oh. moving down the conveyor. Uh, yeah, no, this has actually never happened before. Gale has never not missed at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so here, Bob has completed his journey. Well, as soon as I get out of this encounter, he will have completed his journey. <laughs> Seagull cat. Yep, I heard it. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, apparently you were holding him a little too high for the camera, by the way. Just as a... Oh, I can look at... There you go. Hey. All right, so Bob has become a can of spam. <laughs> we have obtained canned meat. <laughs> And uh, here, this chest here has a, uh, a couple of horses in it. I don't know how they fit two two whole horses into a uh, into a uh, into a box like that. But uh, I guess uh, I guess by the year 2025, they'll have uh, they'll have really improved their packing technology or something. So fighting this gives us a Decaja rock and a blue diamond. Apparently, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, which uh, what Decaja does is it removes all buffs from an enemy. Uh, one of our primary means of buffing and debuffing later on in the game is using an ability called Taunt. Uh, what Taunt does is it gives the enemy two stages of a defense debuff while also giving them two stages of a physical attack buff. Uh, and in some cases, oh, we wow. really don't want to see that. Also, that's uh, pretty awful. Mara, so Mara Vert, uh, like it sounds like it reverts your party members. And uh, if it lands on all three party members, it's the, like the single slowest attack animation in the entire game. So that's cool. Uh, but yeah, so taunt two, two uh, defense debuffs, two attack buffs. And since uh, there's a number of physical bosses in this game, we really don't want to be uh, taking the uh, the full brunt of that. So during during some fights when we're trying to do all of our setup in one turn, we will be making uh, some pretty good use out of uh, out of Dekaja Rock. So picking some up is pretty nice there. Thankfully that didn't hit. I was gonna say, could you please stop, monkey? The monkey dances as he pleases. With yes. His book, his book of knowledge and dancing. His and book knowledge of, of dancing. His book of Malververt. All right, so we just need a couple of more encounters. I need Surf and Gale to be about 50% done with their mantras by the end of this dungeon, and we're... Oh, there you go! Hey! Woo! Let's go! There's one, and we filled around nice. There's two dollar redos to charity, let's go. Three dollar redos. Three dollars. Let's hear it for charity, everyone. So we, we just need a little more AP. Uh, that should be good. Why does Crab Spider sound like a really angry horse? Eh, he's mooing at us. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And I could really do without this enemy. So Cockatrice is kind of annoying. He doesn't have an elemental weakness and he's weak to like poison or something kind of out there. And so, uh, <laughs> Really don't want to be running into him. If I'm super ever super desperate for AP, I will try to go for like a freeze proc on him or something. Uh, but generally, you just you just don't want to deal with him. There was the shock uh, there we go. thing I explained earlier, where it was shocked. So Cielo came in, got a physical, and got a critical out of it. Free crits are amazing. <laughs> five step later, uh, five steps later, and another encounter. Very cool. All right, so that should be enough AP. I'm going to set up for the boss now, so I'm going to swap these two. I'm going to equip a Maka Jam onto Cielo, and then I'm going to give you the Trick Ring, and I'm going to give the Trick Ring uh, two of those blue diamonds, because we got some extras there. So just to give him some extra survivability there. And we're going to be warping back. So while we're, uh, while we're approaching the boss fight, uh, take it away, Ghoul. Alrighty, uh, as a reminder, just after this run, we do have Final Fantasy IX, which has a ton of unmet incentives, since all the incentives for this run, I believe, are met or finished. Yes. So we do have the uh, two-player disc four, although I th believe before that, we also have the act out, the VV Quina wedding. Always a lot of fun when uh, some runners get to put on a show, much like we're going to be doing later on with the singing. Which, uh, again, I'm sure those uh, vocal cords are nice and ready over there, right? Oh, yeah, nice and warmed up. Uh, also, we have naming for all the main characters uh, for Final Fantasy IX. My uh, personal favorite being naming Garnet into Sword instead of Dagger. <laughs> she, 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 she's moving up in the world. Solid 10 out of 10 name. Uh, apologies for the uh, sudden uh, horse ASMR breathing experience y'all or headphone wearers are experiencing now. 
I thought I was a dog barking for a second. Oh. <laughs> I actually uh, had Close a enough. long time viewer who every time I would get to this scene in the game, her dog would just get very agitated whenever that panting started. <laughs> so, uh, Kumpanda has devoured Bob. Rest in peace, Bob. But uh, he got a stomach ache from it. So that has uh, slowed him down significantly. And uh, now we're going to ambush him. Gale gives us some good advice that... Uh, it's best be prepared. You should always carry a dis egg with you. And now it's time to fight Kumpanda. Kumpanda is weak to electricity. He is also susceptible to being muted. If we can land that on him right here. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. All right, so now he can only do... Uh, he, he has a bunch of attacks, and when he's muted, he'll still try to do them, but they'll just burn his turn away. The kid uh, meat was bad. Yeah. However, he can still basic attack. So all of his abilities are completely sealed off to him. Uh, except for two of them. He can still basic attack us. He also gains access, has an ability called Gorge, which uh, does a pretty good amount of physical damage to uh, to whoever he targets with it. And it also has the, uh, will cause him to gain back any damage that he dealt with it. Uh, so we really don't want to see any Gorges. Uh, in the community, we like to give attacks, like attacks and demons, like funny little names. Uh, and so we call Gorge George. So hopefully this will be a, a George list. No, George! Nope. There it is. There's George. That hurt. No! Not again! Oh! No! Wait, what? No! Oh, baby, a triple! <laughs> Not in a good way either. So we had to burn a revival beat there. That's fine. We have plenty of them. We have plenty. That's nothing compared to the to the morale damage of just <laughs> that only getting triple George in one turn can do. That hurt me, and I'm not even running the game. He didn't even share the love. He only attacked Sir. Hey, he hits yellow too once he was out of. <laughs> what Sir? Fell over, yeah. Once his number of viable targets decreased. <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> All right, and we did it. We won. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. <laughs> that was that was lovely. Thank you, Kumbanda. Always a, always a barrel of laughs from beginning to end. All right, so here we're actually going to put some points into Sir's vitality. Uh, we are a little bit late for that, isn't it? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> we are at the point in the game where uh, enemies are going to start hitting harder, and we do need some uh, some extra HP and physical defense, so we're going to put a couple points into his vitality here. All right, oh. so... <laughs> the oh. PS3 always chugs here. Yeah, so the uh, the PS3, uh, the the way that the, the PlayStation Classics of uh, version of this game works, which is the version we use for speedrunning, uh, is it you know it runs through an in-system emulator and that emulator has uh, problems with some certain effects oh, Also, we have to tell this kid that his friend is dead and that they devoured him and we get the best healing item in the game for it So that's cool. Rest uh, in peace, Timmy. Thank yeah, you. Rest in peace, Timmy So uh, we're going to take that super valuable healing item that that kid was you know saving for his friend and we're going to immediately sell it Wow, Frito. Hey, it sells for 11k. Okay. Okay. I, I gotta give you that one. And we're going to sell off our plants. Yeah, and find nothing else at the moment. All right, I need to do a menu. We're going to swap around our party again a little bit, and we're going to set Palimpa onto Gale here over that. Surf is going to get to Tarunda, and we're going to swap those two, and we're also going to do this now, so you get this on slot three, this on slot six. Uh, so CL has a Lek boost now, which will uh, greatly increase the damage he does with electric skills, and also the damage that we will do in combos with CLO that involve electricity, uh, which will be very important for a couple of fights later on here until Surf can catch up. Uh, so, yep. oh, sorry. Uh, just to kind of explain the next mantras we're going to be we're going to be grabbing here as the uh, as the grid fills itself out. We unlock our uh, second mantra grid expansion, I believe, and we're going to now be moving Surf towards uh, Bolt Lord as well to get Mazio and Elect Boost. Our Jill is just going to keep uh, keep going on the fire train. Uh, Gale is going to be now working on getting Force Boost, and Cielo is going to work on getting Zionga, which is the Tier Two electric ability. Uh, which is going to be very valuable. Uh, Rol Rolando there is still going to be uh, still working on Fire Demon. Uh, our heat stand-in, excuse me. 
he, he's looking a little different right now. It's it's fine. He'll get better. Got a haircut. Everything's fine. Wait, who was that? Uh, I think it was like Romanov or something. Uh, Rachmaninoff, excuse me. That was who it was. Sure. <laughs> So here we uh, we find out now that uh, that Sarah is being this whole thing is to try to find Sarah, figuring she can explain what's going on in the world right now, what happened, and to just get her away from the Karma Society because all of their like evil plans to control the world or whatever kind of revolve around Sarah. So we're trying to to foil those plans, and uh, she is being held in the uh, in the government building of the Karma Society. Also, that kid that uh, that kid there. That dude there just had a kid, uh, and he came to register his child. And uh, he asked, he's like, well, so I came here. My wife asked me to, you know, get a birth certificate for our kid, but we haven't actually picked a name for him yet. Uh, hey, random uh, stranger, what should I name my son? And uh, we have a couple options. You can name them after any of the male party members, uh, except for uh, Roland Tondo, because that's kind of a difficult name to spell. And so, uh, depending on what name you give, you get a different reward for doing so. If you say that uh, Gale would be adequate, because, you know, you want to name your son something adequate, of course, uh, then you get a, uh, you get a uh, pink gem, or a pink crystal. And what that does is it gives you plus three magic to whatever ring. We're going to immediately throw that on the magic ring, so we do even more damage. Dramatic elevator ride. Yeah. So uh, this is, uh, you know, everyone talks about their favorite dungeon aesthetics in, uh, in SMT games. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the unsung hero of a lot of the older SMT games, everyone's personal favorite is uh, Office Buildings. Who here is a fan of Office Buildings? Woo! And so uh, this is the Karma Society Tower. It's our, uh, it's our Office Building dungeon. And we're, we're going to be just climbing to the very top. Also, uh, the, uh, the architecture of this place is, is quite interesting. Uh, they're going for a, a very bold and revolutionary uh, architectural uh, design when they, when they built this place. <laughs> also, it must be a pain to, uh, to get to work in this building. You know, you see desks everywhere. It's, you know, implied this is a place where like, you know, hundreds of people go to work every day. But this is like a 30 something floor building and you, in order to actually get to the top of the building, you have to go through this whole thing. So uh, imagine working on like, you know the 39th floor and you have to uh you have to climb through like 30 floors every day with just random encounters you know bring your random encounter to work day all right so here are the option you pick actually matters if you pick attack them while you talk while they talk you go first in this fight otherwise mm -hmm. they go first we're gonna be doing crossfire here which is a three-person gun combo gale is gonna pose dramatically and we are going to uh thankfully do enough damage to kill so the range on crossfire is a little weird it can actually low roll to 115 damage and these enemies have 116 hp which is fun. Surf has the best animation out of Crossfire, in oh, my yeah. opinion. Cielo's pretty cool. He, like, throws the gun in the air and, like, catches it and is like, heh. I don't think I've ever seen Cielo's. It, uh, you'll see it occasionally when you forget to change your party order for this fight. That explains it. <laughs> but yeah, so we're just going to kind of trek through here. Oh, so uh, when we <laughs> combine... Uh, so this is a thing, by the way. Uh, this is Tentarafu. That was Tentarafu. Yeah, it's... Um, when he put on Tarunda and Palunta, he met the requirement for Tintarafu. Now, instead of social eating, it's half social eating, half Tintarafu the game. Because Tintarafu, because of Surf's magic stat, hits like a truck. Yeah, so we just barely are learning slash have learned the, you know, the multi-hit or the, uh, the AoE uh, magic, light magic spells on our characters. So Tentarafu is moderate damage. So, you know, that's basically tier two damage uh, to all enemies. So something we're not gonna have for a very long time, like as an individual uh, character. And uh, also just the, the way magic is calculated in this game for combos is done in such a way that uh, we will uh, be doing lots and lots of damage. It's also panic element. Uh, yes, panic is an element uh, in this game. <laughs> And, like, very little in this game resists or nulls panic. And there's a lot of things that are weak to panic. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to be Tentarafuing our way through, like, 95% of random encounters for the rest of the game. Yes. So random encounters are pretty much taken care of at this point. Yeah. But... You know, you know, it's, it's pretty cool when you're an hour and 15, 16 minutes in and you can just, ah, I'm fine. Encounters are fine. So we're gonna throw some extra agility on the trick ring. You know, you want agility on the thing that makes you more evasive. 
So, cool thing about first. Karma Society uh, uh, encounters is... You don't get AP for killing You them. don't get AP. So, you kind of want them to transform before you knock them out, but most of the time that doesn't happen. Goodness gracious. Oh, oh that's cool. Oh, and so oh. <laughs> when you get ambushed, you can't transform. Yeah, so uh, am when you get ambushed and encountered, it you know, essentially means the enemy attacked you before you went first. Even though you still can go first when you get ambushed, you just don't transform. Uh, however, a lot of the enemies in the Karma Society... Ah, I've been shot. A lot of the enemies in the Karma Society tower are these angels that like using uh, Hama or Expel Element abilities. Uh, and the thing about Hama is that uh, humans are immune to it. Because, like, the idea is, you know, they're, like, you know, expelling demonic forces or whatever. But when you're a human, you're, you're not a demon. Uh, so, uh, getting ambushed by those is usually pretty funny because they're like, aha, I hama. And we're like, aha, I'm immune to that. <laughs> so, to mention, human form, uh, when you're in human form, your defense is lower. You lose your elemental resistance and uh, weakness. And you become immune to hama, but you do gain a weakness to gun damage. All right, so here we have two Adavakas. Adavaka resists panic, and so we're just going to be comboing Materi here because they're to Earth, and there we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Whoops. All right, so we're we're gonna be uh, running through this place, Tentara fooing the uh, the night away, so uh, we can throw it over to to Ghoul for a little little more words of uh, of wisdom and encouragement. Again, just a reminder that we are RPG Limit Break. We are raising money for NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Uh, again, it's such a fantastic cause. We're super happy, and uh, we'd love to see some more donations come in so that we can have them run on air. And again, they can go towards such fantastic incentives as the ones for Final Fantasy IX, or uh, as always, all the donations are entered into raffles for mini prizes. This is the last bit for the Kingdom Hearts block, so the all-in-one Kingdom Hearts signed by Richard Epcar is, of course, a $20 minimum donation before the end of this run. You'll be entered into a raffle to go for that, or for a slightly smaller donation, a $5 donation, you can get in for uh, either a copy of Kingdom Hearts 2 or our Kingdom, or Kingdom Hearts 2 Perlers. So definitely get those donations in, and uh, until then, just keep enjoying this awesome DDS2 run. Thank you, thank you. That was both wise and encouraging. Thank you, Ghoul. I do my best. 10 out of 10. All right, so as we go through here, we are we're going to be running into a couple forced encounters like the uh, like the one we saw earlier. Most of them, not a big deal. Just Tentarafu does go burr. Mm -hmm. We're going to be picking up a couple chests here. Most of these chests, like this one, has two fire bombs in it. Uh, we haven't really been using. We've been using some attack items, but we haven't really talked about them yet. Uh, this game, you do have attack, uh, items that you can throw that mimic the uh, the effects of the tier one and two area of effect magic spells. Uh, so those two fire uh, those fire bombs we picked up actually uh, allow us to cast Miragion, which is the tier two area of effect fire ability, uh, and we'll be making pretty good use of that for a boss fight later on. Uh, it's very nice that those are just kind of hanging out there. Uh, in the first game, you're able to just purchase attack items, and we make pretty good use of that throughout the run because just having access to throwable spells is really good. And they realized that. So uh, this game came out in uh, 2005, I believe, 2004, 2005. And uh, they uh, were, this game is truly revolutionary because in order to, you know, make it a little bit harder to get access to attack items and other stuff, uh, you actually have to buy them through loot boxes. Uh, the stores will have like <laughs> varying tiers of boxes, and uh, you got to you get to roll the gotcha for for your attack items, which is very exciting and tr truly ahead of its time. You can't keep the power under control. But yeah, this is the very fir one of the first games I've ever known about to introduce loot boxes. So it's very very revolutionary for its time. And uh, the, you can also get some really nice karma rings from some of the from some blah, blah, some from, from some of the loot boxes. Let me let my brain catch up to my mouth there. <laughs> uh, we won't be getting any of them in this run. There's other there's another category for this game uh, titled Hard Mode All Bosses or H Map for short. I I might bring up like one or two funny things from that route. Uh, but one of the things we do have to do is we actually have to wail for the uh, for the first uh, the the rare drop, the, you know, the five-star character or whatever of the uh, 
of the first box, uh, which is the Rich Ring, which just gives you 1.5 times money from all of your battles, which is, you know, pretty good out of 10. Uh, and it's, you know, a fun part of the run when you get to, like, the, the processing plant and you're like, all right, you know, we just beat Hecaton Curies. We're feeling good. Time to buy some loot boxes. And uh, if not, I get to reset my run. Let's go. So, uh, fortunately, this will be a, uh, a whaling free stream. Uh, at least this run. I don't know what the other runners have going on. But we, there will be no whaling here. All right. So, we picked up that power data. Power data increases your uh, the character you give it to's attack, uh, strength stat by two. Uh, more importantly, it gives that character a full HP and MP heal. Uh, something to note about Tentarafu is that it... Uh, is that it's pretty expensive in order to to cast oh this is potentially really scary uh <laughs> so osei is an enemy from like the end of the next dungeon oh thank goodness <laughs> power i love you so uh when an enemy is feared when both en when all the enemies in the encounter are feared you have a 100 percent run rate from that encounter uh, which is good, because Osei is, uh, is an enemy from late in the next dungeon. And uh, even in that dungeon, if they do power charge into their AoE attack, it will one-shot my party. Let alone, you know, uh, five, six levels earlier than that. So that was, uh, that was a little, little fun, a little exciting. What's power charge in this game? It usually tends to kind of vary in random SMT spinoffs between, you know... 2.0 times 2.25, 2.5. Yeah, so uh, in this game, both power and mind charge are 2.5. So, uh, yeah, an attack that uh, already probably one-shots people times 2.5 equals pain. Uh, very precise math on that. But uh, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, uh, power was a homie and decided to use uh, use Hama on one of our characters, and we were able to get away. So that was that was exciting. And here, uh, Johnny is uh, set up another shop because this is where he says the shop is. And we're going to do some more selling. So we're going to be selling this plant we picked up. Uh, we're going to grab a wild card from the... Uh, occasionally, you'll be able to get an item uh, when you accumulate enough points. So we're going to sell a medical tool that we picked up. We're going to buy the Protect Ring, which gives a character in human form enhanced defense. We'll be making use of that later. Uh, a lot of enemies in this dungeon like using Curse and in the next dungeon. And so we're going to put up some Disc Curses. We're also going to grab a bunch of Disc Stuns. These are all just ailment heals. And that is everything we are doing in that menu. Also, shoutouts to the, the shop theme in this game. The shop theme is so good. <laughs> All right, so here we're going to take an elevator. We're actually at our first of three bosses. Well, first we have to fight these karma. Why did I do that? Uh, we have to fight some karma soldiers. That's a Gale miss, by the way. Oh, yeah, Gale miss. Uh, doing it for charity. It's just calculated miss for charity. All right, so I we're... Got, I got it. Cool. <laughs> so this uh, this dungeon we're in, we fight three bosses during the dungeon, and we are uh, about to fight the first of those three bosses. Uh, you know, it's always it's always fun in games like this when you have, like, a, uh, a battle against uh, an enemy that is of similar strength and ability to you, and that's kind of what these uh, first few fights are. Uh, so here we're going to be fighting the uh, fighting the Tribvana. These are like the elite special forces of the Karma Society. And uh, hey, there's three of them, and there's three of us. That's pretty cool. Uh, and we are going to open the fight immediately by Tentarafuing. Uh, this first bit, they're in human form until uh, one of them takes a certain amount of damage. Uh, the damage that we do to them uh, prior to them transforming here into their demon forms doesn't matter. Uh, their HP gets reset to a certain value. Once they do, we just have to do enough damage to actually push that phase. Oh, whoops. Uh, that's uh, fun. I uh, forgot I had auto memory on, or I just forgot their turn ended there, so that's cool. All right, so here we're going to be throwing a Xan there. We picked up some shock bombs, which uses Mazianga, the tier two electric AoE ability. A nice little damage. bit of damage. Uh, so basically, each one of these, good, Maziodine is very good, that's what you want to see. Uh, each of the members of Turbana serves a specific role. Uh, Kusif there is the uh, the support character. We have uh, Ubelaris in the middle, who is the physical attacker, and then we have Ganga on the right, who is their mage. 
So uh, the way Genga's AI works is that she will, uh, her magic pool consists of whatever elements are uh, represented by a weakness in the party. And so uh, she can use either Maziodyne, Zeodyne. Uh, Dyne is the heavy element, the heavy tier damage. Uh, or she can use Agidine, and you never want to see her use Agidine because it hurts really bad and can hit weakness on Surf. So uh, basically what we're doing is we're going to alternate hitting the weakness of Kusif and, uh, and Ubelaris while we also combo Mazio to hit all of them. Uh, and they don't have a ton of HP in this fight, so we can take them down pretty quickly. They're pretty much all almost dead. We should be able to win this turn. Nice Mazeo Dine. Yeah, so you, you want to see lots of Mazeo Dines. Right. That's why we're throwing out uh, Voidalex every single turn. Nice. We took down Ubelaris, and now we're going to hopefully take down Ganga this next turn. Uh, once you beat one of them, uh, Kusith will use Dekaja if you have a buff up in your party, which we do. That's not cool. Uh, if you have a buff represented in your party, then he'll use Dekaja, and since we have a buff in our party in the form of me being dead, uh, and by that I mean the, uh, uh, the Trick Ring, thank you, the, uh, they'll do that. Okay, so I need you to Zeodyne. That's not Zeodyne, believe it or not. All right, we died. It's fine. This is why we save. Yeah, Digital Devil Saga, while being a mostly e beginner-friendly SMT game, the speedrun can just... Most bosses from a certain point on can just either decide to be super easy and super uh, helpful and agreeable with your strategy or just outright say no and like, you reload your save. Yeah, as someone that runs uh, a lot of SMT games, but uh, especially both of the, the Digital Devil Saga games, the... Uh, it's interesting how the how the games kind of vary in uh, where the challenge comes from. Uh, DDS one, all of the boss fights for the most part, with some notable exceptions, are uh, very easy and pretty scripted. Uh, whereas, like most of the challenge comes from the random encounters being absolutely terrifying through a lot of the game. Uh, whereas in this game, it's the opposite, where since we have Tentarafu, all the encounters, the random encounters are mostly pretty trivial, and then the boss fights uh, can well they should be scripted can just kind of do fun things like that so uh this time we will not accidentally uh auto battle uh away some of our turns and we're actually going to do what we're supposed to at the beginning of this fight uh it probably wouldn't have mattered like we might have won had i not messed up this turn but it's it's whatever i mean it wouldn't be an SMT speed run without a death here or there yeah right yeah it's uh, it's very it's very common even in like a good like really good runs of these games to like have a death or two in your run but another cool thing about SMT games in general, they always usually have a save right before the boss. So you you might lose some time, but not as much as you would in other RPGs from taking a death. Ganga is being incredibly uncooperative today. Yes, I've noticed. Oh, mm -hmm -hmm. okay. That was good talk. Good talk. Excellent conversation. Uh, let's see. I am going to just hope that uh, they don't attack Surf. It's fine. She <laughs> simply will not use Agidine anymore. It's fine. This is fine. We're fine. See, it's fine. Yeah, there you go. Good job, Genga. You did the thing. All right, so here I'm actually going to Terra Genga. Uh, I want them dead now. So there's Genga down. And we're going to Zanyu. That should finish you off. Excellent, excellent. And now this will force him to... If he doesn't die right now, uh, this will force him to Dekaja this turn. There we go. Hey, we did it. Good job. Hey, free disc curse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh boy, we're getting swole. Let's go. Yo. Right. I will say this though, most of like the outside areas of DDS games are so beautiful. This entire game is beautiful. Like, like even though you're staring at the world through a hexagonal dome, it's still pretty. And I it's still awesome. Yeah, this game as a whole is very pretty. Like this again reminder, this was like a like midlife early midlife PS2 game and like it looks just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, there's just something about like PS2 era SMT that just graphically it looks so good even today. Like, like even like 
even if they like redid the or remastered these games, it would it wouldn't take much because they're already still beautiful. Even you know running through a PS3 uh, digital copy, it looks really good. All right, some extra medical tools there just for some safety. Just kind of sprinkling my wish into the world right there with that <laughs> statement. Yeah, as long as it's more stable than the Nocturne remaster. Exactly my point. <laughs> I mean, it's also Atlas. Atlas cannot release the game just once. They're like physically incapable of it. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, how many times do we have Persona 5 right now? A couple, one or two. <laughs> Hi, Ose. Hey, Ose is back. Bye, Ose. <laughs> this time, uh, we were, we were the <laughs> ones who were uh, causing panic on Ose, and not the other way around. <laughs> oh, did that happen while I stepped away for a moment? Yeah, Ose almost killed me. It's oh uh, no, it's fine. All Good. right, save point here. But Is that for a quick donation here? Absolutely. We have a $250 donation from BR Squid saying, first time donating. I love watching speedruns, but watching a game that would take days to beat beaten in a couple hours always makes me excited. I especially love seeing games I would never have discovered. Good luck to the runners. Hey, thank you for the good luck. Who this? What is this? So uh, this is Diss, if, yeah. if, the, if the jokes weren't obvious. <laughs> She's a common demon throughout the game. She's pretty cool. She's uh, very useful in Nocturne. Uh, evolves into Valkyrie, which is pretty amusing. Still never makes sense, makes sense to me. Yeah, she just found a horse, <laughs> yeah. exactly. But what's pretty cool about Digital Devil Saga as a whole is for if you've never played an SMT game, this is a really good one to start at because it doesn't have uh, fusions, negotiations, but stuff like that. So it's a good introduction into the series as a spinoff. Hey, there's there's this is horse. Unfortunately, that horse will have to find another disc. Yes. All right. More so magic. as we're going through this dungeon, we uh, we just need to master Surf and Gale's mantras before we get to the end. Uh, here in this chest over here, we're going to grab a magic data, which is plus two magic. We're going to be giving that to Gale. Uh, because, you know, the more mages you have, the merrier, am I right? Just everyone gets to become a mage, except for Heat. Landmines, those will uh, potentially have the uh, chance to be useful later. Hopefully not. Hopefully those sit in my inventory and do nothing the whole game, but... Uh, Depending on how a boss fight later on goes, those might be very valuable. We'll see. Nice ice blast too. Yeah, that'll actually be pretty. Uh, right. Might be pretty nice against the not the this upcoming boss, but the boss of the dungeon. The so heal terminal there. We are pretty close to master. Oh, we're actually mastered our mantras. Never mind. Cool. We don't have to fight anything for the next little bit, which is neat. Uh, we are actually, I say that, but we're still going to continue fighting encounters. Uh, the thing with this game, for uh, there's an ability called Quick Escape, which boosts your ability to run from encounters. It's pretty cool. But uh, we're not going to have that for a while. And so to fail, to, to try to run away and fail tends to be pretty slow. And so with most of the encounters in this game, with uh, just how utterly broken Tentarafu is, it does actually tend to be faster to opt to... Uh, Tentarafu our problems away instead. Here we're going to put them out there. We're going to be setting a like boost and Mazio on Surf. And we're going to be grabbing our next Montraz. So we're just going to keep uh, Surf and Gale along their same elemental lines they've been working on. Uh, so Gale is going to go for Zanma, which is the, the tier two, uh, or the tier two single target skill. We're also going to be giving uh, soon to be Heat the Fire Leader Mantra here uh, just for, for later. You're gonna get T10 for Zenma. Surf is also going to go for Lightning to get Zionga. Uh, electricity is uh, for a like just a regular playthrough of the game, not counting any of the optional content or super bosses. Electricity is probably the best element in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing the post game, then fire or not fire, uh, Earth. Sorry, Earth ends up being the best element in the game if you're wanting to do the post game. But for just a, a regular playthrough like this, uh, want to. Uh, Go for electricity, and uh, there is a suspicious presence behind the door. I wonder who it could be. Oh my gosh, I could only wonder. It's the Travana! Hey, hello. As if we didn't beat him up enough last time. 
All right, so this is Trivana. Oh, okay, that's a good start. Thank you, sir. So this is Trivana too. Uh, Electric Boogaloo. They are they're bigger, faster, and stronger too. They're the first members of the DK crew, and uh, basically they just they do more damage. They they have some extra abilities they didn't have before, and they have a lot more HP. So it's a uh, you know second verse same as the first pretty much. They also gain access to a uh, to a unique combo ability. Uh, called Bolt Terrain, which is electricity. So that's why, uh, in addition to the, uh, in addition to putting up Void of Life every turn being nice for uh, Mazeodyne, it's also nice because it also protects us from this. And uh, blocking this combo ends their turn immediately, which is pretty cool. Uh, Bolt Rain also uh, attacks my PS3 more than it attacks my party. Uh, <laughs> like I mentioned, the uh, the emulator the PS3 uses to play these games. Uh, has has some quirks to it. it. It lags when there's more than three NPCs on screen at the same time. It, uh, lots of particle effects on screen tends to uh, cause the game to, to freak out a little bit. So it's, uh, it's all in good fun. But uh, Bolt Rain is like the big attack in uh, in this game that you really see. You really see the uh, the particle effects take a bit of a strain on this on the system and it, it seems to get worse the more they use bolt rain so ideally you want them to just use bolt rain every turn uh they're not doing that right now but it's fine because she's still using the zeodyne but uh <laughs> it's really fun in fights where they use bolt rain like three or four times and you just see like the attack get progressively <laughs> laggier every time they use it it's, it's pretty great all right, so we took out a Belarius there. They can't Bolt Rain anymore, and that's also an indication that the rest of them are going to be following suit. Uh, Kusev hasn't been using Void uh, Force much at all, so he actually has more health than he usually does, but uh, we should be able to focus fire him down pretty soon. Uh, you know, unless he dodges, that is a thing that he can do. No, this can't be happening! <laughs> And now Surf can swap to spamming Augie as well. And you can just use Zeo. We can just focus fire him down. Oh, I didn't even see Genga die. Yeah, she uh, she went down last turn. There we go. We did it. We beat the we beat Trivana too. That's uh, that's usually the harder of the two fights, but sometimes you just funny things happen. I'll give you a golf clap for that one. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Means a lot to me. <laughs> All right, so here we're going to be rearranging our party again. We're going to be healing up. So neat thing about the recovery button is that it's actually pretty smartly programmed. Uh, it will, the recovery button can use any uh, healing ability that is known, not just that is set. So it uh, allows us to uh, heal very quick, heal very well without having to, you know, do it manually. Mm -hmm. Uh, including ailments, and it also prioritizes using the MP of characters who are not in your active battle party, uh, which is very nice because, you know, I need my active battle party's MP to spam Tentarifu repeatedly. It's very important. So, uh, so Yeah, it's pretty much using uh, the MP that Ag Argilla has while she's just kind of sitting there eating a sandwich. Yeah. I'm like, Argilla, we need more healing. All right, there you go. Mm. What kind of sandwich would Argilla eat? Um, that's a good question. You can answer in chat or in your donation. Extra magic, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Donate with what sandwich you think each of the members of the Embryon would be uh, would be eating. All right, so here we have a six-minute unskippable cutscene. Oh boy! Uh, you can tell it's unskippable because this event cannot be skipped. And uh, I will be right back. I'm actually going to take a take Sarah's a quick. Not here. Uh, not this again. <clears throat> oh, hey, it's, it's heat. Heat? Exactly. What are you? <laughs> uh, pretty much heat on the side of the Doesn't bad guys now. Such hatred. That. <laughs> and we're just gonna get flashbacks. A song. Devour her. Act like you're losing. I'll get Sarah back. We'll tear you apart, you fat freak. Hey, say something, Surf. Yep, he did nothing wrong at all. 
Ghoul, while this uh, plays back, if you if you have anything to talk about, now's a good time. I actually do, although I'm kind of waiting on Pulse to get back for uh, one oh, okay. of my donations, because I've got a pretty big donation that does mention him, so. Okay. Just giving him a little bit of time to get back. Well, I'm kind of enjoying the uh, cutscene a little bit here. Yeah, this is Madame Cuvier. This is the leader of the Karma Society. She's the one behind all this, and there's Sarah. She's had Sarah this whole time uh, in a egg, if you will, but that will be brought up later. I mean, classic SMT, you gotta have an egg in there somewhere. Somewhere, right? yeah. Usually you have the cosmic That's variety, of course. So, yeah. But unlike the others, you were all. Yeah, so in the first game, uh, Sarah was an you egg in the very. inside an egg, actually, in the very beginning of the game. And that's, that's what started all this. Us. And now, uh, pretty much explaining <laughs> what uh, Heat is up to and why he's evil. At this rate, you'll never be anything but marionettes. Right, what I uh, story. Is who's this game has a story. You. I think. Oh. I just I just said Heat was evil. The person who's been yeah, but he still did nothing wrong. Jenna I don't know. Angel. I'm thinking that the donation might have been a little bit Sarah's mistaken Angel. earlier, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah, just the a little bit. Run. I don't know. What do you think, Eho? She's Sarah's mother. Eho said to me while you were gone that he did nothing wrong. No, he just said, I think he's pretty messed up, Hole. He's pretty messed up. So. I, I believe I believe Eho. <laughs> so I'm still waiting on those uh, sandwich donations, but in the meantime, I do have a $250 donation from The Wicked Bad saying, Good luck, Daddy Pulse. I know you don't fight the Bezos head in this one, but I'm stoked for you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. That's my uh, that's my older brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Is facing total extinction. Man's insatiable greed. So they can still not be skipped. But I wanna. <laughs> I wanna do. <laughs> we tried to help. Like I said, this this cutscene. What's what's even even funnier funnier is that uh, so there's of course a dialogue choice at the end of this cutscene. Yeah. And uh, unlike sinners. every other dialogue choice in both DDS games, the, it actually matters what I choose at the end of this cutscene. I have to pick the second option at the end of this cutscene, uh, or we get to watch this cutscene again. <laughs> because if he does, no, if he does not skip the ca second cutscene, this run cannot continue because it affects the end dungeon. Yeah, so the uh, so it's it's that RPG trope of I'm going to make this choice now, but three hours later is when it's going to kick in. Yeah, so so basically Our during this, uh, at the end of this cutscene, uh, QVA here is going to give us a choice, like, hey, you should side with me and fight against uh, Angel and Lokapala, who are trying to stop me from creating, like, this world of, uh, basically everyone being bra being controlled by Sarah to, uh, you know, this world of order or whatever. Basically, your, what would be your typical SMT law alignment. Uh, and your choices are, that's kind of cool, but no, and heck no. And if you don't say heck no, then uh, you don't get the best ability in the game for the final dungeon, so. So if you're ever going to casually play this game, write that bit of information down before you start playing the game. Gotta love the classic story bosses in uh, RPG speedruns where make this choice correctly or <laughs> uh, bad things are gonna happen. Yeah, everyone loves menu bosses in speedruns. I was getting ready to say it's, it's the epitome of a menu boss. Ghoul can tell you all about wonderful menu speedruns. He's ran P4G, which uh, Persona 4 has some of the uh, most interestingly designed menu bosses. Uh, oh yeah, not just one, but about seven in sequence in the same cutscene. Uh, yeah, the the uh, the classic. If you if you select the wrong one at any point, it's bad ending and game over for your speed run. <laughs> and then you get one at the very end of the run to determine if you get the true ending or not. So it's exactly. Great. And before you do that, you have we never join you. You have to build a whole social link. So. Yep, we're going to fight uh, some Karma Soldiers here, and then this is basically a three-phase fight. Two-phase. Two-phase. We're going to fight some Karma Soldiers, and then our boy Heat's going to come in with some random fire tigers for some reason. He apparently got a couple kitty cats on the way as friends. Yeah, so here we're going we're gonna to start out the fight. We're, uh, we picked up some frost bombs earlier, which are uh, your tier two ice magic. Uh, everything in this fight is very weak to ice, so... Uh, Surprisingly, you know, I, you wouldn't expect. Oh, Gale, there you go. There's one. Oh, yep, I'm on it. 
All right, so we're gonna be, be throwing these. Uh, the Like I mentioned before, a lot of these fights in this game will have adds that will uh, then throw up shields to to prevent their uh, the main boss from taking damage and their weakness. So now these tigers are going, or they won't, okay. Normally, the tigers would start uh, would start throwing up ice drain every single turn, but uh, I guess they just didn't feel like it today. You know, they they just had their coffee break or something. They're like, ah, I don't feel like it. You, you know, you can chill out a little bit. They're just making it up for the triple George earlier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh boy. All right, so, so now I guess we can throw the rest of our ice blast. That's a, that's pretty cool, no pun intended. And, uh, oh, I need to pro up Void Fire. That's very important you Void Fire every single turn. Don't forget to do that. And we're going to Mazeo, because that's cool. Uh, can you stop doing that, Heat, please? So Heat has, like, three attacks, four attacks, technically. So he will always target Surf, uh, no nice matter bit. what. Nice whiff, yeah. Uh, he'll always target Surf no matter what. Did I happen to get a... Uh, I got a Magni Bomb. Let's throw it here. Uh, he'll, ar he'll target Surf no matter what, except for uh, something like Double Claw, uh, uh, double Slash, which is random targeting. Uh, he always targets Surf. If Surf dies or is not in the party for this boss fight, he kind of just goes ham and spams very powerful AoE physical attacks on everyone uh, until you bring Surf back. So important that we don't do that. And that we put up Void Fire every turn because Heat will just throw out Augie Dines occasionally or Hellfang Fang and all sorts of fun things. And we don't really want any of that happening to us. So ideally, he just spams Augie Dine every turn and just crashes into our shield. So we took out the Tigers now so we can swap over to using Bufu on him. And Void Fire with Gale first because, uh, you know, we everyone loves Gale and his ability to... Uh, accurately hit his targets every single time. And by manifesting success for Gale. <laughs> Alright, basic attack, sure, let's go. Uh, I should heal Surf here. Got another Bufu. Uh, I'm also autoing through enemy turns because it does make like their basic attack animations go by faster uh, if I do that. Good call on that heal, by the way. Yeah, you know, if there's one thing I can count on Heat to, uh, if there's one thing I can always expect from Heat, it's that he's going to be a very uncooperative and horrible person, so... Uh... <laughs> he didn't do anything <laughs> wrong! <laughs> so, uh, Get there... ready for that argument for the next <laughs> four hours. So uh, there we go, we beat Heat. We beat the Heat, we did it. In fact, we did, because it started to rain today. I was gonna say that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Heat runs away, and we're able to uh, now progress forward and continue the Karma Society Tower. We're pretty much done with the dungeon. There's no more random encounters from this point onward. Uh, there's one more forced fight that's basically just a regular fight that we have uh, coming up here, but we're just going to be advancing to the end, because you know, we've heard what Madame QVA had to say. She. Uh, didn't really seem, uh, we didn't really, aren't particularly amicable to uh, to what she's trying to sell us. So uh, now we're gonna go meet up with Angel to uh, hear uh, to hear what she has to say about this whole situation. And uh, at this point now, uh, the like contentions that were kind of, you know, rumbling within the Karma Society have erupted into a full on civil war. So now we have the, uh, the soldiers wearing blue who are uh, still loyal to QVA fighting against the soldiers uh, in red who are, oh, really? Come on, hit, hit the curse, hit, oh, okay. Uh, so ailments in this game have a priority to them uh, where, you know, higher priority ailments will overwrite lower priority ones and you can only have one ailment at the same time. Uh, so there, Gale got muted, which means he can't do magic. So I was kind of hoping that that wicked curse was going to curse him so that I could use Tentarafu without having to stop to heal, but. Whatever. But now, now you have the soldiers in red who work for Angel. Uh, now as we're going through here, we'll get into encounters with these uh, soldiers who are like, I'm not here to fight you. Please keep going. And we're like, okay. Yeah, it's pretty much, uh, it's pretty much, uh, the, the best thing I could compare this area to is when you, like, you're doing the genocide ending in Undertale and you get an encounter, but no one was there because they're just, it, it's just what uh, time waste. So here we, we meet up with Angel, who was the uh, the final boss of DDS1, like we said. So, you know, we're obviously very happy to see her after Overjoyed. You know, after she tried to kill <laughs> us in the last game. 
Uh, but here she's like, hey, uh, you know, Madame Cuvier wants a world of order with, you know, people without the will to act for themselves, you know, basically being controlled by Sarah. I want a world of just complete chaos where everyone becomes a demon and just goes a ham. And we're like, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Chaos. <laughs> yeah. Chaos? And you, know, you know how we feel about chaos around these parts. So, uh, but for the time being, we decide to... Uh, align ourselves with her uh, alignments of convenience she provides a helicopter for us to uh, get to the egg facility the EGG facility where uh, where Sarah is being held and so we can go rescue her and now we can buy a very uh, a very balanced item from this pyro jack here uh, we buy the impel stone from him we'll we'll see what that does in a little bit. And then we're going to sell this Soma we got as a drop from Fighting Heat, so we have some money. Nice free 18k. Yes, uh, and now we're actually going to, uh, so y'all donated to see some uh, some shoot 'em up action. We're actually gonna do that right now. So this kid here, <laughs> hey big shot, wanna play? What are we playing? This cool game I found outside the other night. I'm not really into games, but okay. And suddenly. Okay, you asked for it. You asked for it. We are, we're CLO and we're, and we're playing a shmup. So in this shmup, you can uh, shoot bullets and you can devour. Uh, when you devour at things, you build up the combo meter in the corner, which gives you uh, which uh, gives you a bigger score multiplier. And uh, basically the entire goal of this mini game is to break the high score. We really, uh, we will ideally be beating the mini game, mm -hmm. but our real goal here is to break the high score. If you break 300K points, you get a reward for winning. Uh, in fact, if you beat the mini game without breaking the high score, the kid makes fun of you. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're doing this for a couple of rewards or a one reward. But what's cool about this is the high score is thirty thousand. Pretty easy to beat. The hard mode score is six hundred k. Good yeah. luck. Yeah. So Rav donated, said he'd give a hundred dollars if I broke the hard mode score. Uh, unfortunately, I have to let charity down and. I've never broken the hard mode score before, and already this is not going in a way that uh, I would break that. You have to pretty much play perfectly for all three levels to break the hard mode high score. Mm -hmm. We'll break the normal mode high score like by the very end of area two, if not the beginning. Also, this is the boss of the area. This is Baphomet. Also, if you if you listen to Cielo's battle cries and yells, you'll notice that for some reason they didn't translate it from the uh, Japanese version to the US version. So we have a uh, Japanese version CLO right now. Yeah, so one of my favorite things is whenever I play this mini game on stream, uh, like just for funsies, I'll play this mini game and you'll have someone who hasn't seen it before be like, Wait, what the heck is going on? Like this mini game is very not well known. So what not well known in fact that apparently the localizers didn't even know about it. Cause uh, yeah, we get other than the okay, you asked for it at the very beginning, we get <laughs> yep. absolutely zero uh, English voices during this. So. Uh, we do also get the uh, the rare the rare demon theme during this mini game, which is a uh, a fantastic song that hopefully we'll actually be hearing like in the context of the game uh, coming up here soon. Yeah. I don't know. I think uh, I think I think uh, he ho over here is uh, feeling a little little gutsy. Wants to hop into the spotlight a bit. So if he's oh that's unfortunate. So if he if he's feeling up to it, maybe he'll uh, he'll make an appearance. Yeah. So when you die, like in most uh, shoot 'em ups, you lose your you lose some of your power. So you got it back pretty quick, though. Yeah, uh, thankfully I had no Moekane, uh show up. Today. Yeah. I hope we see some Omoikanes later too. Yeah. We'll we'll explain why we're memeing on those demons if it happens. Because they're your boy. Yeah, they are the boys. All right, so uh, come on out, Hackathon. Oh, boy. We uh... This one, instead of just doing 100 fists, it now shoots bullets. All I wanted was heckin', Hackathon curious with heckin' laser beams. Attached to their heckin' heads? Yeah. Oh, boy. You can tell it's late night shit. <laughs> He's Hackathon because he has a heck of ton of hands, right? That's what that means? Uh, that's obviously don't, don't that's, laugh. <laughs> that's obviously what the Greeks meant when they named him. That's you know. Hey, we're going to stage three. Woo! Now we've flown over a grassland, a city, and now we're, we're in, in space. space. So uh, 
Apparently, Cielo can just, you know, fly in space, you know, as as one does. I mean, he's kind of shaped like a jet. It, he, I, I'm sure he's fine. I mean, he is the coolest plane in the game. So something funny, speaking of Cielo being a jet, uh, in the previous cutscene that I skipped of the uh, of the party going to the uh, the EGG facility, you actually see that all of the party is in the jet except for Cielo. They make him uh, sit outside of the plane and fly there himself. So uh, I mean, if I could do that, flying would be so much easier. I would not take a plane. All right, so we've broken the normal mode hard uh, high score by this point. So we have we have accomplished our goal. Uh, even if we were to game over right now, the kid would be like, "Wow, you're so cool!" And we're like, "Yeah, we are." We're All those so are cool. kelpies. I wondered what those were for a second. Yeah, space horses. Space horses. Yeah. I mean, if you if you put space in front of anything, it instantly becomes ten times better. Like Lord of the Flies. Lord of the space. space. Yeah. So this is the final boss of the mini game. This is Beelzebub. Uh, he does have a devil put aside for us, and by that I mean more curtain fire shooters. Uh, Let's see what you did there. So at this point, I have to kind of focus on this because now he summons these flies that do that. And now this is going to take a while. Hopefully we win. <laughs> that made me nervous. Okay. Ooh, oh, we did it. Hey, let's go. First try. All right, so unfortunately, we didn't break the hard mode high score, but we break the normal high score. Hey, that was cool. Here's a prize. Obtain two Starfire Sapphires. Come back again later. No, thank you. So uh, something funny about that kid is he actually like completely changes his tone of voice depending on which party lead we were talking to. Later on in the game, you can uh, you're, you you can use Gale as you walk around, and then Sarah even later. And the way he talks to your party completely changes depending on who it is. With Surf, he's like, "Hey, tough guy," and then if you lose, you're like, "Wow, that was terrible! I can't believe you lost." Uh, and then with Gale, he's like. Hey, you're pretty cool. Want to play this game? And then if you lose, he's like, "Oh, it's okay, man. You got this next time, my guy." And then Sarah, he's like, "Hey, do you want to play a game with me?" And then you 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 lose, and he's like, "Oh, it's okay. Like it's fine. It's just funny how he's just like completely just totally rude to Surf, and then everyone else, he's like, "Wow, you're cool," or whatever. All right, so now time that we... for everybody's favorite egg. Yes, egg. So now. We are in the egg. We are going to try to rescue Sarah now that we have uh, shown off our uh, video game prowess. Uh, so, what was I saying? I was saying something else. I don't remember. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yes, egg. Um, we're pretty much on our, like he said, we're on our way to save Sarah. We're going to get into a nice forced fight here against more fire tigers. Yeah, so here we're going to try to devour one or two of these tigers with Cielo. Uh, looks like we can go freeze. Thank you for not freezing. We can now land this devour here. Uh, friendly reminder, Cielo does have the trick ring on still, which means that he is doing less damage with his uh, physical attacks. That was a spicy devour. Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> I just had to. <laughs> there we go, double devour, and oh. awakes, nice. And that masters lightning, so now Cielo has Zionga. Oh, I remembered what I was gonna say. So our reward for clearing the uh, the shoot 'em up mini game, those uh, star sapphires, I believe that was what they were. Mm -hmm. uh, let me do this menu really quick, and then I will finish that train of thought. Zionga, and then Tarakanja on five, and then we're going to put Elec Repel on two. Uh, two. And then Gale, you get Devour on one, you get Devour on seven. Oh, wait, and you also get uh, Hama on one because there's a lot of things that are weak to light here. Uh, so the item, the Star of Sapphires we got, we got two of them. Uh, they are gems that we can give to our Karma Rings. Uh, essentially what they do is they give plus five, which is, that's pretty cool, five yeah. whole stat points to a random stat. So uh, basically we have a... Uh, like a two in five chance of that being really awesome, like a one in five chance of it being okay, and like a, another two in five of it just being laughably terrible. 
Uh, so we'll see what we get. Uh, we're, the protect ring that we bought is going to be used a lot later. I forgot to buy a mantra for Cielo. Let me just really quickly go back and do that. But what's cool about the uh, ring is uh, it also has a reset function. So if Frito doesn't get what what uh, he wants on the ring, he can reset it, but he will lose the Star Sapphire. But sometimes that happens. All right, so now Cielo is going to use Angel. He's been watching all the Tentara Foo fun, and he wants in on the action. Uh, also, we want Tarunda because... The, uh, the boss of this dungeon really likes Fizz, uh, and there's a lot, of, a lot of bosses in this game really like Fizz. Uh, it's part of why, when I mentioned this game is very Fizz unfriendly, uh, in addition to just magic being just completely overpowered. Uh, another big thing uh, about uh, Fizz in this game is that because a lot of bosses really like Fizz, that means that there's a lot of bosses and strong enemies that just don't care. Uh, if you try to Fizz them, they just null or resist or whatever it, so. Space birds are back to get you. Yeah, the birds are the birds are back in town. The birds are back in town. No, <laughs> that didn't work. All right, so here we we got the devourers we needed on Cielo. Now we need uh, like three of them on Gale and one or two on Surf. So we got that Sati devourer there. Now, nice yellow crystal drop that can also go on the protect ring later. Mm-hmm. Uh, you very rarely see magic. Uh, it's like the devs knew magic was completely busted, and so uh, the magic boosting <laughs> gems are the ones you never see. So uh, getting one from Sati there is quite nice, and we can do another devour here with Gale. Shoutouts to uh, all of Gale's moves. Uh, all of his fizz moves look very cool. Uh, most of them involve him like break dancing. Mm -hmm. His crit uh, animation is really, really cool in my opinion. Uh, don't heal yourself, okay, cool. And we can do another devour here. He pretty much jumps up in the air and does like a Liu Kang bicycle kick. Yeah, that's one. That one's cool. Uh, his AOE, fit, like one of his AOE fizz abilities, like when he uses Mad Rushes, he actually just straight up like does like a break dance, like jump on his spin. head and spin around. Yeah, <laughs> Gale's got the moves basically. Yeah. like Gale is really cool. What Gale lacks in accuracy, he makes up for in his ability to break dance. I mean, if anything, his accuracy problems make sense when you realize he's trying to just like break dance attack everything. Pretty dizzy after that. <laughs> yeah, so here you yeah, go. Yeah, here. That's like the Liu Kang bicycle kick. But I will say, Cielo has crystal. the best spell cast animation. Oh, yeah. The. Uh -huh. the, the, the I'm just. Hello. T poses to assert dominance. Yes, exactly. So now we're kind of going through egg. Um, we're going to be picking up some. Uh, some items along the way to help us. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty standard dungeon. Good song, too. Yeah, the, the name of the song is Egg of the Universe. Uh, you know, so throughout this week of learning this game with you, because, you know, uh, and all that, learning the names of the songs has been my favorite part. Yeah, it turns out when, you're, uh, when you spend your week around a music nerd, you learn a lot of things. Yes. Gail's about to learn Heat 10. Nice, nice. Heat 10 out of 10. Heat 10 out of 10. We have time for a quick pair of donations here. Absolutely. We have a $37 donation from Ravanon saying, Hey, Freedom, you might not have cleared the hard mode target score, but this is partial credit. Runner's choice of incentive, which I don't believe we have, by the way. What would you like your incentive to be for the marath or for the run? Uh, let's see that reenacting the wedding scene. That sounds <laughs> glorious. You got it. Uh, also, I have $15 from Avatar of the Stage saying, Hello, Zero. It's been a while since we've talked about a scrubby little grassroots marathon that was the brainchild of some cursed gamer. Glad to see you on the big <laughs> stage now and doing well. Put my donation to your choice, which I also don't know that we have. Uh, you know what? I want to see the wedding scene, too. You got it. With that, let's get, see some more donations come in. But in the meantime, let's watch some more of this glorious run. Yeah, we st no one no one has told us yet what sandwich Argilla is eating. I'm going to take a bet because this is my personal favorite sandwich mm -hmm. and I actually had it earlier today. It is a Subway steak and cheese because they are in Portland. They got to have Subways. The solid bet. So yeah, we're collecting security cards here. Uh, I believe this is the password part of the dungeon, or is that next part? Uh, that's not for a while. So yeah, yeah. so basically the, the mechanic with this dungeon is that you, you run into these security gates that are numbered one through five. 
and uh, each of them you have to get a key card to uh, to progress. Most of them are on scientists. And a nice amaryllis drop, that's another flower. Uh, most of them are, or pretty much all of them are on scientists, and we have to get the key cards from the scientists to open the doors and progress forward once we get a little further into the dungeon. Ah, yes, berserk mode against human mode targets. Excellent. Now we run. <laughs> uh, a little later into the dungeon, these key cards will have passwords on them. Uh, the, the trick with the password is they're like, oh, there's a password. That's, uh, I don't know how to deal with that, but the passwords are all written on the back of the cards. So pretty much you have to go into your key items and Resident Evil style look at the cards. Yeah. Or uh, just the description, and it'll have parts of the passwords on them. Yeah. Yeah, thankfully, I have the passwords written down, and I've inputted them so many times I have them mostly memorized anyway. I just have to look at the first few digits, because I've played this game too many times. It's fine. Ah, uh, no, not comatose. Okay. Nice HP surf and nice MP, Gale. Okay, we're alive. Scathic is kind of scary. She uh, has very Maybe. strong physical attacks. Yes. And, uh... Hey, another free cat's eye. I'm going to hold on to that one and throw it on the high power ring later. That's what I figured would happen. Yeah, I've already powered up the power ring a little bit, so I'm going to save. <laughs> You've powered up the power. Yeah. All right. Hey, it's a cactus and it's frozen. That's weird. <laughs> Surely that'll never come up again. Frozen cacti? See it all the time. No no big deal. This, this, is, this is just Oregon for you. You, 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 know, you drive down the street in Portland and there's just, you know, rows of frozen cactuses. Clearly, that, that that that's that's how that works, right? I don't know. I've I've never been to Portland. I flew into the airport once. It was it was kind of cool. Eugene's pretty, but there weren't cactuses in Eugene. I've never been to Oregon, so I'm going to take your word on that. Oh, I forgot to grab a uh, mantra for Gale. How close are you to a safe point? I'm. It's right there. Like right oh, there. it really is. It literally is. I remember the map now. <laughs> Yeah, so throughout this dungeon, we have to grab a grab a bunch of mantras for our party members. I also need to restore Gale's MP here pretty soon. Let's look at my... So I'm going to give this vital data to surf uh, extra MP, extra survivability. My chakra drop count is a little pitifully low at the moment. Uh, we are about to get some data, though, that will help supplement that. I'm just going to run from these Karma Soldiers. I... Again, Karma Soldiers don't give you any Atma points, so they're, uh, other than getting like attack item drops, which are kind of cool, they're really not worth fighting uh, in most cases. They don't even give very much money. Yeah, no, not really. Like, you really only fight them if you want attack items. All right, mm -hmm. so now we expanded the Mantra Grid to its final final form. This is the ultimate Frieza uh, Mantra Grid. <laughs> Uh, here we're going to be grabbing Fallen Hero on Argilla, which has Medea, which is the AOE healing spell. We're going to be... Oops. Gale, where are you? There you are. We're going to be grabbing Demon on Gale, which has Taunt, which we talked about earlier. It is going to be our uh, most useful debuff skill throughout uh, a lot of fights. And we're going to save our game, because as you saw earlier with those Scathic... Scathics? Sca scathics. Yeah, that's the plural for Scathic, I guess. Uh, Scathi? Yeah. <laughs> the uh, they hurt really bad, and yeah. uh, things are. Even though we are able to deal with encounters pretty quickly in this dungeon, they uh, can still do some pretty good damage to us. All right, so here I am going to do this. I'm going, oh, I shouldn't have it. Uh, okay, we're fine. Uh, so here, what we're gonna do is I need Surf to get one or two devours just to catch him up on lightning, and so we're going to devour that Gadon. Nice stomach egg, very cool. That's why I didn't kill the uh, the Talon here. So like I said, stomach ache. Uh, it makes it so you the character who's ached occasionally loses their turn, and also if they end the fight while well ached, they will not get any AP for the rest of the, or for that encounter. Uh, you still do get the Devour AP if you ache and then cure it, though, so yeah. you'll see Surf is still going to get a good bit of AP here. So one thing we really haven't talked about is uh, magical skills versus physical skills and their cost. Um, magical skills will always cost MP, where stuff like Devour and any uh, anything like that will cost HP, so it's kind of an interesting uh, take on you, you exhaust yourself to use a physical, but yet you you use your magic to cast magic. It is actually one uh, pretty cool, uh, pretty cool benefit that that Fizz does have in uh, in a number of games in the series uh, is that it is a lot easier to restore your HP than it is to restore your mm -hmm. MP because you can go to the store and just buy 99 items and just keep using physical skills. 
But yeah. we, yeah. Don't, we don't use that because we're leaning towards magic in this game and in this route. Okay, can you... Thank you. That should be the last devour I need on Surf. He should get everything else he needs from just encounters. Uh, I need to finish Lightning on Surf by the end of the dungeon. The uh, the boss of the dungeon, well, whoops, well, not weak to uh, electricity, takes more damage from electricity than he does from other stuff. Uh, and all of and he will change his phase throughout the fight, and all of those phases I can use electricity on, whereas like every other element I can't. All right. Uh, yep. So one or two more fights, and we should have lightning done. Also, I should do the setting for Gale here, just because having He Ten available to me is uh, nice. So having uh, Zanma and Zionga uh, equipped means that I can use the Mazanma combo, which uh, area of effect tier two force ability. And pretty much everything that we can't kill with Tentarafu, we can kill with Mazanma. So we have our, our two... Uh, oops, I almost just dropped my controller on the ground. That would have been fun. Uh, we have a response to pretty much everything in this game now. Yeah. It's like Pokemon. You want to have a lot of co uh, cover team coverage. And we have that now with uh, all the abilities that we've learned so far. <laughs> there goes my last chakra drop. That's cool. Was that your last chakra drop? That oh no! This is my last one. We're we're gonna get uh, some quick data here pretty soon, and yeah, uh, some true. chakra bots. But if enemies would uh, would drop uh, some chakra drops for me, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. That's a big ask. Oh well. But we'll we'll, we'll hope. All right. So now that we like, since we've done our like calculated devours, now we can just go back to. Uh, just blowing everything up with Tentarafu. That's the, uh, the, like, the only times you don't Tentarafu is if something nulls it or if you actually have to have some sort of uh, precision with what you're doing. Also, that was a uh, Revival Gem drop. That's very nice. <laughs> Thanks, game. Cielo, uh, Cielo being the luckiest man in the room, I guess. Yeah. I mean, hey, he turns into an airplane for his demon form. That, that's pretty, pretty lucky. I mean, he could have been, like, a blob or something. Like, Also saves a lot of money. If you really think about it. All right. So this guy's going to stop us. He's going to warn us. Oh, like, hey, the uh, he basically just lets us know that the Trabana are here. And we're like, oh, great. We get to fight the Trabana again. We we love fighting the Trabana. That's, that's our favorite fight. So at least we know about it now. That's pretty cool. At Good. least we were forewarned this time. All right. So Surf has Zionga. So that's the last mantra he learns. And now Cielo can get in on the Ten Tower of Fufan. Uh, Brayden, thank you. We're going to set a Lech Repel there, and uh, he won't be getting in on the fun quite yet. Yeah, but he's, he has the ability to now. Yeah. So the way uh, the way combos in this game are like listed out for you is you uh, combos are listed in a specific order. You have Fizz combos at the top, then you have Magical combos, then you have any combo that involves an ailment, any healing combo, and then any combo that involves buffs and debuffs. Uh, here we're going to be getting Bikuni. Uh, shout outs to Kuni, who is one of the one of my mods in Twitch chat and a good friend, and he always gets very confused whenever I uh, grab that mantra. And we're going to be grabbing Fire Demon on Surf because there are a couple of fights later on that we will want some uh, some pretty consistent fire coverage for. So we're going to get a, a start towards Viant. And I don't have the passcode yet. I'm lost. Okay, I'm found. <laughs> that was that was a quick trip to Lostville. Yeah, you know, just had to do like a little quick uh, quick loop around the area. You, you never spin around in a room when you get lost and be like, why did I come in here? Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so we got quick data. Quick data gives you two, uh, two agility. Okay, I am going to run away from this encounter. I, I was about to dare you to do a pot shot on that one. <laughs> I mean, worst thing that happened, I hit it, and then it, it just immediately kills me because of counterattack. Oh, yeah. Osei does have counter in this game. I forgot. Hello, Brain. Would you like to join us uh, today? It would be very helpful. Thank you. All right. He-ho took it. He-ho took the Brain. He, how dare you? Oh, cool. They're transforming. AP. Uh, hi, Persky. <laughs> Persky's <laughs> an enemy from, like, two dungeons from now. Yeah. Uh, so the humans can transform uh, into any dungeon before, current, or after. <laughs> this this uh, elephant here is two dungeons from now, like Frito said. So we got to kind of be careful. Yeah, Zandine's fun. Thankfully, Surf just doesn't care about any of your magic. <laughs> right. But hey, we get a we get a good bit of AP from that, so that's cool. 
Yeah, usually it's like within a range of like one dungeon. Like you'll see things from like the next dungeon in the previous one. Sometimes, yeah, you just get like, oh yeah, this is an enemy you'll see in like two and a half dungeons from now. It's cool. It's always so funny seeing just how powerful magic is in DDS, by the way. Just, yeah. Just face tanking a, a, a Zandine from an enemy from two dungeons in the future. No problem. Yeah, my favorite uh, phenomena is when you uh, have, uh, is in DDS1 when you have a max magic surf take less damage from a fire attack, which is his weakness, uh, than heat does when heat resists fire. And it's pretty, it's always quite hilarious. Just be yeah. like, like, yeah, he took weakness damage, but he took like, say, like 10 damage from it, and then heat got hit by the same attack and took like 30. So we have some very angry goats here. Uh, angry that Cielo kind of uh, made a mockery of them in the shmup minigame. Uh, and Baphomet's kind of annoying in the sense that he uh, nulls panic. So we can't Tentarafu our problems away here. <laughs> but we can Mazanma them away. Yeah, so we can do Mazanma into Surf using Mazio. They have 200 HP, and so we're able to just take them out like that. Mm -hmm. I am actually like quite far ahead in AP right now, which is very interesting. All right, so there we pick up the speedy ring. The speedy ring is a uh, is a really cool ring. It's one of like my personal favorite rings in the game. What it does is when you have it equipped, it means uh, the oh no, I do not agree with this. And <laughs> uh, whenever you your first action when uh, with the person that has the speedy ring equipped, uh, the power of that action is doubled. Going to run away. Thank you. <laughs> run far away. Uh, the, the the power of your first attack with the speedy ring equipped is doubled, and then the next attack is like roughly the same damage they would normally do, and then it drops down to dealing half damage. So the speedy ring is basically like the speedrunner's dream ring. You're rewarded for killing encounters quickly, and it's part of what makes Tentarafu so useful. Okay, so this is one one seven seven one four zero nine. Eight six seven five three zero nine. Yep. Hmm. Three zero nine. All right. So at this point, we can run into Baphomet as a random enemy, and uh, like I said, Baphomet knows panic. Uh, in addition, we can also see Pazuzu. Speaking of, speak of the Pazuzu, and he shall uh, appear. Uh, so we have to. Thankfully, Pazuzu is weak to electricity, and we got lightning learned very early, so we're able to just snipe the Pazuzu, and then Tentarafu is normal. Uh, Baphomets, we'll probably just be running away from. Nice vital data. That's very good. Uh, I'm going to immediately throw that onto Sir. Yeah. I'm going to save that quick data for for Gale. So throwing the quick data on Gale is both nice because a it's a good heal, also boosting his agility does hopefully p fix his. Uh, Accuracy situation. Please do not land Palimpa. So panic is a uh, is a fun status ailment uh, that uh, occasionally your character will just lose their turn and just do something random instead, uh, which uh, includes throwing away a uh, percentage of your money, which is not fun. <laughs> the uh, the amount of money you throw away is reduced by having a higher luck stat, I believe, and. Uh, or by having the Miser's Spirit ability, which is an ability that exists. You're not gonna see Miser's Spirit this run, I'm sorry. No, absolutely not. It's, it's very much an outer mantra ability. Uh, it's not necessarily an outer mantra ability. It's actually like fairly low level, but it's like low level in the Fizz Tree. Ooh, yeah, that explains it. All right, so this is 4005, uh, 1918. I usually, whenever there's like a year or like a number that's like from the 20th century onward, I do like say shout outs to people born in 1918, but uh, I have a feeling there's not very many of those watching this stream right now. I don't know. 1918 was a cool year, I think. Did World War II end in 1918 or 1919? I don't remember. Ghoul, we might need a 1918 fact. <laughs> 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 Donate with your facts about the year 1918. Let us know all the cool things that happened that year. Once those come in, I will be happily reading all the 1918 facts y'all can send me. I Fantastic. will put it that way. So now we have sandwiches and 1918 facts. Yes. What's <laughs> What could possibly go, go we, we, happen next? We uh, need uh, donations for like $19.18 that uh, yeah. tell us about sandwiches. Uh, uh, I also wouldn't mind seeing uh, donations trying to curse the run a little bit, see if we get that Gale miscounter up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, 
We could a little bit three. too accurate. He's just been like just a little too accurate so far. I want to I want to make uh, freedom sweat a bit. <laughs> I just realized I forgot to grab an item. I have to go back for. Uh, which is fine. It's a quick trek backwards. Uh, I need to pick up an attack item that's very important for a boss uh, a little bit later. But I, I definitely need the item, and so just have to do a quick backtrack. We're almost done with this dungeon. Ronald McDonald learned fire. Uh... Is his next fire mantra. Nice. Really glad to see not heat learning his mantras. And uh, picking up last item over here, and then we have to backtrack for that item I forgot. And then we'll uh, be pretty much done with the dungeon. I'm going to run away from this because I don't want to deal with Baphomet. Congratulations, Skathic. You picked your friends well. He ho, what do you think? Do you think uh, Gale needs to miss a little bit more? Yeah? I agree. All right, tag this save because stuff can kill me. So the Baphomets, in addition to like throwing out curse, I guess I should explain. So curse is an ailment that makes it so you're, uh, you become a lot more susceptible to any dark element thing. So insta kills, stone, uh, any attack that it's dark that uses death element stuff. Uh, in addition, uh, well, yeah, it makes you weak to death skills, and he likes throwing out uh, insta like death insta kills, and so being susceptible to those is usually not a not a very good time. Oh yeah, there you go. So satisfying. That one's for the mermaids. Shoutouts to SMT5. Yeah, I definitely yeah. just walked right past that. That's cool. How far back is it? It's just I have to go through this room again. Okay. Oh, good. Every time you see Osei, I just, I feel you hitting left X. I probably should have just killed that one, uh, but it's fine. He simply will not kill me. He, he simply did not kill me. Uh, so weird little thing about this game. You can actually tell if you're going to be able to run from an encounter by how quickly your party members jump back. This is something you would never notice. Casually, right. But I've noticed because I played these games a little too much. But uh, basically, if your characters jump back immediately, then that means you failed to run away. But if they like wait like half a second and then jump backwards, then that means you succeeded. I guess it's like the game is successfully loaded, like getting you out of the fight or something. I don't know. Later on when we have quick escape, then we will be able to uh, just, you know, know that we ran away because it will say quick escape instead of retreat. I'm going to kill this one to send a message to all the OSAs out there to leave me alone. <laughs> the SMT way. They've been showing up a little bit too much. I'm uh, not down with that. I was expecting a group of like three of them right there just to like do the opposite of what I said. All right, so now we can go fight the boss now that I have remembered to pick up those impact bombs. Those impact bombs are essential for, okay, come on. I get it, you're cool. I have acknowledged you, Osei. Now, can you please stop trying to murder me? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I was about to say, you might <laughs> recover some MP. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Yeah, we're just going to trek to the boss now. Uh, yeah, thankfully, the, the boss door is actually closer to the beginning of this floor. So, hey, look who <laughs> it is. It's our friends. <laughs> Kenton Tarfu miss. Yes. Oh, boy. All right, so this is one, two, two, five, nineteen, nineteen. 19. All right, so over here in this room over here, there is a great chakra, which is a full MP restored to the whole party. More importantly, it sells for a lot of money. 90% of what you're going to pick up in an SMT speed run is for money. <laughs> Generally, yeah. All right, so we're going to change our party order around here, and then we're going to move our rings. So uh, we picked up this ring called the Change Ring, uh, which we'll explain a little bit more in a second. Now you are going to equip that. I'm going to put some vitality on the Change Ring, and then we're going to... I already set my skills and everything. Let's just give Gale that quick data now. All right, so coming up is one of, like, the top three, like, scariest fights in this game. Uh, so hopefully we don't die. 
Uh, so what the change ring does is it essentially, uh, you, like, you know how we can transform and revert our characters, uh, and usually that costs a full turn to do. The change ring lets you do that for completely free. Oh, uh, boy. Oh, yeah, so uh, Trevana Earth is here. He actually devoured the other two members of the Trevana, and now he's turned into a Baden. And we get a very awesome song here called Hunting Betrayal. It's a, it's a reprise of the, uh, of, the hunt of the battle theme from the previous game. So here, uh, so like you can see, we can revert Cielo here, and we didn't take any turns at all. It's basically a super pass. Yeah. So when in a lot of fights like this, where we're trying to get our uh, our buffs and debuffs up as quickly as possible, we'll have we'll usually have a character just uh, transforming and uh, reverting over and over again just to get us as many turns as possible. So Abaddon uses primarily physical attacks, especially in his first phase here, and so we want to debuff his attack all the way, so we take as little damage as possible. Uh, so this fight, nice dodge, Gale, nice, let's man. go. So this fight has a mechanic behind it where after he, you deal a certain amount of damage to him, he will actually eat one of your party members and then change his affinities to one of the other members of the Trivana. The first one he swaps to is Ganga, which is, the mat, again, the mage. Uh, here we're going to pass because I actually don't want to deal too much damage. I will say this, though. Abaddon has a great dentist. Oh, yeah, his teeth are immaculate. Yeah, like, I'm jealous. Like, look at those pearly whites. Okay. They're so straight, too. Yeah, right? All right, so now we uh, we purchased that item, the Impel Stone, earlier. So what we're going to do is we're going to use it. It <laughs> turns uh, one of your press turns into four blinking press turns. So we now have all of the turns. And, and, and uh, we're going to abuse that. Yeah, we're just going to go ham on ham on uh, Abaddon now for a little bit. Basically, the goal here is we're going to try to do as much damage as we possibly can to him here so that uh, when he devours uh, one of our party members, he is somewhat close to being dead. And when he devours, we want to see him devour preferably Gale. Let's see who he decides to target, though. In your last round, he did Surf. Yeah, so Surf is... Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, he ate Surf. Yeah, so I shouldn't have said anything. The one person you don't want to see him devour ever. Uh, there is a decent chance that we lose the fight now. We'll see. It is possible to recover this. But uh, let's find out. So what we do here is we throw up an Elect Repel. Ideally, he just like crashes into our shields over and over again with Mazeodyne. Uh, and then he'll uh, regurgitate Surf on his own. Uh, so basically, the this we're kind of on a time limit now for uh, damage. We have to deal a certain amount of damage to him now. Uh, before three turns pass. If we don't, then he will use an ability called Noxious Cloud, which will uh, eject the devoured person out of the party and then one-shot everyone else. Uh, just because of how much HP we have, it will one-shot us. Uh, so that will kill us. That is not Zeodyne. Use Zeodyne, please. Thank you. All right, I have an extra wild card. It won't do very much damage. Uh, Almighty doesn't do all that much to him, but it's something. 81's better than zero. Yeah, and so if you if you do enough damage to him, then he will uh, just spit out that party member here. Yeah, so I'd almost digested you. He regurgitates them. We're good. We we don't die. And with a fancy breakdance move. A lot of the characters in this game are breakdancers. Oh, nice. He just Zeodyne to serve twice. That's cool. You're so cool, Abaddon. All right, so now we're, we're good to just finish up the fight. We, we survived. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, he has a 1 in 3 chance to give you a result that is not favorable. I'm on, uh, of the last 10 Abaddon fights I've done, or the last 10 runs I've done, so all of my practice runs of this game, extra strength on Surf, yay. Yay. Uh, of the last 10 <laughs> runs that I've done, Abaddon has eaten Surf, I think, 7 or 8 of the last 10 runs that I've done. And again, it, it's just a one in three chance of who he picks, and it's just always been like the one person you don't want, which is all good fun. Now we get to walk out of the, or we get to go a little bit further just to come back out. Yeah, so uh, this is the very end of the dungeon. We have another uh, unskippable cutscene here. I will say uh, for this cutscene, there is a bit of a sensitive content warning. 
Uh, someone is going to get impaled and there is going to be blood. Uh, so if you are disturbed by such things, I would uh, avert your eyes once... Heat's gonna show up once he starts running at us. I would uh, avert your eyes for uh, for a few seconds. This is a good time if you have that to use the bathroom and try to get some water. Yeah, uh, this event <laughs> be skipped by... I'm gonna put the... Con well, I'm gonna set the controller to, to, to mash turbo for me and I'm just gonna take my hands off the controller. In the meantime, I do have a donation. Oh, go for it. We have a nineteen dollar and twenty cent donation from Furritskin, saying nineteen eighteen rounded up, and Argila would eat a Veggie Delight sandwich because of events from DDS one. Actually, yeah, that, that's, that is, that's fair. You that win. is correct. Yeah, you you would win. <laughs> like I was thinking that I'm like she'd probably eat something with lots of vegetables, but uh, but yes, yeah. Thank you for it. Yeah, shout outs to uh, to Furret back there, just chilling. You were gone. Awesome dude, hanging out, hanging out with us this that week. We'll need to wait. Oh yeah, so uh, at this point, uh, if you are uh, sensitive to uh, some graphic imagery, I would look away for a couple seconds uh, upcoming here. So how are you feeling about this run, Hiho? You think it's going pretty well? Well, you don't have to put it like that, okay? Wow. Hiho is rude. This is a family-friendly stream, my guy. I mean, thankfully he's not mic'd up, You're otherwise uh, that would have been pretty bad. Yeah, thankfully we don't, don't we didn't mic him, like, come on. He-ho, don't knock over the plant, please. Stop you know what, he-ho's just, he-ho needs a nap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was resting him on the plant. He's oh, where are you? That's, yeah, that's what I was. There, there we go. go. Yeah. Teamwork. Now just sit there and Heat think and about what Heat and not said. during teamwork. Yeah, this is one of the coolest scenes in the game for me, though. Yeah. Gasp. <laughs> Fatality, yeah. He uh, he discovered what Mortal Kombat was. and uh, I, I like the classic. Somebody gets impaled, and then there's the, the nine different jump frames between the 18 different people in the room. We're very 90s. Very 90s. So, uh... In order to protect, uh, in order to protect, you know, the rest of our party from heat going crazy, we kind of drag heat into the egg, uh, and that kind of reminds Sarah of uh, some things she's seen in the past uh, involving sur uh, previous versions of Surf and Heat. Yeah, these are the human forms of Surf and Heat here. Uh, Sarah was awake the whole time. Yeah, yeah. so uh, she uh, it's pretty upset seeing uh, seeing what just happened, and she sends a. Uh, those very negative emotions uh, straight to uh, God. So as the Cyber Shaman, she's able to communicate with God who lives in the sun in these games. And uh, God's very mad now. Yeah, so uh, God is, this game's story is great, but it goes from like zero to 11 pretty immediately. <laughs> yeah. So so now that, uh, now that God is angry, he's a uh, God who lives in the sun is going to download the earth. Cool, you wouldn't download a car, would you? I mean, be. I could be convinced. Well, this connect. might convince you. <laughs> Connection opened. It's transmitting from our side. 945 points, 56 zeta bytes per second. That's a lot of data. That dwarfs even the incident five years ago. It does. How many is a zeta byte? Have you ever looked it up? I've never Googled it. <laughs> you wouldn't download a car. All right, I got to Google this. Hold on. Well, uh, let me tell you, it's an entire city. We just we just found that out. And at least one car. And at least one car. <laughs> Pretty much the FF8 monster scene in reverse. <laughs> one zettabyte is equal to one trillion gigabytes. Woo! It's itself! <laughs> Who would need a zettabyte hard drive? God, apparently. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> 945.56 of them. Meanwhile, Angel's had a, a bit of a party in her office. I was like, can we get that like as a disc read speed? Like, I feel like something needs that, right? Think of how high quality streams you could, how uh, how high quality your streams would be. I mean, at that point, you're just like sending, like, I don't even know what you're sending. Just like the actual thing instead of any, any video. Send me a burger. All right, so now we play as the real main character now that Surf is gone. So we are Gale. He has the best walk animation in this game. Yeah. The, and, I, the, and I refuse to believe otherwise. You cannot show me any better walk animation. Gail's walk animation is pretty fantastic. But now that we have lost a party member, Argyll is going to come back in our party because that's our only, you know, our only viable option. Fiery hee-ho. Yeah, so uh, we're going to buy another Impel Stone because they were pretty good. And now we're going to rearrange our party. You, you, you. We are going to give you Terunda because the Tintarafu train never stops. 
Um, now you get Aguila. Aguila. So if you haven't noticed, when Argilla was out of the party, she really didn't gain any experience, but she gained AP. So if, <laughs> she's a little behind, but we'll catch her up. Sure Does this team have catch-up EXP, where if characters are behind levels, they get more XP? Or yes. Yeah. Yeah. This game's uh, this game does have some e some EXP scaling. Uh, and then rings, you get to the magic ring. We're going to equip the speedy ring to Cielo. Argilla, because she is uh, at a fairly low level, we're going to give her the change ring, which we put some vitality on earlier. Uh, now we're going to go to the shop and we're going to buy some things and sell some things. That's not what we're going to be buying or selling, actually. Uh, we're going to be selling this Amaryllis we got as a drop. We're going to be selling these roses. We're going to be selling these great chakras we got from uh, Baden. And we're going to be selling two medical tools. Uh, we're going to be grabbing a wild bomb. That'll be important for the next boss. We are going to be not buying loot boxes. I said we would not be doing that. Don't buy the loot box. We're going to be buying three medical kits and five revival beads. Actually, I'm going to buy another medical kit because we're like completely out of them. We're going to buy 11 dismutes and we're going to buy, I already bought dis stones earlier on accident. So we're going to buy a couple of those. All right, all right, all right. And that is our shop done. And now we are going to save the game uh, because although I should never die at the beginning of Power Plant before uh, before I get to a save point, the, this, uh, this game has a little bit of a reputation in the SMT community as being cursed for marathon runs. Uh, the, uh, the very first SMT community marathon had a run of both DDS1 and then a DDS2 run. And uh, unfortunately, the runner, of, uh, the runner of this game had a very unfortunate death at the very beginning of Power Plant and had to go back, refight a bat, and then watch those cutscenes again. And uh, ever since then, it's uh, been, a, been a bit of a meme that this, uh, this game is mildly cursed for, uh, for speedruns. I was supposed to run this game at the, uh, the last Questing for Glory Marathon, but <laughs> as we were setting up for the run, my internet, like, exploded for an entire week. <laughs> like, as we were doing setup. So, uh, glad to be finally breaking that curse today. Uh, one more uh, fun Zetabyte fact, by the way. Uh, how fast did they say that the uh, transfer rate was? Like 900 Zetabyte? 945.56. Yeah, 945.56, yeah. So apparently the total data created or replicated in 2020 was 64.2 Zetabytes. So that was what? Uh, nine. Yeah, something like 15 times 2020's total data in one second. God, it's a powerful thing. He can download pretty fast. All right, so we're going to be putting this last thing on the magic ring to power it up a little bit more. Gale is a pretty good mage. He's not quite as good a mage as Surf, does, Surf was, but he'll do. All right, so now we are in the power plant. So basically our idea to, uh, to prevent the downloading of the earth is like, oh, well, you know, obviously, you know, downloads, you need, you need electricity to download stuff, right? So... Uh, if we unplug the earth, then that, you know, means we'll stop the download. And the best way to unplug the earth is to just blow up the only remaining power plant. So, so that's what we're, we're going to do now is we're, we're trying to, to uh, shut off the power plant to unplug the earth to stop the download. Like I said, this game's plot goes from about zero to 100 in, a, in approximately five seconds. Here, we're gonna grab Bolt Lord on Argilla. She's not really going to be using any electric attacks, but we do want someone who can put up uh, a lot of electric shields for a uh, for the final boss specifically and the penultimate boss. A lot of the monsters you'll see Frito buy is just a is just on the way that he has to get. So that, that's it's pretty cool routing to see that. Uh, also, Roland here is going to be anime. Yeah, so thankfully we, oh, we acquired didn't see it there, but. we uh, we acquired a very useful key item at some point in this game. I'm not sure when, but uh, allows us to open up these doors by uh, having the <laughs> character just like decide to just punch the computer, and that makes it work. Nice follow up. That's actually a little unfortunate because now the speed ring nerf is going to apply. Okay, that's fine. But but it's pretty cool to see all the routing that's been done throughout this game, just to minimize 
going into the mantra grid because we just kind of buy what we need and then if there's something in the way we just grab it real quick and jump to the next uh mantra pretty, yeah it's pretty nifty so uh so ricky's Atma mark is the lightning bolt ricky bobby yeah oh famous race car driver yeah awesome so uh, his Atma mark is the lightning bolt, so that obviously means he can just punch computers and send his willpower into them to open up doors. Makes sense. And uh, so yeah, that's how we're that's how we're going to be opening the doors in this area. The entire like trick with the uh, the power plant is there's all of these doors that are closed. Like essentially, the way to the end of the power plant is just a straight line from where we start, but we have to do all of these detours to open up the main doors to actually get to uh, those areas. They asked for it. Okay, you asked for it. There we go. Hey, at least I you got a level out of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Karma Society, like, they give AP, which is, or HP, or they give EXP. EXP. They give something. I don't, I don't know. What the... <laughs> I, I was going to let you get there. Once again, the bass on these headphones is great, especially yeah. with the, uh, the power plant theme, which is already... Uh, Pretty jamming. I like how a big rock is a demon. That was kind of rude, Molly Lot. Why'd you do that? That was mean. I thought we were friends. You're like one of my final demons in the 4A speedrun. Except this there you it. have a really high voice. <laughs> to, to this demon, 4A doesn't exist yet. <laughs> Yo. Oh, now I get what you're saying about this song in the bass. Yeah, right? All right, this is another chest with stuff and things in it. I love things and stuff. And stuff and things? Yeah. All right, so we have two ways we can go here. We're going to go to the left first because the uh, the we're, we have uh, to deal with two mini bosses at the end of each of these paths, and the one on the left is much easier, so we're going to... Go fight the mini boss on the left first so that we have some levels and skills by the time we have to come back around for the one on the right. Yep. Hi, Raiju. Hi, Puppers. Electric Puppers. So if someone got a Raiju as a pet, I assume they would name it like Sparky, right? Yeah. Or Zoomy, because it just jumps around. Or Bolt. I'll take that. <laughs> So in this chest over here, oh, hey. Three bolts. Puppers. So funny thing about combos is they're throwing out, uh, as they're trying to throw out ailments. Uh, there's a bit of an, what I'm assuming is an oversight in this game, because there's zero reason why things should be the way that they are. And Argilla almost died. Cool. Uh, the... Uh, Combos in this game, for whatever reason, just completely disregard uh, ailments and uh, debuffs on the party. So, for example, earlier on, uh, there was an enemy that used Dark Mirage on on the party, which is a gives you two stages of an agility accuracy debuff. Uh, if I were to use a combo skill like Tentarafu, in that case, I was in human form, so I just had to run from the fight. Uh, if I were to actually use a debuff, there, like, see, we're, we're getting secunded by the Chatter Skulls. Thank you for thank you for demonstrating for me, my guy. Uh, Tantara was <laughs> actually not affected by that at all. We still have full accuracy. Uh, same, like, if something were to hit me with a magic attack debuff, it would just com get completely ignored. It's a very weird thing, and again, I'm convinced it's an oversight because there's no way that why, like, there's no reason why that should be like that. Similarly with stun, which is an ailment we've seen a little bit, where stun, what it's supposed to do is uh, make Argilla lose herself. No, it uh, makes it so that your accuracy, your agility and accuracy just get completely tanked. Uh, you pretty much can't hit anything unless it's somehow incapacitated, and you also, in addition to that, have lower defense. Uh, which, you know, all in all, not a great combination. Not but uh, if you initiate a combo with stun up, that accuracy penalty just doesn't apply at all. I like how all the other snake demons in this game are ready to fight, and that one's just like, I'm chilling. Gorgon's vibing. Yeah, Gorgon just vibes. Like, to me, that looks like a very uncomfortable vibe position, but good for her. I mean, have you seen Watch Me? 
fair. I mean, you've heard of demons T-posing, but, you know, when then you see demons that are, like, T-posing with one of their legs and their upper body while, like, standing on tippy-toes with the other leg. Yeah. Oh. Best demon in the game. Hands down. Can we get some moves in chat, please? Yeah. All right. Next mantra on Cielo. So Bikuni here doesn't really have anything on it that we particularly want. However, it blocks uh, Priestess, uh, which has Quick Escape on it, which boosts your run rate by I, what I believe is a flat 45%. It's a very nice boost to your run rate, and we uh, would like to have that. Yeah, like I was explaining a little bit ago, Bakuni was in the way to get to Priestess, and now we have Priestess, and now we just gotta learn it, and we all have Quick Escape. Yeah, so we, uh, did I actually punch the door? The... Uh, I think you punched the door. Okay, I did, thank you. I was like, wait. So uh, we punched that terminal, so now that we can actually go and access the boss, which means we, uh, we have to backtrack a little bit, which is the perfect time for, uh, for Ghoul to share some words with us. Well, first of all, you'll, ha you'll be happy to know that the chat has been sharing some moves. Good. So. Yes. I'm proud of you, chat. <laughs> uh, do want to remind you all, we are here running for a great cause in NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And uh, one more time, this is the last chance to get in for all of the Kingdom Hearts theme prizes from this block. So that includes the Perler, the Kingdom Hearts 2 game, and, of course, the Kingdom Hearts All-in-One Collection, signed by Richard Epcar, the voice actor for Ansem. Is a $5 minimum donation to get in on the first two and a $20 minimum donation on the last one. And of course, if you keep donating regularly over the course of the marathon and hit that magic $100 mark, you'll be entered in for a chance to win a Steam Deck. Uh, do either of y'all have a Steam Deck by chance? I do not. Not yet. I've ah. heard they're very cool. I, I just keep seeing them in the practice room and they look freaking awesome. I might have to get myself one at some point. I but... feel like my Final Fantasy XIV addiction would spiral out of control with a Steam Deck, so I'm holding <laughs> off. <laughs> Maybe that's just a good life decision at that point, but... Yeah, you know, I, I'd like to go outside with my dogs every once in a while and not just stay in my room going like this, but to each their own. You can go out with your dogs while playing Final Fantasy XIV. I would run into the... I would run into something and get seriously hurt. Sounds like a skill issue. It does, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> the glasses do not help. They're just for aesthetic. All right, so Gale got Demon Learned. Now he's going to go over here, grab Spirit, uh, mostly. So Gale is going to be our designated buff user throughout uh, pretty much the rest of the run. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be be working our way towards that. A lot of the characters now are starting to come into their roles uh, that we're building for them. And it's, yeah, Gale's going to be buff. Argillo's going to be our fire mage. Cielo is just kind of too good to do his own thing. Yeah, so Cielo is like a, is our utility uh, character slash secondary electric mage. Oh, that's fun. Really? We are almost to the boss. So who who in here has ever been walled by a video game by a raise of hands? We're gonna get revenge for you today. How does that sound? I'm down for this. Three of those. <laughs> wow. All right. Vit, that's fine. Luck, that's terrible. Uh, let's use. Let's just use because I. See, so I've been walled on stage here before, so uh, seeing some revenge, I'm okay with that. Well, I am completely out of MP restoring items. That's very cool. And I need to pick up the. Whoops, the mute shot, which is a nice upgrade. All right. So this, the left wall mini boss is a literal wall with guns. They're magic guns. Though. Magic guns, yes. This boss is entirely magic based. So uh, pretty much Frito's gonna set up a series of attacks and then we're just pretty much gonna repeat those over and over and over again until the boss dies. It's Thundershot and... Thundershot. Another Thundershot. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to revert Cielo here. Thundershot uh, is a random targeting skill. It's, uh, it's multiple targets multiple times. 
is very strong. So we're just gonna be uh, we're gonna be spamming out Thundershot here, dealing some pretty big damage, getting rid of this wall uh, as quickly as we can. And uh, hey, we could use the Anga here and keep uh, Cielo in demon form, but it does it does not do enough damage to counteract a turn of revert into Thundershot. And plus, Cielo has the change ring, so we didn't really spend a turn reverting him, so why not? We're, we're already almost to the end of this fight. Yeah, so a singular Zianga would do more damage in one hit than like each individual hit of Thundershot, but just with how much, uh, with how many times Thundershot hits the DPS is just significantly higher. And you're also getting half press turns out of it, so you can do it four times instead of hey. Oh, he didn't say A that time. Lame. I feel like I've been robbed. The PS2 just shot a rocket. Boom. Good job, Argilla. So interesting quirk about this game. There's multiple instances where you're fighting like several special enemies at the same time, like when their death causes like a mini cutscene like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and whenever that happens, the game actually doesn't let you kill two of those enemies at the same time. Uh, and so there, what happened was I did enough damage to kill both of them, but because the game didn't want to play out both cutscenes, it actually just left one of them at one HP. Mm -hmm. So I was able to just smack it with Argilla and it went down. Now we get to go run all the way back and go to the right side of this dungeon. Yes, so we have made our way. We're uh, a little under halfway through this uh, through this bit here because the, the right side is significantly... Uh, more time consuming, a lot more backtracking, and uh, has a harder boss at the end of it, but uh, hopefully nothing we can't handle. We're not going to be using human form or uh, human form CLO for that fight, though. Yeah. But like Frito said, we went to the left because it is a little bit shorter and the boss is easier. Yeah, so here the, uh, the quirk with this side is that this door is here that opens the way. However, it's actually stuck on a loop where uh, you open up the, the closed door and it closes the, the door that actually leads to the boss. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to continue on this way, and this path will actually eventually loop back around to that door, uh, and so that we can hit the hit the switch again and close it, and then we get to loop back around to the other side and go fight the boss. Nice fight. Yeah, Spectre gives a uh, pretty good AP. Yeah. Actually. The base be the base is making me vibe over here. <laughs> All right, saving here. Chest on the other side has a pink gem in it, but it's guarded by Alilot. Alilot knows magic and is uh, only weak to gun. We don't exactly have the uh, the ammo to deal with that, so uh, Alilot gets to just kind of vibe in her treasure chest. Yep. All right, we, we are, are running, oh, go ahead, we are like out of MP items completely. Thankfully, there is a heal terminal here, and we're gonna pass by this heal terminal like three or four times. So. Right. The, uh, the lack of MP items is uh, offset a little bit by that, which is helpful. But we get we get good money. Uh, so stopping and healing every uh, like that when you pass by it is not a big deal. Ooh, the cut rocks. Yep. Those are very valuable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I said, we're going to get revenge if you've ever been walled in the game. Not once, but twice, but three times. Yeah, we're good. So... Hope. Except when they kill us, that means we do get literally walled. Yeah, then I'll kind of just bite my tongue for the rest of the fight, or the the second try. <laughs> but there won't be a second try, right, Frito? Nope. We will first try everything for the rest of the game ever. There will be no more deaths. You, hopefully. Th there wasn't a death. You first tried everything. Nobody saw it. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> no, no one saw that. It's if if anybody, if if nobody saw it, it didn't happen. True. I'm just okay. trying to motivate you here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are moving forward. So the uh, the specters are actually immune to uh, to panic. Oh, really? All right, well we're running. Uh, I was gonna say they're immune to panic, but we can just Zanma them, and it works really well. Uh, and then Gale. And then the Zanma guy got muted. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I couldn't just like restore uh, Gale and then pass, or restore Gale and then Mazanmo with Gale because Speedy Ring. Uh, I probably wouldn't have done enough damage to kill the Turdak there. Uh, Turdak was the skeleton dude. So hey, in that case, it was better to just. You got a, you got a couple MP healing items out of that though with those MP datas. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, those are mm. for later. Chad, is your time to shine again? I never mind. It's not their time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you let me do that? I uh, I didn't realize there was the Axini there. I thought it was like Turdak. It was in the middle of the encounter. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, he does do a cool animation. Oh, I actually did one-shot it. Thanks to the crit. All right, well, there you go. I took out Alley Lot. You did the thing. Yeah. All right, so here this door opens up, uh, opens up the way to the beginning of this area here. And more encounters. Hey, this was so this was the encounter that I thought the at the encounter was. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything until. No. Yeah. Uh, uh, All right, uh, chat. Uh, New skills. And still curse. So you can close out a menu just by pressing square, and that's something I didn't actually realize until fairly recently. <laughs> uh, so it's one thing I'm, I'm trying to get used to a little bit more rather than just like mashing circle to get out of I'll, menus. I will say this though, if you're new to the SMT games and you're, and you're used to playing other RPGs that use start or triangle or circle, have fun remembering that square is the menu button. Yep. Yeah, triangle opens a map. <laughs> oh. That's not nice. How the turntables. Okay, uh, so you can combo with people who are panicked, like, no problem. And then panic doesn't persist outside of battle, so I don't have to heal that. I still have to heal, but... All right, so this is also... Thankfully, we don't have to go back through the whole area. This is a shortcut that takes us back to roughly where the heal terminal was. Uh no, I'm not. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna try that. I'm not going to tempt fate with that one. If Gale was the lead, you, you could have got a miss out of that. <laughs> uh, I don't count Berserk misses towards the total because it's because oh. it's Berserk mode and Berserk. Yeah, that's true. Silly. Berserk mode lowers your accuracy to almost nothing. <laughs> oh, here we go. All the moves, chat. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Frida. Oh. You know that scene in the uh, the new Willy Wonka movie where he talks about how you can't make whipped cream unless you like unless like the cows are whipped with whips. Sure. Uh, that, that's just what Cielo was doing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ignore that that was a bull and not a cow, but that, that's what he was doing. All right. Now Gail is gonna go for Bikuni. And Argilla is technically done with her mantras for a little bit. I'm going to give her Fire Lord now anyway, just so I don't forget later in case uh, we see an appearance by a certain ya boy later. Mm -hmm. uh, similar thing with uh, Ronaldo. And then, yeah, saving here because this next boss, while mostly fine if I get a specific pattern, can kill me. And we will mosey our way on over to that boss fight. So this, since this is the attack wall, it takes a little bit more of a setup in order to get going for this fight. Like Frito said, we will not be uh, sparing Thundershot, but we will be using Taunt. Or at least setting it. I almost forgot to uh, unequip the Speedy Ring. Actually, let's go with the Protect Ring for the extra magic. Mm-hmm. And then I immediately get into an encounter that I can't really kill now, except I can still Tentara Foon and should get rid of them because they're weak to it. Yeah. 
Uh, so now it's very important, now that I have Taunt and uh, Medea set, that I actually pay attention to when I'm doing Tentarafu. Uh, because, like I mentioned, uh, effects that heal and effects that involve buffs end up at the bottom, like the very bottom of your combo menu. Uh, and having two, uh, two debuffs set does... Uh... Hold up. Having two debuffs set gives you the Dekunda combo, which removes all debuffs on your party. And uh, having two people with Medea, which is Cielo and Argilla in this case, uh, gives you the Angelic Grace combo, where it is a party heal while also giving a defensive buff. And it's something that will be fairly important here in a little bit that uh, we're just hoping to... Uh, well, hopefully it doesn't show up. Hopefully we don't need to use it. But it's there if we, uh, if we need it. So yeah, this, uh, this one, this wall uses purely physical attacks. Uh, well, f purely gun attacks. Yeah. And well, uh, you know, we could do a lot of damage with Thundershot because of the uh, because of the gun skills and the fact that humans are weak to gun. We really don't want to be uh, putting ourselves in that position to just die. Uh, okay, so this is what we really don't want to see. This is a, a barrage hits multiple targets random times. And uh, the way the scripting for this fight works, uh, for these enemies works, is if one of them uses barrage, then so will the other one. Uh, and so if they just start spamming barrage and start getting crits, then you just die and you feel sad. Because... Miss, miss. Yeah, that was, a, that was a very good miss. So our strategy for dealing damage throughout this bit now is to uh, do Zionga and Zanma and then use the make use of the change ring that our Jill has equipped to just... Uh, continuously revert and transform over and over again so that we can just pump out as much damage as we possibly can and just take out these walls very quickly. Here we go, there's number one down. And so this is what we would be doing in the other fight if we weren't using uh, if we weren't using the gun combo is this exact same approach. Mm -hmm. We just didn't have taunt at that point, so it would go a little bit slower. And you see here 233 per you know with a taunt up versus like the 130 per hit and we were hitting each one at least twice, so so thanks to math, we know that this that did more damage. <laughs> All right, and one more round of this, and we should be good. There we go. All right, literal wall number two. We have uh, we are success. <laughs> Another point of strength. Everyone, everyone's getting swole out here. Yeah. The party do be lifting. Dost thou even hoist, brethren? All right. So this is the second of the two walls we have to open, or the two uh, switches we have to flip. And so now we have access to the final, uh, the final section of the dungeon, which thankfully is just a. Uh, Thankfully, the final section of this dungeon is two more fights. We have wall number three, which combines aspects of the previous two while also being even tankier. Uh, and then we have the like the boss boss of the dungeon. So we have a we have a little bit of a backtrack before we get there. So uh, how about we uh, we hear from Ghoul a little bit while we uh, make our way over there? Uh, yeah. So again, uh, we are still coming up. All the incentives for this run have been met, which is awesome. Y'all have been so generous with that. But we do still have some incentives for Final Fantasy IX. Again, naming all the characters. And uh, I believe we are still working on the Viva Quina wedding. That is at $205 out of 750 Let me do a quick refresh. That seems a little low. Uh, 301 out of $750. So it'd be really cool. Let's get that done before the end of this run. Let's make the uh, Final Fantasy IX runner's jobs a lot easier as far as that goes. And uh, yeah, would love to see that done. And uh, keep chilling. We got this fun overnight shift going. Yeah. All right, just taking this heal. There is a heal right before the boss, but just might as well grab this one as well. You know, no reason not to. And. You never know what's going to happen between random encounters between point A and point B. Exactly. So the uh, L2 and R2 are not actually mapped at all. Well, they're, they are <laughs> they are mapped mostly. They let they let you page through uh, through screens uh, when you're in the menu. Uh, but when you're walking around, they don't do anything. So I have a habit of just like rhythmically tapping L2 and R2. If you happen to like pick up any clicking from. Uh, from me, that's that's what I'm doing. And then he goes, 
Why does my L2 and R2 buttons work very well? Yeah. Why are the L2 and R2 buttons on my controller weird? I don't understand. <laughs> What do we got? We got more specters. It's funny, literally, as you mentioned, the thing with your controller is I took my headset off to take a drink, and I'm like, oh, okay, we're just clicking to the music, apparently. Oh. That's, that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and then you acknowledge it. I'm like, oh, okay, you're just telling everybody about this. We're not hiding this. Got it. Yeah, I mean, like, you never know. I don't know if the mic is picking it up at all or not. But oh, I heard case, it. <laughs> just in case people are like, what is going on? That, that's, that's what's going on. A little bit of extra percussion for the music. Exactly. Just making the, the bass boost effect even even bassier, you know. Yeah, just as the composer intended. Exactly. I mean, how can you like compose beats like this and not expect people to uh, to be jamming to them? I mean, come on. All I right. mean, I'd be vibing over here. All right, so we have those set. All right, it's time for literal wall number three. So like Frito said, this wall is magic attack and a new form of attack on the top that you will get to see in this fight. Yeah, so the, the core segment is protected throughout most of the fight. Uh, I need to do the Tarunda thing first. Uh, so yeah, all the segments on the wall deal more damage and are uh, tankier, have higher defense and higher HP. So we are once we deal with this Fizz wall, mostly, we're going to, to be putting up a full taunt. I've only been doing one taunt before. Like I mentioned, buffs and debuffs in this game do have some level of diminishing returns on them. Uh, so I've only been doing like one taunt just to, for the sake of saving time since I'm getting most of the benefit from them without uh, doing my second taunt. But you notice I am debuffing to full with uh, my uh, Turindas to minimize damage. So it just kind of depends on the situation you're in if you're going all on that. Okay, that's kind of uh, unpolite. All right, so we're going to be doing Zanma. We're going to be using Angelic Grace here. Uh, again, the heal is really good, but also the defensive buff is nice to reduce the damage we take, uh, especially if the rail cannon on the side decides to start. I didn't even get to finish my sentence. <laughs> start using Barrage. And it's going to use Barrage again because it always does the same action on its uh, turn. And Argilla is... Oh my goodness, Argilla is not dead. Let's go. All right, so here I'm actually going to throw this last ration on Argilla because the divine or angelic grace isn't going to heal her all the way, but uh, make sure to get her up to full. So now we have two stacks of Rakukaj. We're going to take significantly less damage from everything. I really wish that it would stop using that. Uh, so Sharpshoot is an ability that always hits and always crits. Uh, I think it always hits at least, but it always crits is the, the big thing. All right, Gale is now reverted. That's great. All right. Oh, really now? That's cool. That's a cool trick you just did there, my friend. I appreciate that. Not really, though. All right, we're going to heal and uh, just hope that one that gun shoots uh, Cielo and wakes him up. <laughs> okay, you can stop doing that, please. And thank you. Okay, this might wake him up. It did wake him up. Cool. All right. Hey, something that doesn't hit weakness. That's great. Um, this is a problem. All right, this is fantastic. I am very glad I have extra... I picked up extra healing items. All right, we're going to use this medical tool now and we're going to heal to full. Argilla now no longer has her defensive buffs, which is a little unfortunate. My goodness, can you please be cooperative? This is the opposite of cooperative and now Argilla's dead again. That's awesome, man. Please don't revert. Okay. We're going to do some damage now. I'm going to use one of those revival gems I got as a drop here because I kind of need to. All right, so thankfully this next turn is going. Uh, this next turn the boss takes is going to be completely wasted. Uh, whenever this uh, door opens up, it uses a. Uh, uh, area, area, really strong area of effect fire ability, and so we put up fire repel here on Argilla, and so it will just bounce all of that damage back on itself and uh, end its turn immediately, which is uh, really useful. It's uh, need a bit of a break during this fight. So yeah, flare cannon gets repelled, does a lot of damage, and now we're actually good to like start damaging this boss. Uh, that is a thing that we can do, believe it or not. We can damage this. Uh, despite what the last couple of turns would indicate. That is something we are capable of doing. 
And again, we're just transforming and reverting over and over with Argilla, uh, just to make sure that we, uh, just to get as many turns as we possibly can in. Uh, so now the gate core is gonna, gonna go back into its closed state. I'm actually going to take this time to catch my notes up with where I am. Really, uh, catch my notes up with where I am because I'm not really using my notes uh, much for this run, but it's nice to have them just in case I forget what I'm doing. All right, so here I need to Panacea Cielo to get him out of that, and then we're going to do another Medea. That should heal on enough HP. Yeah. Yeah, back to full. Argilla's magic stat's really good, and uh, healing spells do scale off of your magic, so with Argilla having pretty good magic, that's helpful. Please stop doing that. Uh, I think what I'm going to do next turn, because I'm getting pretty sick of the magic cannon not being cooperative is I'm actually going to throw a magic mirror here to get myself a little bit of a uh, little bit of a break here. Yeah, because the fizz gun's almost dead, so... Yeah, fizz gun's almost dead. Uh, depending on which one of these guns goes first. Okay, barrage is not what you want to see. Uh, so anything it does that's... Well... Anything it does that's not reverse revert pulse would end its turn and it would uh, get clinked off of that, but then it proceeded to revert pulse. So since yellow is in human form anyway, we're going to do a uh, thunder shot here. It's uh, a little unfortunate. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Uh, a little unfortunate that there are three targets and there is that uh, middle target that does uh, have pretty high defense, so we can't fully take advantage of the uh, of the, the damage that uh, that bullet does, but... Anyway, we were able to get rid of the rail cannon. That's uh, that was the hard part of the fight done. Uh, okay, you can stop doing that. That'd be really cool. Good luck with that. All right, I'm going to taunt a second time to get our full set of buffs, and nothing here does physical damage, so none of that matters. And now we're going to start Xeon getting the laser cannon. So as you can see, we're doing you know pretty significantly more damage, about 50 more than we were previously. Please stop doing revert. Oh, okay, thank you, Gale. <laughs> Gale being the hero that we need, and uh, I don't know if he deserved him or not, but we definitely needed that, so thank yeah. you. Yeah. Now we can go back, get back on our uh, regularly scheduled program. Right, that's ready for Azanaga. Could you just not? <laughs> wow. Please, game. <laughs> Remember when I said that this game is really funny? I meant like, you know, headline. Uh -huh, funny. I meant like headline comedian levels of funny. I don't know. I think Triple George plus uh, now the revert beam. It's pretty headline funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, this game is, you know, peak. Peak comedy, uh, just in case I kill this. Uh, once the, the two main cannons are dead, the, the middle cannon stays out permanently and engage, okay, yeah, and engages what it calls genocide mode, which means it basically is just gonna spam fire uh, flare cannon every single turn. Uh, and so basically now we're just gonna chill here, pass every single turn, and uh, we're just gonna kinda let Argilla deal with this <laughs> by just using fire repel every turn. And uh, This is one of those s &P bosses that I like to call the let, let, let it do it itself boss. Yeah, so there we go. Down. Yeah. Good job, Frito. Yeah, easy fight. Nothing nothing bad happened in that fight. Went perfectly as intended. Sure. <laughs> no, that was that was a really good uh improv and take it on your feet. Which which in SMT you have to do a lot. Yeah, so the uh one of the really fun thing like things I think is legitimately really fun about SMT as a series, uh like with their speedruns, uh is that a lot of these games are are done in a way uh or work in a way that you can figure out like pretty consistent scripts for every for pretty much every single fight in the game. Uh but the games are also really funny in the fact that all of those scripts will fail at least once. Mm -hmm. So, well, you know, everything is mapped out in a way that's fairly consistent and you're like, in a way that you know what you're supposed to be doing for every single boss fight. There is a lot of, uh, a lot of room for like having to be able to adapt to things, which I personally find to be very, uh, very enjoyable. Well, the, the fact that you can adapt to be very enjoyable, the adaptivity uh, mileage may vary on that, but uh, 
Okay, so we swap our rings there. I didn't happen to get it. No, I didn't. Okay, so we do that. I did all of my setting already. Did my rings. We're moving our party around. We have the boss of the dungeon coming up. Uh, so I mentioned there were three bosses in this game. Uh, Abaddon being the first of them, that uh, as fights, they are kind of like the three somewhat scariest fights in the game. Uh, and also happen to be, uh, this fight especially, is one of those fights that it's either like the easiest fight in the game, like super easy boss, you barely take any damage, he goes down pretty immediately, or become, or a fight that's just unwinnable. Uh, hopefully we get the former, but based on how this run is going, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the latter. Right. All right, so this is Rajanaga. So we open this door here and we they were greeted with an army of very angry snakes. And so we're going to be doing two Maragions. Uh, so these snakes have physical skills. They also like throwing out mutes, which is really annoying. Uh, and more importantly, they like using electricity. This entire fight is very electricity based. And so we're able to put up, we put up void, uh, or sorry, elect repel every single turn. So that if they do decide to crash into our shields with electricity, we're able to end their turns pretty immediately. Makajamon is something we really don't want to see. That tries to mute your entire party. Oh, so here's an SMT fun fact for y'all. Uh, so the prefix for magic in this game is like Maka, Maka Kaja, buff your magic, Makanda, lower your magic. Uh, so you have Maka Jam is the ability that mutes in that it jams your Maka. And it took me a long time to before I had any sort of inclination that that's what that was. But yeah, jams your Maka. Not very delicious jam, but uh, it is jam, I guess. It's sugary. Alright, so here we're going to be doing this. We're going to put up Electro Repel again, and as soon as we kill this last snake here, the boss is going to spawn in. Alright, so we killed a, a bunch of snakes, and now we get an even bigger snake! Woo! He's very fabulous. Yeah, so here we're going to Agula. We're going to throw up a taunt. So we are going to revert with Cielo, who now has the change ring. We are going to throw out another Agula, which I'm just going to auto up just to make it go a little bit quicker. We're going to throw the Impel Stone. Time for more turns. You thought my turn was over. It has only just begun. This isn't even my final turn. All right, we're going to be throwing out that, and now we're going to Firebomb, which we have three of them. You're scripted to have two, so having three of them is pretty nice. Uh, nope, don't do that. We're going to use a Takaja Rock, because this boss uses a lot of Fizz skills that hurt really hard. So, that hurt really hard, that hit really hard. No, I like the first one better. They hurt really hard. Yeah, and... Uh, so get rid of their physical, their uh, damage buffs, and now we're going to throw this last firebomb here. Ah, nice whiff, Cielo. Very cool. All right, Vanity is not great. That's not a terrible result, though. No, all you got was poison. It could have went a lot worse. Yeah, so Vanity inflicts random ailments on your entire party, uh, and some of those ailments can be very nasty, uh, mostly charm and panic. All right, so here what we're going to do is we're going to remove the poison with Gale. We need to keep up uh, Lech Repel. I will, uh, oh, go ahead, sorry. I'm using Terra here on these Nagas to try to get rid of them because he has a very powerful combo move he can do uh, when he has both of his adds around, and he will resummon his adds throughout the fight, but I'm really just trying to get rid of one or both of his adds immediately. Uh, and then he'll spend his turn summoning. Voidfire, you ideally don't want to see them using Voidfire all the time, but at least we were able to uh, prevent us from getting hit. His big signature move is an ability called Conviction, which is a very strong AoE Fizz attack that will insta-kill anyone who is muted. You'll note that the uh, snakes are spamming lots of abilities that inflict mute, so, you know, that's uh, a thing that they do. I will say, I think it's pretty funny how when they cast Voidfire, <laughs> the boss is the only one that gets the cool animation, and they just kind of sit there. Oh yeah, his animation's great. I, I <laughs> Raja Naga's uh, yeah. blocking animation is fantastic. So here, whenever Void Fire is up, we're just going to be Zenmoing with Gale. We're going to be using Terra with Argilla just to, to generate a couple of turns for us. Uh, just you know, get the most out of our turn economy. I could be passing with her, but eh. All right, so this is Conviction. Uh, it can crit. Hopefully, it doesn't. All right. Would you stop it? All right, he's not nearly as close to death as I would like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Agilao again here. Uh, and then I'm going to have Gale throw a medical kit. 
Hopefully he uses the Zeodine here. Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. All right. We should win this turn. Yep. All right. Yep. Cool. GG. All things considered, that was a really good fight. I'm not even all things considered, that was just a really good fight. Yeah. That, that one conviction was kind of scary, but thankfully, uh, no crits, because that can crit, and uh, if it does, you just die. Hey, we got quick escape. Woo! And another Sapphire, because we don't have enough of those. All right, so here throughout this entire dungeon, Angel has been chasing us, because we're trying to stop the download, and Angel just kind of wants everything to burn. So she's been trying, that's why the, the Karma soldiers have been trying to stop our progress here. So she's pretty annoyed at this point that we have uh, been able to evade, uh, been able to evade her stopping us. And so now she's going to unfrost that giant cactus monster, uh, which has the name Meganata. Uh, it also has a second name uh, in, it's a, you know, a beast from Hinduism. Well, a character from Hinduism. Uh, it has another name, which is Indrajit, which uh, literally means the uh, the slayer of Indra. Well, we happen to have a party member whose demon form <laughs> is, is Indra. And uh, he left our party. And uh, now he is dead. So uh, rest in peace, uh, our, our good, dear, departed friend, Roland. Ryan, yeah, thank you. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, rest in peace, Ryan. Also, Argilla uh, left as well to go and help out. Uh, to go and help out. And uh, so now we don't have Argilla anymore. However, the... Uh, throughout the events of the cutscenes, uh, Sarah has kind of... She was a bit despondent during the events of Power Plant due to watching Surf die again, or watching Surf die. And so she uh, basically, Argilla, you know, basically gave her a bit of a pep talk, like, look, you know, we're not going to give up. Nothing, like, things aren't hopeless. There's always hope. You can always do something. The power of friendship. Yeah, and so uh, that caused Sarah to, to actually awaken to her demon power, which is the exact same power that Surf has. So she inherited all of Surf's uh, mantras and stats, uh, plus a couple of levels to accommodate for the levels we got. Yeah. Uh, so we are incapable of choosing Sarah's level ups. She actually has a fixed level up path. Uh, she just happens, her starting point is whatever Surf stats were, and then she continues on her fixed level path. All right, so I need to, I did the medical tools, great chakra. I did all of that selling. So we now just sell these Sakuras. All right, so now we have unlocked the ability to buy the tier two stat boosting rings, the boost by six instead of three. So now we get the high magic ring and the high power ring. Uh, we're going to purchase more medical kits because uh, we can never have enough of those. And yep. then we are going to buy We've unlocked light balls and core shields. We'll need both of those. Light balls light up dark areas temporarily, core shields, uh, null uh, damage tiles. And we're going to be encountering both of those in the upcoming dungeon. So now I have to do a menu here. So party is already good. And I need to equip void panic on here, void ice here. And then I need to unequip taunt. I want to uh, optimize my, my menus. And equip Tarakaja and Tarunda, and then I set Quick Escape on Cielo over three, and then Sarah gets a Void Ice on one, and then I need to change my rings. Uh, Gale gets the Speedy Ring. Cielo can stay on the Change Ring for now, and Sarah gets the Magic Ring because it still gives more stats than the High Magic Ring does. Because we haven't pumped any gems into it. Yeah. Uh, and now we're going to grab new mantras because Raja Naga gives quite a bit of AP, so everyone mastered the mantra they were working on. Uh, so after getting Priestess, Cielo is going to go for Bolt Emperor, which has Mazianga on it. Uh, Sarah is going to go here to Ice Demon to work on getting some AoE Ice skills, and Gale is going to go for Karma, which has Sukukaja on it, which is our, our accuracy and evasion buff. Uh, because, like I said, he's going to be our primary buffer, so we're going for Sukukaja for that, and then we're going to go for the next mantra after that, which has Makakaja on it, mm -hmm. which is our magic attack buff, which, as you can imagine, is a pretty important buff when you're going all in on magic. All right, so we already talked to Pyrojack to get the Impel Stone, and uh, so now we're going back to the egg. Uh, Sarah was like, hey, take me back to the egg. I can talk to God and convince him to stop downloading everything. Uh, however, the uh, the downloading process, along with the whole situation with uh, 
surf and heat has uh, caused the data in the egg to become highly corrupted. And so things are gonna look a little different when we get inside. So uh, when Frito goes in here, you're gonna noti notice him using these light balls that we just bought, we bought five of them. Pretty much he could walk through this area that's gonna be dark on his own. He has the map in the corner. He can see where he's going. It's got really good visibility. But those light balls stop ambushes from happening. If you don't use them, every encounter will be an ambush. So we, we really don't want that to happen. Yeah, so now we can see a little bit more and we won't be ambushed by every single encounter. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so since we did blow up the power plant, which, uh, surprise, by the way, uh, that didn't do anything other than just turn off the lights in a couple areas. Uh, now we're like, okay, well, you know, blowing up the power plant didn't work, so I guess let's just try asking, uh, asking God nicely to stop trying to download the earth. And so now we're, we're gonna try to do that. So now we're, we're progressing back into, into the egg, and we're gonna be, uh, kind of retreading our steps a little bit, but, uh, a little bit of a twist thrown in. Well, since we're retreading, we have time for a quick donation, I assume. Yeah, absolutely. We have a $19.20 donation from RP Preya saying, Got a round up, apparently. 1918 was indeed the end of World War I. Also, the film Tarzan of the Apes came out that year. Good luck on the run, Freedom. Love the detailed commentary between you and Zero. Please put this donation to the host's choice. My choice is, of course, we've got to see that wedding acted out. So... Thank you for your donation. We really appreciate that. Thank you for the donation and uh, confirming that that was the year World War One ended. Hey, we got our fact though. Now yeah. we just need sandwiches. True. All right. So here, there's some magic mirrors we can pick up. Uh, again, magic mirror just makes you repel all magic the next turn. Uh, non almighty magic specifically. Never mind. We got our sandwich back. It was a veggie patty. Remember? All oh, right. Yeah. True. <laughs> I will just tell you a fact of life. We can always use more sandwiches. True. Uh, you know, what's your favorite sandwich, school? Oh, I don't... Oh. I think I can go for a good roast beef and provolone right now. Solid. I, I am the classic 12-year-old at heart, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all day. I mean, you can never go wrong with peanut butter and jelly. That's, that's, that's No. But the, like, that's a different niche, though. That's a different type of sandwich. But if, it, if we're going that way, I have to agree. Roast beef and provolone. I'm a good fan, big fan of like, you know, turkey and cheese. I mean, turkey and cheese is always good too. Yeah. Yeah, so the, uh, so the egg's a little, a little messed up. Uh, the scientists are just kind of, just kind of vibing in the walls as one does. Oh no, my light bulb wore off, no. But in classic SMT fashion, we have a teleporter base. But yep. Frito pretty much knows where he's going, so no big deal. Yeah, I have the maze mostly memorized, and uh, for the parts that I don't, I have very detailed instructions right next to me. I mean, I'm doing <laughs> all of this from memory with no help whatsoever. Frito, go left. <laughs> <laughs> he does not have the answer to the test written on his arm. So on a scale of uh, 1 to 4A, about where does this uh, teleport maze lie? Um... As far as difficulty, I think this is probably like a eh, like a four or five. It's not too. It's really hard. So it's hard to memorize. This dungeon is annoying to memorize. But as far as like the actual difficulty, it's totally fine. So would you say it's like Sabrina's gym? Uh, I don't know. I haven't played that much Pokemon, so oh, I tried. Oh, that's. It's it's it, so. Here's the deal. Pokemon is like SMT, but easier. Yeah. <laughs> and more huggable. Yeah, slightly cuter. Yeah. Hey, Cielo is very huggable, thank you. Pre-plane, yes. I mean, what, you don't like airplanes? Oh, wait. No, I really don't like airplanes, but thank you. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> I picked up the HP data in this room, right? I don't remember. <laughs> okay, I, like, ran, you know that, like, moment where you're like, wait, did I just forget something really important? We had uh, this talk earlier. It's like when you walk in the kitchen and spin around and go, why did I come here? Okay, I can confirm that I did pick up the HP data. Cool. All right, we're good. We're good at what we do. I'll take the blame for this one. I was uh, distracting a little bit there. <laughs> no worries. Let's see. Now we climb back up to floor 10 because that portal actually took us down to, to the... Uh, wrong part of B11. Hi, Persky. Hi, Persky. Perfect example of the karma 
uh, soldiers transform. We saw that enemy two dungeons ago due to transform. Oh, so didn't we see them like an hour, an hour and a half ago? Yep. Yeah, so this is the dungeon they're supposed to be from. <laughs> you know, we're level 30 now and we're still a little under leveled, but this is where we're supposed to be seeing them and we just, you know, randomly ran into them when we were like level 20 or something. All right, so these are the areas that have damage. Uh, that have damage walls. Also, uh, fun fact, this game gets really confused when you try to press the circle button to recenter the camera when you're not moving at an angle that's exactly 90 degrees. <laughs> so you saw the camera like snapping in weird directions there. That was from me uh, pressing the circle button to try to recenter it and it did not uh, go very well. All right, so leave it. This way, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I need to double check something. Uh, did west and north? Yep. Oh, perfect. All right, we will go back and grab new mantras then. Yeah, so as you can see, Sarah just kind of gets whatever stats she feels like. So some of that's good, you know. Extra bits, nice. And extra strength is kind of not great, but. So here we're going to continue Sarah along the ice line of, uh, of spells, and Gale is going to go for Twilight to get Makakaja. Ice leader. So uh, we want the we want to go down the ice line of spells. That's very good. But more importantly, we want Mind Charge. Uh, we mentioned this earlier, but Mind Charge is an ability that enhances the next magic ability you use by 2.5 times. Uh, and we really want that, so we're gonna have Sarah go work on getting Mind Charge because it's very, very valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, also, importantly, Mind Charge plus a buff gives you the ability, gives you the combo Charge, which uh, buffs all of your stats by one stage. And Mind Charge plus a debuff gives you the uh, ability to debilitate, which lowers all of uh, the enemy's stats by one stage. So uh, that's very important. It will greatly improve the efficiency that we're able to buff and debuff things. And now it's time for my least favorite forced encounter in the game. Uh, and that's why. So these Hanuman are able to just stall out this fight indefinitely. Hey, there's one for the counter. Let's go. Charity. Woo, charity. That is four in three and a half hours. Would you say that's about normal? That's pretty low, actually. Oh, well, we're not doing bad. All right, so these guys just can stall out this fight indefinitely. Uh, so I'm just going to keep throwing up... Uh, just gonna keep throwing up Tarundas here because they do some pretty strong physical attacks. Uh, or they can just use Teradyne, that also works. Uh, so, just, uh, you know, stop them, their physical attacks from hurting a lot. Uh, also, Gale is functionally useless for this fight now because of how long uh, we had to wait and how many of his turns went by. The, uh, the, uh, Speedy Ring has taken its toll on his ability to hurt anything, so we're just kind of going to pass with him and have Cielo and Sarah deal with everything now. There we go. We have time for another donation real quick. Yeah, absolutely. We're just going to keep going through this dungeon. We have a $10 donation from Calador and saying grilled cheese sandwich for life. That's one I didn't consider. Grilled cheese is a solid pick. With a nice tomato soup. Mm -hmm. Are you a dunker, though, or are you a uh, got to have them separate? That's the real question. Oh, I'm a dunker, hands down. Got to dunk. There we go. Now I want a grilled cheese sandwich. I would say all this, all this uh, sandwich talk is making me nice and hungry, so. Hey, can't be a social eating stream if we're, you know, not at least having the social part of the eating. Exactly. We have a $100 donation from Doe Wolf saying, gonna be honest, I would rather ha hug Jack Frost than a muck. Fair point. Yeah. Fair play. There's, there are some cute SMT demons, aren't there? We got yeah. Jack Frost is huggable. He might try to kill you, but he, he'll hug you. <laughs> yeah. I feel like Jack Frost would like try to kill you, but like intentionally be kind of bad and fail. So like it's like the, the like the cute like try to kill you, not like the mean try to kill you. Yeah, that's a good point. No, I I think I, I think he would try to kill you, but you would hear he ho being yelled from like a mile away. <laughs> So he wouldn't be able to sneak up on you. Wasn't DDS won the game with the rapping uh, yes, Jack yeah. Frost? Yep. 
with Jack Cross and Pyro Jack, I believe. Yeah, you had the uh, the Hee Hop brothers yeah. who were, uh, who wrapped Hee Ho at you. All right, so we're we're again we're stunned, which is supposed to lower our accuracy, but uh, combos just don't care. Do need to remove those though, uh, just for sake of the fact that you take more damage when you're stunned, which is not good. Uh, so the way you're actually kind of supposed to tell where you're going through this dungeon other than just memorizing it is that uh, you can sort of tell which teleporters are the right one because Veritra's like noises are a little bit louder when you're going through the correct portal. Uh, so yeah, the, the noises, by the way, and the, this whole dungeon are being caused by a, basically a combination of uh, heat, surf, and the corrupted data from the uh, from the egg. So uh, that is uh, transformed heat into Veritra, who we'll be uh, we'll be running into here in a little bit. We're getting closer to the end of the dungeon. Uh, I don't have a core shield up. That would be a good idea. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so nice way, again, navigational tip through this area. Uh, whenever you're uh, teleported into one of those damage tile rooms, Sarah will actually start facing the correct direction to go. All right, so now we just go down here, down to the 13, which, if you remember, was the floor we... Uh, it was the final floor of the dungeon, pretty much. So we are almost done. Nice berserk mode, so we can just run away. We're, we're good on AP for for this dungeon. We just needed to get uh, we just needed to get Karma and Ice Demon learned as like the minimum for this dungeon, and so we're pretty good on AP here. I'm gonna save because starting at B13, you can run into Hecaton Curies as a normal enemy, and uh, he has a very very high kill percentage uh, against me of like just going first and spamming. Uh, Key Blast, which is a really powerful uh, AoE Fizz move. Uh, oops, I'm going the wrong way. So as a result of that, I'm going to save there because, uh, yeah, Hecaton Curie is pretty pretty nasty. Uh, wants revenge for the, the two times now that we've, we've killed him this run. All right, so here we're going to have our last, four, uh, our last forced fight of the dungeon against some legions, but we go first, so it's no big deal at all. Just uh, when in doubt, Tentara Fu it out. And here we are at the boss. So I'm going to do some setup now. Uh, so this upcoming fight with Veritra is the like the third of those fights that I mentioned that uh, can be very inconsistent when it wants to be. It also has the distinction of being, in my opinion, the hardest boss in the entire like the hardest required boss in the entire game. Uh, so hopefully he cooperates with us. Uh, my practice run the other night, he was not particularly cooperative, but you know, hopefully he uh, hopefully he woke up on the uh, the right side of the bed this morning. I need to power data U, HP data U, and data U just for a little bit of extra resources, and then we can save absolutely because yeah. All right. Yeah, 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 I'll hurry up, Veritra. <laughs> All right, so through this door, we have the fight with Veritra. Uh, the way this fight works is the, the boss starts out with... Uh, the fight starts out with two tentacles. They will block all attacks for the main head, which is our, uh, our primary target here. Here we need to throw these impact bombs, which are the items I forgot and had to go back for in Egg 1. Uh, we throw those to chip away at the, uh, the tentacles, and then we throw up a Void Ice with Gale uh, in order to protect ourselves from an ability he has called Gelid Torrent, which is his strongest uh, move he uses in this phase. All right, no misses there. Uh, Silent Howl is the worst thing he can possibly do uh, because it can inflict mute, and he muted two people, which is very fun. Nice dodge on Cielo. We did put the Trick Ring on Cielo, so nice dodge, Cielo. Let's go. Two dodges in a row. Yeah, let's there go. There you go. All right, so here I need to take a turn to remove these mutes. It's kind of hard to do setup when you, you know you can't cast magic with two of your party members. 
So we also have Void Eyes set here on uh, Sarah, just so that we, if in case, you know, Gale gets muted, we can deal with something about it. Uh, he'll also cast debuffs on us occasionally. Tarunda does not matter at all. We love to see Tarunda. He's basically just wasting his turn. Um, <clears throat> we have the uh, the combo for Takunda to remove any debuffs on us if we... Uh, if we need to remove debuffs, specifically if he does Rekunda to lower our defense, or if he does Makanda to lower our magic attack, we uh, we have to heal that off before we can continue the fight. So we got rid of the point, or we got rid of the mute there. Uh, so now we just kind of need to wait for a turn where we have the uh, the window of opportunity to push his phase. Mm -hmm. uh, we've taken a lot of damage here, so this turn isn't going to be that. Uh, okay, let's see. He shouldn't do enough damage to kill anyone. All right. Uh, so on this turn specifically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a medical kit with Cielo. Uh, I'm going to use Sukukaja with Gale to hopefully get some dodges in, and then when we get into the next phase of the fight, we really don't want to miss him at all. So we're going to throw up that Sukukaja to... Uh, okay, there's Gela Torrent, so we're going to block this and eat two of his turns. Uh, we want the Sukukajas so that we are able to, uh, again, dodge and not miss. And hopefully that'll also just make this part go faster. All right, so we're in a good situation now. So now I feel comfortable actually pushing. Uh, I only have one Royal Bum. Uh, so a damage range here can break both of his hands. If not, I'll have to wait a little bit to break the hands. Okay, we didn't, so I will wait a turn. Uh, what I will do in that case is I'm going to pass, I'm going to put up another Sukukaja and avoid ice, and so now this next turn I will absolutely be able to break the arms. Gelator, perfect. Yeah. Yes, please do that. Nice turn with the Gelator into attacks. It'll still let you do uh, damage next turn. Okay, so we've broken both of his arms, and uh, he is weak to electricity. So now we're good to just start using that. We're going to put up a void, or no, sorry. We're going to throw the impel stone. That's what I meant to say. All the turns. And now, so basically, Sarah and Cielo's job for the rest of the fight is to just use Zianga. That is all they're going to be doing for the rest of the fight, and that is exactly what we need them to be doing the rest of the fight, is we're just going to want to pump out as much damage as we possibly can. Uh, here, we're going to have He'll throw another medical kit, and we should be in the loop now. Uh, the way this fight works... Okay, we're not quite there yet. Uh, Makanda's a little unfortunate, but we're fine, because I now actually do have a turn that I can't... Okay, that's annoying. Uh, I do have a turn now, because he, we aren't quite in the loop I was talking about yet. I have a turn that I can uh, use Taunt, which will counteract the uh, the debuff uh, from the Makanda, so we can start doing normal damage again, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, and now we put up the Void Panic. So now, uh, once you deal enough damage to him, he starts using uh, an ability called Inferno Roar every single turn. Uh, what Inferno Roar does is, despite the name, it's actually Almighty Damage. It is a uh, Almighty. If it, it's a Almighty Magic Attack, does uh, lots of damage, about 150 to everyone or a little more. Uh, and then he follows that up with Sonic Waves. So that's why we're putting up Null Panic every single round in order to block that. Uh, and so Gale's job every single turn is he's going to Void Panic and he's going to throw a Medical Kit to heal the party. And once again, Sarah and Cielo are just going to keep using Zianga. We are on a somewhat strict... I really don't like the uh, damage Cielo is doing, but it should still be fine. Uh, we are on a pretty strict uh, time schedule here. We need to keep hitting these damage ranges to get him to keep Inferno Roaring us to get him in a bit of a loop. If we uh, are unable to continue doing this, then eventually he will regenerate his arms, and that is really annoying to deal with, because we basically have to start that part of the fight over, and we don't exactly have the resources to deal with the arms in an efficient manner anymore. Okay, his HP is red, which is good. We throw another med kit. But it is not over yet. I think we have him this turn. If not, then definitely next turn. Yeah. 
<clears throat> okay, next turn for sure. Yeah, okay. And there we go, that's where he down. Good job. I won't lie, I was really concerned. I've never actually dealt with that fight if he with double Makanda before, so I was actually very concerned I wasn't <laughs> gonna have the damage. Yeah, I just I just gave you the the serious time on that one. Uh, now can we go back and do it again? That music was a bop. Oh yeah, that song's so good. Don't worry, we'll get to hear it at least we'll get to hear it one more time before the end of the run. All right, so here we get like the big plot exposition as to what exactly happened five years prior. Uh, essentially, uh, most of the party were scientists working in the egg uh, with the Cyber Shaman project, which was essentially uh, a project that was designed to uh, to again commune with uh, to commune with God and kind of bring prosperity hum to humanity. Uh, however, the lead scientist on that uh, on that project was Human Surf, whose name it was Surf Sheffield. And uh, unfortunately, he was kind of a very horrible person who uh, mostly just wanted the uh, the ability to to commune in order to uh, basically himself become a god and rule over humanity with an iron fist. Uh, and in order to do that, he treated he basically was about as horrible as someone like that would be treated everyone terribly, put Sarah through horrible, horrible experiments to get her to. Uh, to try to get her to be the cyber shaman that he wanted her to be, along with uh, also putting the multiple children through that same uh, through that same process, uh, while also being very nice to Sarah. This caused Human Heat, who was a doctor, to become increasingly angry at the situation, which is why the the perceptions of uh, the digital forms that we control as characters why Surf that we play as is like a genuinely like very nice guy, very caring and considerate of uh, of his friends and those around him well. Like Digital Heat is kind of a hot-headed jerk all the time. Uh, and all of these events basically lead to, uh, lead to a standoff that results in Heat getting shot by Human Argilla who had been manipulated by Human Surf. Sarah seeing this along with a, mon with a very evil monologue by Human Surf that essentially led to her uh, in a state of despair, sending a bunch of uh, uh, a bunch of very negative data up to God, which is what caused the Black Sun to appear and uh, essentially kickstart the uh, the destruction of the world. Very nice fight, by the way. Yeah, good uh, good Varna fight. So we get a couple level ups here. Just a few. <laughs> and this is an unskippable cutscene. So uh, that seemed normal. Yeah, so there we uh, basically were then confronted by a manifestation of Human Surf and a primitive manifestation of Data Surf, along with a manifestation of Human Heat, where Human Heat essentially tells Digital Surf, like, look, this is who you were. You know, this is why we're here. However, you know, you've become a different person. You've become someone separate from who you were and so now it's time for you to to bury the past and to free my digital self from the anger that he feels at the situation uh, and so we do that that's what that fight was was us basically just burying the past uh, and uh, now we uh, free ourselves from heat as well and we uh, get some more cutscenes where, uh, yeah, we get Surf back in the party. Woo! And the event cannot be skipped. It is right. you! Time. It is you! Happy see hello. Oh, there you go. Uh, all right, well. <clears throat> Who else could it be? Probably going to be Surf a little overestimate, but that's fine. Easy. We have about, like, an hour and wow. a half left of the run, so. Yeah. All right, you heard it. It's an hour and a half left to get in for those prizes. The Kingdom Hearts block again. Last chance. $5 minimum for the Perler and the Kingdom Hearts 2 copy. $20 minimum for the all-in-one signed by Richard Epcar. Oh, yeah. Heat can teleport now. <laughs> Heat has become Mega Man. That seemed useful. 
Yeah, so he uh, he teleports himself up there to the observation room. He basically he wants to have one final fight with us in the room where hit where you know everything went pe went terribly wrong. Uh, and so he teleported up there, but you know heat being being heat doesn't really think about like, huh? Maybe I should get surf up there too. No, we have to walk. There are those who find identity in battle. For them, fighting may lead to salvation. This is such a Shoji Meguro track. Right. Just to hear the horns, they're very much a Meguro horn section. And no music. Yeah, and then now there's no music at all as we uh, as we make our way over to the elevator to, uh, as Heat said, finish things where it all began. Wait, did I miss a, an option in that? Why was that one not skippable? Uh, there was an option there when he was like, "Do you see where I stand?" We chose I do. Uh, I just I had turbo mashing, like I had auto mash on, so gotcha. it went through quickly. Makes sense. Another cool thing about SMT speedruns, you can use turbo, yeah. so you don't have to mash and worry about that. All right, so uh, when I mentioned Heat didn't teleport us up, uh, we did kind of cut ourselves out of Heat's stomach, so he kind of I almost fell has been bleeding out in the meantime. He almost took a nap. Sorry. We'll have to settle this later. You killed me. Understand? Yep. You're the one. And now he's dead. All right, that cutscene I just skipped is really amazing. Unfortunately, the amazing part's like a ways into the cutscene. Otherwise, I would showcase it. But uh, definitely would recommend uh, looking up that cutscene because it's uh, it's part of the reason why Cielo is just the best. Mm -hmm. So if he's dead, I guess that means we have to take uh, was it Richard into the final dungeon? Oh or? no, Richard's dead too. Oh, Richard's dead too. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're just doing some tea party members then, right? Yeah, I mean, we have Sarah back. We have Surf and Sarah back. <laughs> All right. We are now going to be doing Gil, Surf and Cielo. Uh, set. Gale is going to get Vile Blade. Uh, there's a boss fight upcoming here. But uh, every SMT game, especially ones where magic is just ridiculous, always has that one, uh, that one cheeky fight that's like, Ah, you've been going all in on magic, I see. Well, here, let me just uh, have a, a fight that just completely is immune to magic entirely. Mm -hmm. And so we're uh, we're approaching that boss fight pretty soon here. Uh, and so we're going to be pivoting uh, Gale into Fizz a little bit here, as well as Cielo. Uh, Sarah's not really going to be our part in our party much for the rest of the game, so we're just kind of gonna remove her uh, remove her ring. Everything there is good. I should save. All right, so basically during all that commotion, uh, the uh, the harp, which is the, the device that they use uh, for the egg is broken now. However, Sarah remembered that there is actually a secondary uh, harp device, but in order to get there, we have to find an airplane. So now we're gonna go to the airport in order to find said airplane. I don't happen to have any. Oh, I got another Sakura drop, nice. All right, so we're gonna buy 11 more med kits. The more the merrier. And I bought an impel stone already, I believe. All right, we're gonna grab this HP data. I'm pretty sure I did this already. Yeah, okay. You can only have one impel stone at a time because uh, it's already pretty broken as is. If you could have multiples of them, that would just be uh, infinite pretty, turns. It'd be pretty obscene. All right, so here we get to the uh, we get to the airport finally, and uh, Fred has been following us around by the way, like this whole time. And uh, this is where we tell him to uh, to stop. Basically, the framing device of this game is Fred is actually talking to a group of children, kind of narrating narrating this game to them. Uh, and this is where that kind of falls apart a little bit because this is where we tell Fred to like not follow us anymore, but we're still playing out this whole thing. So, so I guess he just kind of assumed this is what happened. I don't know. But uh, this is Power Plant. This is the second to last dungeon in the game. 
and it's a uh, it's a pretty fun one. I actually really enjoy this dungeon. This and uh, this and the final dungeon are my two favorite dungeons in the in the game. So this game ends very strongly. Uh, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to pick up an extra item. There is a pink crystal here in this chest. Reminder: pink crystal that restores your uh, or boosts your karma ring by with three an extra three magic points. Pretty good. Oh, nice grip. <laughs> nice ping sapphire, too. Yeah, I can sit there on our inventory and look pretty. Yeah. All right, so here, basically, the only... Uh, we're kind of fighting, like, the last uh, group of uh, Jenna Angel's forces. They've uh, taken, you know, a pretty heavy beating from the fight at power plant and these are kind of their their last uh their last stand to uh to try and stop us all right there's fire demon done on surf we picked that up so this game is kind this is a weird thing with uh surf specifically so in this game uh and in dds1 in 99 of cases whenever a character leaves the party for like an extended period of time so like more than one dungeon uh this is bad uh, whenever a character leaves the party for an extended period of time, uh, they will come back to the party having uh, mastered whatever mantra they had equipped at the time. Uh, okay. Um... Oh, nice. I'm dead. Uh-huh. Okay. Good talk. Calm death. Okay. They're just playing with their food now. Yep. Uh, wake up. Oh, all right. <laughs> no, no! Ah. So, unfortunately, Cielo has quick escape, but Cielo's taking a dirt nap. Yay! Yeah, we, we did it! I was so sure you were so sure you were about to get SMT'd there. I, yeah, no, I was. By all accounts, I should have died there, but uh, you know, sometimes you're good at the game, and other times you just get lucky, and uh, that was definitely a case of me getting lucky. Poke. <laughs> Using a level one fire skill in this dungeon is just just goes to show you how versatile every mantra is. Yes. Okay, encounters. Thank you for being encounters that are being encountered by me as I encounter them. Yeah, what you said. All that to say, encounter rate being a little ridiculous at the moment. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the reason I'm using Augie there specifically on on Nyx, uh, Nyx actually repels both ice and uh, and elect, so I have to use Augie there. For, uh, on surf. All right, we're gonna grab this mantra here. Surf is going to continue along the fire line. There's a boss later on in this dungeon that we need to use uh, fire skills for. And as cool as uh, as cool as Augie is, it doesn't quite cut it. So we're gonna be grabbing Augie Lao because that's uh, you know just enough of an improvement to be very worth it. Come on. All right, so upcoming here now, uh, pretty soon, is the Kali fight. Uh, Kali is the boss I mentioned before. Uh, she repels all magic. And so uh, we're going to be putting the high power ring here on Gale, and we're going to be throwing all these attack boosting uh, gems on him. And I guess we'll just throw a ruby on him as well. Why not? Let's just boost his agility. That sounds cool. And then let's just, you know, let's throw a pink sapphire on. Why not? Oh, baby, let's go. More luck. Uh, and then do I happen to have... I do not. Okay. All right. Time for Kali. So, yeah, this fight, uh, Null uh, repels magic entirely. Uh, so we have to rely on Fizz for it. So let's do our setup here. So we're going to buff our Sukukaja, our agility to max here. Uh, that way we can hopefully get some dodges in and not miss. Uh, we're also going to be buffing our physical attack to max because we want to do damage. Uh, so you can there is kind of annoying, but it doesn't matter at this point. Uh, so she has that add there, Dakini, that's going to be uh, primarily throwing out buffs. 
Actually, I didn't even know she knew uh, New Blood Curse. That's kind of annoying. All right. Uh, I need to heal that off, though, because uh, if Kali detects that anyone in the party is cursed, she will begin. She will immediately start spamming uh, Mamudun, which is a an area of effect uh, insta-kill, party-wide insta-kill thing. That's really scary. Don't want to see that, so... There we go, there's the miss I was hoping for. So this is Tarakaja number two because I had to wait for one. Uh, here I'm going to heal with Cielo again. And then we're gonna get Tarakaja number three up. Okay, that would normally be really frustrating. Okay, I would really appreciate it if you would stop doing that. Okay, no one got cursed though, so that's good. All right, so this turn I am going to... I need to heal. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to pass. I'm going to throw a medical kit. And I'm going to Tarunda. Uh, that won't really matter here in a second. But it will at least stop her from hurting me as much as she has been uh, these past couple of turns. And I'm just going to pass out my turn. Uh, yeah, so the dark out. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Just... Ooh. Can you stop? <laughs> Game is not being nice right now. <laughs> not at all. Okay, well... Well, at least... I'm don't just curse. gonna go for it. So we have the change ring on serve, so you can revert for free here. Uh, and then we're going to pass with Cielo. We're going to taunt again to get their uh, defense bottomed out. And then we're going to throw a Dikaja Rock. Uh, so all of those buffs that Dikini was using don't really matter. Uh, Tarakaja, you don't want to see that one, uh, but it's fine. Okay, that wasn't scary at all. I'm not scared, you're scared. All right, so here <laughs> we're going to use free shots. Uh... And we are going to get rid of this Dakini. Damn. All right. Nice. Now I'm going to throw a medical tool to get everyone healed up. And now I can start basic attacking Kali. Uh, so I did set Vile Blade on Gale, which is an area of effect attack. Uh, however, it's weird in that it scales off of like the damage it deals. Uh, it does more damage the closer to max HP you are. And since you have to use HP to use the ability, nice crit. Let's go. All right. There you so go, Gale. We also equipped a stronger bullet on Surf so he can contribute damage in cases of hitting critical hits like that. All right. And there we go. We're getting the dodges that we would hope to see, you know, when you have uh, Suku Kajas up. All right. And so hopefully we can just get her in a nice little... Uh, go in this nice little loop like this. She will eventually resummon the Dakini and we'll have to take her out. Again, nice crit, let's go. Yeah, so here she resummons the Dakini. Uh, and we can just take her out this turn by doing uh, another free shot. This will do less damage because we don't have taunt up on the Dakini since she just pawned in. Uh, so we can do double free shot here. And then Cielo can use a Zionga just to get a little bit of extra chip damage in. Uh, and then this is where we use Vile Blade on Gale. Because of the area of effect, it will finish off the Dakini and do some extra damage to Kali. Now we're back in the loop of physical attacking the boss. Yeah, and uh, once she gets to red HP, I will throw the Impel Stone that I bought. Uh, it's not like essential that I do that. It's just one of those things that I want. This this fight kind of sucks, and so I want it to be over as soon as possible. Yep. And so now that she's hit red HP, we're gonna chuck the impel stone to make sure we take her out this round, uh, this turn. I didn't mean to throw Medea there. That's hopefully still fine. Uh, and now Surf is just gonna do his uh, change ring thing just to generate as much turns as possible. Uh, Teal also has pretty good. Uh, we aren't probably not going to get the kill because of that accidental uh, Medea, but it's fine. She's pretty close to dead now. There we go. There you go. GG. All right, let's call E down. Oh, nice two levels. Yeah. All right, now we're going to swamp Gale's ring back to the speedy ring. And we're going to continue our way through airport. I've been getting trolled by the weirdest fights. This you run. have. <laughs> All right, so Sarah's gonna again continue onward. This is the mantra here that has uh, that has mind charge on it. So we're just making our way towards that.
And now we're going to take a detour this way. This isn't the way to the end of the dungeon, but there's a very important ring over here that we really want for a couple bosses later. Uh, over here is an item called the Dual Ring. What the Dual Ring does is it allows your characters, uh, the character that has it equipped, to act twice in a row. Which is very, very nice uh, when you're fighting, you know, bosses that have a specific weakness and you have one character that's like really uh, all in on that specific element that you're able to uh, do twice as much damage. Your gem luck has also been impeccable this run. It's all been gems I don't care about. Exactly. Though. <laughs> I was trying to give you the benefit of the doubt on that one, but... All right. Hi, Nick. She was taking a break from her bar, and you just decided to blow her away? Yep. How wooed. All right, another revival gem there. Uh, it's a nice safety item. All right, well, that's cool. <laughs> All right. Poor CL. They know he has quick escape. Yep. They know. They like, I'm sorry, did you want to escape? Why would you want to run? We're having so much fun. All right, tag the bump. As soon as I get out of this fight, okay, you can stop ambushing me now. Debilitate, cool. Nice waste of return. Man, quick escape is so handy. It's so nice. It's like sad we don't really get to use it all that much this run. Like DDS one, you get it pretty. Uh, you get it like an hour into the run, and it's just a lifesaver the whole time. And then this game, it's like you get it like over halfway through the run, and you don't get to use it all that much because of uh, where Cielo tends to be positioned in the party. Right. right now that we have Twilight learned, we can go over here and get Sky Dragon on Gale. Uh, we also want Gale to have Mind Charge as well, along with getting Zandine. So we're gonna get that for him. The large carmen large terminal music is very, very good too. It is. You know what? I'm just gonna give the soundtrack a ten out of ten. I agree. That is a excellent rating to give it. Alright, so upcoming is another of uh, another forced encounter that can be kind of scary uh, as soon as we get past this fight. Uh a common theme you'll see throughout SMT games uh, and their their respective speed runs is that most of the fights that tend to uh, most of the fights that tend to have some level of inconsistency with them are fights where you don't go first, since usually you're able to do some sort of setup or something on on you know on your turn to help uh, you know either just kill the encounter or prevent yourself from dying. Uh, and this fight is uh, is no exception. We're we're about to be faced with an encounter of uh, two enemies called Floros that are uh, very strong. I think it's actually three of them. Yeah, uh, no, two of them. Uh, that are very strong, have very powerful physical attacks, and if they decide to actually make use of those physical attacks, then we're probably dead. Um, okay, we're fine. So they can do even more stuff, like they have Key Blast, which you've seen. <laughs> you've seen so far, Key Blast is a wonderful ability. Uh that they can just kind of use to eradicate your party if they uh, if they so choose to do so. Thankfully, they did not so choose. They also just have a uh, spell gloom, which lowers your magic attack by two stages, which would normally be annoying. But like I said, combos actually ignore debuffs on you. So we would be able to just Tentara food them for full damage anyway, without even like a second thought. All right, up here, we're going to grab even more mantras. All the mantras you could ever want and more. You get a mantra. You get a mantra. Everyone gets a mantra. All right, so Surf God Aguilau, now we're going to move. So we're going to move uh, Cielo here to Bolt Master so he can learn Zeo Dine, again, the tier three alike magic skill. Uh, and then we're going to move Surf over to Bolt Emperor so he can also work his way towards getting Zeo Dine. And then everyone else is working on that. Neat, neat, neat. There's a power of a presence behind the door. Do you, would you like to enter? Yes, please. Yeah, so here we're going to do a Mazanma combo to get rid of this, and then they're going to be reinforced by a giant worm with teeth. 
and several hands. So we're just gonna Dentara through the worm, and it's uh, it's done. Good boss fight. Mini boss fight. Ten out of ten. All right. Ten wiggling hands out of ten. Yeah. You continue through here. So now at this point we uh, can encounter some new enemies for even more AP. We're gonna go over here and we're gonna grab some attack mirrors, which will be important for later. And we're going to run from this encounter. Also, also in this dungeon, we've went from cows just laying on the ground, kind of chilling to cows in the air. Yeah, we have flying cows now. They have evolved. It's pretty morific. I think Pro ZD would be proud of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now we have uh, moved from being a glass cannon to just being a weapon of mass destruction made out of uh, much sturdier stuff. Yeah, so we're now at the point that not only are we really strong, uh, we also have more HP than anyone else does either. The uh, the power of min-maxing. Now we're going to go through it. Yeah, we are quickly approaching the boss of, the, or the second of three bosses in this dungeon. Uh, I would like to still be fighting encounters, but the encounters that I'm getting are not really ones I uh, can deal with particularly well. Uh, Mott is weak to electricity, which I do have on Surf and Cielo. However, the uh, the actual damage that I can deal to them isn't sufficient to get rid of them in one turn. All right, so here is the save point before the next boss, as soon as I get past these encounters. Uh, and I do need to remember Tentara, who is very much not at the bottom of my menu anymore. Good job, Cielo. You did a thing. He went from full MP to full MP. I'm proud of him. All right, so I'm going to do something that looks really weird. Uh, and I just need you all to trust me that it actually is like what I'm intending to do. All right, so here we're going to, right in front of the boss, we're going to change our party to just Surf and Sarah. And then we're going to mess around with my skills. We're going to put Augie on slot seven. We're going to put Fire Repel on slot six. We're going to put Fire Boost on slot five. And we're going to undo Terra and Hama. And then on Sarah, we're just going to undo all of that. And then on Gale, we're going to set Makakaja over Vibeblade. And then we're going to give Surf the dual ring. All right. This next fight is Chernabog. Mm-hmm. So All right. Chernabog has a really cool ability yeah, for so a boss. He, he starts the fight by cloning two of your party members, chosen at random, uh, which includes their, uh, their offensive move set. Uh, and their weaknesses. So you'll notice I uh, made it so I only had fire skills on Surf and Sarah, and I only have Surf and Sarah in my party, both of whom are weak to fire. Uh, so this guarantees that one of them will be either of, you know, that the two clones will be weak to fire, which is also what Chernabog is weak to. Once he makes these clones, though, Chernabog is actually going to uh, uh, use Dark Slumber to kind of hide himself. Oh, we got twin magic. We didn't get the variety show. Uh, yeah, no variety show today. All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to use fire repel. Uh, friendly reminder, we removed all of our offensive magic except for our fire spells. Uh, and then we're going to summon out Gale. So now they can only cast fire magic on us, which will then immediately get repelled. And they themselves are also weak to fire, so we can just blow them up very quickly. <laughs> Uh, and then while we are doing that, we're also going to get up a Makakaja as well in order to uh, do even more magic damage, yes. And then we're gonna put up a Fire Repel. Boop. All right, so do y'all wanna know something fun? Uh, so in this game, uh, buffs and debuffs are supposed to, you know, have 100% accuracy because they're not technically an attack. Uh, however, in this game, uh, so Chernabog has a very specific flag set that everything misses him when he's in that state. Uh, so you can actually miss with a uh, with a debuff. 
and lose turns for it. And this is the only time in the game where that's something that you can actually do. And it's just a very interesting, uh, interesting quirk of this fight. I love when he when Chernobyl power charges his head just kind of bounces in the air. Yep. Right, now so. we're just gonna Augie Lao, and then we're gonna throw an attack here because he does attack with physical. And then we're going to taunt him so that he mm -hmm. bounces more damage on himself and so we can hurt him more. Because it is two attack up, one defense down. Uh, no, two, two of both. Oh, two of both. Okay. Yeah. Boop. <laughs> Boop. All right. So we're going to hit him with some more fire attacks, and then another fire attack from Sarah. And now we don't care about Sarah's exp at all, so we're gonna put Cielo in over Sarah when we end the fight here. And uh, oh, I was <laughs> for a second. I thought I didn't kill him, and I was like, wait, what? No, that's turn bog down. Yep, door ring coming in clutch there. More vital, ooh, even more vital, ooh. <laughs> the game was just super nice to you. <laughs> good, good, all right, Gil, seal surf, and then we put surf on the trick ring. Yep, okay. Oh, and then Surf, we also want to reset Zionga because that is actually a good ability that we want. Yeah. Also, we're, uh, one of the benefits of the way of what we did there, where we unset Hama as well, is that it left our slot one open, which meant that we could put Zionga in slot one in our uh, in our skill list, which is really uh, useful for uh, for later on, since since Zeo since Zeodyne eventually will be one of our primary forms of damage. It's nice to just have it at the very top of our menu. Uh, as opposed to like in the middle of the menu like Zionga was. All right, so down here we have another dark room. Once again, this area is really easy to navigate, but I have to uh, use light balls, otherwise uh, the game will just ambush me every turn or every round, every fight. That's the word I was looking for. All right. Uh, I totally just forgot that guy's name. Uh, he's weak to fire, so we can just Miragi on him. <laughs> Crystal Swordman. Yes. Uh, this fight we want to hit with Mazanma. Oh. Nice full heals. Those are very good. Love to see those. All right, so here we have a fight with a couple of very angry elephants. Uh, once again, another fight that goes first. Which is you really fine. Ayo, let's go. Yeah. Uh, and please don't low roll. Hey. That was a low roll, but thankfully it was enough. So yeah. sometimes Tentara food just low rolls very what the heck game? <laughs> Seven strength. Uh, so sometimes Tentarafu like very heavily low rolls and you actually don't kill either of those uh, Ganeshas. Uh, and then, uh, scary things happen. Uh, thankfully, even though the Tentarafu did low roll the left one, it was still a high enough roll that I didn't, uh, there were zero negative repercussions from the low roll. Moo. Moo. Moo, 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 moo. Oh, right. Cow level. Oh, yeah. I went into the wrong room. I thought that was the room with the, uh, the Manjusaka in it. Oh, it's the the next one. So there is a there. One of the rooms in this dark area has a uh, has a plant in it called the called a manjusaka that sells for quite a bit, and I want that because I want money. Uh, so I was trying to find it, and it was not that room. It's the room after the save point here, which this is the penultimate save point in this dungeon. We are getting very close to the end of this dungeon. It's this room that has the manjusaka in it. There we go. Plants are rare in this world. What's really funny is the, <laughs> that's still going to say that in the next dungeon, and you'll see why that's funny in a little bit. Mm -hmm. well, actually, I guess plants are rare on the sun, too. Yep. <laughs> Very rare. It's still a true statement, regardless of where we are. And berserk mode, and I am going to run away. Cannot retain my will. It's like they're trying to hypnotize you with their swords. Oh, yeah. Two in a row. But you actually need, like, encounters still, I'm pretty sure, right? Uh, I need four. 
encounter. I need like enough encounter. I need Sarah to master Ice Wolf. Yeah. I do actually need to fight stuff. Just not in Berserk mode. Or the game can just not give me encounters. That works too. The epitome of SMT is when you don't want encounters, you get a lot of encounters. When you need encounters, they're nowhere to be found. Yep. All right, we just made those elephants irrelevant there real quick. No, oh, no. I'll give you seven out of 10 for that one. Good enough. Man, the, the restore sound with turbo is just so static. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. All right, one more fight. This is the boss of the dungeon that's behind this door. I just need one more fight real quick. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good encounter. Oh, nope, we need another encounter. I need one more encounter. Math is hard. Well, it would have been. If there was three of them, it would have been fine. Like, this encounter hey. would have done. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. Just an encounter too late. All right. Free, free revival gym, though. Very nice. All right, so now we're going to be getting Dark Leader on Sarah for uh, so she can start working on Mind Charge. Good old Mind Charge. Um... Pretty much makes your next ma uh, magic attack. 2.5 times. 2.5 times more powerful, thank you. Yep. All right, so now we are going to save. It is time for the final boss of the planet Earth, which is really dramatic to say. And it's not even really that dramatic of a boss. Oh no, this boss is really easy. Uh, yeah. All right. I don't do any changing there. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, it's time for Kartikeya, AKA man on a bird. I actually do really like Kartikeya's design. I think it's pretty neat. Uh, all right, so this is, we're going to, pretty standard fight. Uh, he follows a very strict uh, attack order. He does a force attack, then he does an electric attack, uh, and then he does a physical attack, and then he taunts you, and then uses an ability called Vivid Gust. Uh, so basically what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, abuse that fixed pattern by uh, putting up a shield for each of those turns, so. We repelled that, and now we are going to repel his electric attack. Uh, and now we're going to be setting up here. We're going to use Makakaja to buff our attack, or uh, magic attack, excuse me. Now he's going to bounce Mazianga against that shield, and now we are going to hit him again with Agila. I just don't understand how the birds just suspended in air holding a person on them. Yeah, so now he's going to do a basic attack followed by a taunt. Yo! Oh, sorry, he's doing Vivid Gust first, and then he taunts. All right, so he's going to do Vivid Gust. Uh, this buffs his uh, evasion, like, obscenely, so we're probably going to miss here. Yep. Uh, so now we're actually just going to put up a Force Repel here. Uh, and so now he's going to taunt us, and then he is going to use another Force Attack, and he's going to, like, repeat the same loop from before. And uh, Vivid Gust stays up until you hit him, or, you know, he hits himself, and now he doesn't have Vivid Gust anymore. So now that we've done that, we can, uh, we're pretty much set up fully, so we can do that, and then we pass, and then we put up our Elect Shield. And Agilao again. All right, he's going to bounce Jupiter's Fury off of us. All right, now for this turn, now that he's like in his second phase of damage, the attack he's going to use is actually really, really powerful. It's called Myriad Spheres. Mm -hmm. And we really don't want to get hit by that, so we're actually going to make uh, him get hit by that by putting up a uh, attack mirror. Now he's going to Myriad Spheres, and he's going to take a bunch of damage from that. Yep, yep, yep. And so now... Notice all red numbers, so... So he, Easy peasy fight. Yeah, he's getting close to death. So this turn, we're actually going to have Cielo uh, chime in a little bit with some extra damage. Uh, so now he's going to do Vivid Gust Taunt. And so now he's going to die in basically the next three actions. Either we're going to hit through Vivid Gust and kill him. Uh, he is going to hit himself through Vivid Gust uh, with the... Uh... Oh, yeah. We have to hit him through Vivid yeah. Gust. He was going to reflect the Zandine on himself and die, and if not, then we would have Augie allowed him, him the next turn, and he would have died. So, yeah, there we go. That's Kartikea. The last boss of planet Earth. Yep. Now we are the boss of Earth. I mean, what? Very for, briefly. Uh, for, so, yeah, for about to say, for another minute or two. So here, Gale warns you, like, this is the point of no return. Like, after this point, you can't go back. 
there are some uh, secret bosses you could fight here on Earth that unlock after you beat Egg 2 that you could go back and fight if you want to. Uh, so now uh, people are going to start dying, you know, as if they weren't before. Uh, so basically this entire time, Gale, uh, everyone would, would remark that Gale seemed very different from the rest of the party as far as like his memories of his previous life. Uh, in that cutscene we realize is that Gale, uh, cause all the members of the Embryon were pretty much re digital recreations of Sarah's perceptions of people that she knew, except for Gale. Uh, there it's realized, it's revealed that Gale is actually, uh, kind of the reincarnation of Angel's dead, uh, dead fiancé slash lover. Who, uh, who died in a terrorist attack at one point that uh, was kind of the reason why Angel just sort of wishes destruction on everything. So there, Gail, uh, Gail and Angel have a, have a nice little chat that kind of involves them stabbing each other. Uh, and then they, uh, they die. And then we grab the last plane and Cielo is protecting us from some jets and Cielo also dies. And now Sarah and Surf try to download themselves to the sun, and they die. And now everyone is dead, but it's okay because Sarah and Surf did the fusion dance, and it becomes Seraph. And we got uh, oh, we also got uh, right. I forgot we get Pyre Flagathon because we did the data transfer. It's funny. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot about that completely. We did that at the beginning of the game. <laughs> yeah. So now we're Seraph. So now uh, Surf and Sarah's mantra grids have been stacked on top of each other, which is why we went in vastly different directions with them. Uh, also, we now have heat in our party, so congratulations, we have heat. And he still did nothing wrong. <laughs> we don't talk about it. Leave it alone. <laughs> That's a new sprite for heat, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they changed his, uh, his sprite. They also changed surfs as well. All right, so here, Gale is going to get Sky Wizard to get Zandine. Uh, you're working on that. Now, Seraph is going to go back to working on Dark Leader because we do really want Mind Charge. Uh, Heat is not going to work on anything. Argilla is going to go for Fire Emperor to learn Aguidine, and that is everyone. Okay. Now, that choice that we talked about that was pivotal to the run, uh, but right before the Heat fight, uh, is now going to come into existence. We're going to get an ability called Reincarnate. It costs 99 MP, and it is the strongest attack in the game. If we said no to that choice, we would not have that option, and the run would have ended about three and a half hours ago. Uh, magic, right? right? No, high magic. You get high magic, you, oops, you get to magic. Uh, I don't worry about that right now. I actually need to delete that from my notes. Uh, and then we do some settings. So now Seraph gets Bufula on slot six, which is here. Fire boot or ice boost on that, and then reincarnate on slot four, which is the open slot we have. Argilla is going to swap out fire repel for fire drain. We're also going to set fire drain on eat. Uh, so normally in this run, uh, I wouldn't have grabbed those two extra mantras that I grabbed on Roland, and he would just be completely unused the entire game. Absolutely zero value in him being around in our party. Uh, however, because I wanted to get some value out of, you know, y'all very generously donating between the two of them, I wanted to use, you know, use them in some fights. Uh, and so what I did is, most of my money actually, let's do this. Uh, so what I did is I actually got mantras on heat that we would get on Argilla normally for uh, an upcoming boss fight. Uh, so that we can actually use heat for a boss fight and then we'll use him to walk around in, uh, in an area in a little bit. Uh, to get you know all of the value we can out of that uh, out of that incentive. All right. So this is the sun. This is the final dungeon, and uh, it's my personal favorite final dungeon in all of SMT. Same. SMT as a whole is known for being pretty inconsistent with its final dungeons. Uh, some games have pretty good final dungeons. Some games have just absolutely atrociously terrible final dungeons. Looking at 4A. Yeah, I was got to whisper 4A. Uh. This game's Final Dungeon is fantastic. It's my favorite dungeon in the game and like my favorite Final Dungeon in the series. It's just wonderful. Uh, so yeah, we have we have that to look forward to. Also, Pyrojack is here now. Uh, <laughs> rest in peace, Pyrojack. But it's okay because he's selling us uh, Impulse Stones still, so that's good. You wouldn't download a Pyrojack. I mean, if they're selling the Impulse Stones, then maybe. Well, while we're moving through this dungeon, we have time for a quick donation. Yeah, absolutely. We have a $2 donation from Itzy saying, Freedom, with all these Tier 3 skills learned, are you creating a... Dynasty. <laughs> that was good, thank you. That was very good. Uh, where am I, going? I thought it was pretty cute. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Itzy. Appreciate it. Ah, elephants. All right. Uh, we will be taking encounters here, which means we are addressing the elephant in the room. As we uh, progress through here, we still do need fights for our AP. My brain took a second to get there, but I got there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this area, the uh, the mechanic behind this area is that this is actually a pitfall maze. Uh, so we're taking a very specific path through this area so that we don't get dropped at all. And, uh, or we can just, you know, run. But yeah, more on reincarnate. It is an almighty skill. It is mega and it is AOE. So it is pretty overpowered for the, this game. Yeah, so it's it's Angel's signature move, which is uh, you know the final boss from the last game. In fact, that's her. Yeah, that's, that's her, her Atma model from the last game, uh, and that's why we we needed to like very defiantly stand up against QVA instead of being like, well, you know, maybe, uh, because by you know very definitively disagreeing with QVA, then uh, we, I guess, are more in line with Angel, and so we get her her ability. Also, more damage tiles, but we can uh, go over them with core shields, which is what we did. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't even know why we'd get hurt by damage tiles, considering we're flying, but, you know, details. Yeah, or our pitfall maze. The winged dragon of Raw is here. Oh, yeah, the mega ultra chicken. And we're going to reincarnate uh, the winged dragon of Raw. Great beast of the sky, hear my cry. Goodbye. Get in the bucket. That's what I would say to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we get two of the three Egyptian god cards in this dungeon because uh, Slifer the Sky Dragon gets to show up a little bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, unless you consider Gira Makala to be Obelisk the Tormentor, uh, no representation on that front. All right, so here we're going to be equipping Seraph with the Duel Ring. We're going to be swapping our party to Seraph, Heat, and Gale. And we're going to be using an MP data on Seraph to get you know a little more value out of... Uh, Awesome. My boy Hello. Heat. All right. So at this point, we're going to be refighting a bunch of the main bosses from DDS1. Uh, so this is the first boss in the game, Harley, who turns into a uh, bipedal T-Rex zebra with the unicorn horn. And we get the uh, the song Foes Reborn, which is an amazing song. Yeah. But Harley is a ice or a fire elemental zebra so we're going to just pretty much be using uh setting up fire drain every turn and using taunt to do the two and two and buffala yeah so he pretty much only attacks with fire skills unless he does like a basic attack or something so we're completely safe from anything he can do oh that hurt and if he puts up an ice drain then what we do instead is we're going to throw up a uh, we're going to throw up a reincarnate here and then we're going to you know pass and get up our buffs as well best pose in the game We're going to pass, we're going to use a Fire Drain, and then we're going to start uh, using Makakaja to buff our magic attack uh, so that that Reincarnate can do even more damage. How do you like it? Medium? Rare? Tasty. Now we're going to do just auto this turn. And he should be dead next turn. Actually, I might have even been able to kill him that turn if I had reincarnated instead of Bufulud, but eh. You won't devour me! Eat up, eat up! So this is another form of Impel Stone that the bosses have called Psycho Rage. Gives them three, uh, turns their one press turn into a ha two half press turns and adds two more on top of it. But we have Fire Repel up, or Fire Drain, rather. So, no big deal. Mm -hmm. And plus, Seraph is just powered up to the nines. Yeah. And there we go. We cooked the zebra. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> Very cool heat. Thank you. Good job, Heat. All right, so we're also going to be using Heat for this next section here. So we're going to go Surf Cielo Heat. Uh, this next area has a lot of enemies that are 
uh, that like to spam electric abilities, and so we really don't want to have Gale in our party during it because they'll just farm turns. They also spam a lot of like ailments, which is bad for Cielo. Uh, but you can't really cover everything here because we do want Cielo around for quick escape. Oh boy. Uh, so we're at least able to cover one of our bases by throwing heat in here. Uh, this is one section where having Roland is actually slightly more useful since Roland also... Yo, it's Slifer, <laughs> the executive producer! Uh, having Roland here is a little bit better because Roland also resists electricity, so you get double coverage from that in addition to Seraph just taking, like, no damage from, mag uh, from magic. Good job, Heat. Uh, but, you know, he Heat's cool too, I guess. Oh, fun fact. Uh, you know, I mentioned, but we, we saw before with the, the shoot 'em up mini game that they forgot to uh, put in dubbed voice lines for that. Uh, similar thing with Heat. So uh, if we get a before battle line, which you might have heard a couple of, uh, then uh, Heat will actually be speaking in Japanese. Yep. And not only that, but uh, they also forgot because they didn't, you know, know his line was in the game. They also didn't audio balance it properly. So not only is it in Japanese, it's also much louder than like every other voice line in the game. So uh, Heat has rejoined our party to uh, scream in Japanese at, uh, at the enemies. Heho, you have one more chance to show up, and this is it. I mean, he has plenty of chances to show I up. I mean, this dungeon. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, we haven't seen any rare enemies this run, which is pretty interesting. So I'll kind of go into that since we're into the last dungeon. <laughs> yeah, so there's, there's two special kinds of rare encounters in this game. There's... Uh, Jack Frost, uh, our, our boy Heho here, uh, who will actually give you a quiz show. He he has a hundred questions he can ask you, and he'll ask you them like twenty at a time, or unless you miss one. Uh, and if you answer every question you answer, has a predetermined like special item reward. And if you answer all one hundred, you actually unlock him as an optional boss, and he's actually just through that door over there. Uh, and uh, alternatively, you can also run into Omoe Kane, which is uh, a flying brain spaghetti monster demon who uh, works kind of like a slot roulette where uh, he... Oh, yield the boys are back, back in town! town! How lucky do you feel? Let's find out, shall we? All right, this is Omoikane, so Rip he... headphone users, yeah. by the way. <laughs> so he picks a random affinity and is weak to it. Let's see, left Zio? Oh, no. No left Zio. All right, let's try one for one for heat. Let's go left Augie. Oh, unfortunate. So basically, they each one has a different elemental weakness. If you guess it correctly, then uh, they act like metal slimes. They give you tons and tons of EXP, uh, AP, and money. But if Frito guesses that first one right, he ha um, he knows exactly what the other ones are going to be, so he can get uh, three out of five. So that's not bad. Yeah, uh, earlier in the run, we had a much better setup. So if we would have gotten them, we could have gotten potentially five out of five. At this point, we can really only get like three or four of them. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, so that's Omoikane. That was the uh, the other one we were explaining. We were going to explain. But yeah, there you go. That, that's, that's Omoikane. And there are only five possible configurations for them, which is why, like, if I can guess one of them, I can just, like, pull up a little spreadsheet I have and know exactly what the other ones are. But that also has a caveat. You can't also guess by AOE attacks because the game will just stop you and say you're literal cheating and blow up. Yeah, the game will, the game will call you out for cheating and they will uh, and they'll just run away. Oh, they'll just run away that it won't explode? Well, if they explode, then they would have given you what their reward. Game could have been mean and said no. Yeah. Um, that's kind of annoying. That that one dodged, because now this is going to do less damage because of speedy ring. I still might be able to one shot it, though. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, how do you feel about Zionga? I mean, you, you don't not feel about Zionga. Okay, sir, if you could die, that'd be pretty swell. <laughs> this is the downside, like I said, of the speedy ring, is if you don't kill everything in one turn, then suddenly your yeah. best damage dealer is uh, functionally a little, is functionally kind of useless. All right, uh, let's use that. Come on, there we go. I love this room. Yeah, so this is another room where the... Uh... Oh, there you go. Thanks, Eat. Uh, this is another room where uh, the PS3... Uh, PS3 players have a little bit of an advantage in this room because the, uh, the floor, like the golden floor light you see there, it is not supposed to be entirely visible. What it's supposed to do is it's supposed to like light up under you as you're flying through here. 
Uh, but on PS3, they don't handle the, tra the transparency effect very well, so you can just see the entire layout, which pretty much nullifies the maze entirely. Well, I was going to fight these elephants, but then they used Debilitate on me. Also, ow. I feel like Cielo's, like, behind on AP at the moment. Okay, he's almost done. Uh, I need him to have Bolt Master done, like, at this save point that's, like, right here. <laughs> so we get to uh, we get to spin around in circles until he finishes this mantra. I'm going to save first, though, because the enemies here are really scary. Yeah. And uh, I'd hate to end up back at the beginning of this area. Any day now. That's not helpful. <laughs> that is an instant. Oh, nope. Oh, that didn't even do it. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, good. Good, 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 good. Great game. <laughs> 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 so not only did we go berserk mode, we have a uh, an ambush, and we didn't get to go first. Oh so. my money! No! That's oh, that was a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Did you save? I did. It's fine. I'm, my money's fine. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Okay. I trust you. I've tossed my money. I've tossed money here before, and it's always been fine. Hey, Zillow Dodge, let's go. The benefit of having Heat here also is that Heat is a, uh, he is meant to be like a physical attacker slash tank. So he does have very high mag uh, physical resist as well. Uh, he's like a wet piece of paper when it comes to magic of any sort, but he's at least fairly tanky physically, which is nice when, you know, you have Gira McCullough out there trying to murder you with Demon Rage. All right, so we finally got Cielo's mantra mastered. So now we are going to, so he has Zeodyne now, which is pretty cool. Uh, and now we're gonna move him up here to Holy Beast. Uh, Holy Beast is important. More importantly, it is a mantra that's in the way of the next mantra that he wants, which uh, that mantra has the ability First Strike on it. Uh, first Strike inc increases your chances of going first in battle by 20%. Uh, it caps it. Your, your chances to go first in battle caps at 80%. Uh, but uh, at least having First Strike, you know, helps you get closer to that 80% threshold. I'm just vibing over here to this song. Yeah, so we do want a couple more encounters here if we can. Uh, ideally, we get enough AP that Cielo masters uh, Holy Beast either from the next fight or shortly into the next section. And then he's able to master the, the mantra I was talking about, which is called Maiden, uh, after that uh, from the next boss. So we'll have first strike for the uh, fourth section of the sun, mm -hmm. which is the fifth layer, but it's the fourth section because the first layer was the surface. Makes total sense. Yeah. Oh no, Fatal Charm is like the worst thing you can possibly see because of that. The Tarpa is like the second worst thing you can possibly see. <laughs> wow. Whee! Use Mizio 9, please. Mega Dough works too, I guess. Okay. Um, you don't panic. Sure. Okay. That works too, I guess. All right. Well. <laughs> Good thing I was going to use Reincarnate anyway. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words now. <laughs> All that AP. Yeah, so uh, there is EXP and AP funneling in this game. So if people die, then the remaining party, or uh, there's not EXP funneling, there's AP funneling now. So uh, if someone dies, then the rest of the party gets a lot of AP, which is unfortunate because Seraph's not the person I want to be getting AP. Well, not necessarily. Okay, so now uh, that was Heat's contribution. Uh, unfortunately, he will not be in our party anymore, but there you all go. That was, that's Heat. Uh, okay, so now we're going to be swapping around our rings a little bit. Uh, actually, yeah, okay. You're going to get the trick ring. Uh, Gail is going to get the change ring. And then we're going to add magic to the magic ring. And we're going to do some equipping for Cielo. We're going to give him Zeodyne. And then we're going to put the Lek Amp over Tarakaja. 
Uh, elect Amp boosts your uh, Elect damage by 50%, and it stacks with boost. So that's cool. Give the magic data to you, give you that HP data. I really didn't need to give Seraph the HP data, but it's fine. I uh, just love that, 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 that. Okay, now we're good to go for the boss. All right, so boss number two we're refighting, Kamazots, AKA Batman, or Bat. And uh, yeah, he's a man and he's a bat. One of the most annoying DDS1 bosses playing game. Yeah, easily like my least favorite DDS1 boss. Exactly. Uh, thankfully in this game, he's somewhat manageable. I shouldn't have said that as I was attacking him. Uh, but here we're going to buff our, our, our accuracy so that we don't miss him. We're going to use a Tirunda so that he is a, a little weaker. And we're going to do that. And then we're going to buff our magic attack. We have to survive two turns of attacks from him, which should be fine. He uses Spiral Edge. Whee! Another Zeodine. And Makakaja. Now we are going to heal. We've done a, like a very particular amount of damage to him. He actually does have uh, some phases here, uh, and we don't want to see those extra phases. So we did just enough damage to him to get him like kind of at the precipice of phase shifting. And now we're going to taunt him, and now we're going to kill him in one turn so that we never see any of those additional phases. And we're going to facilitate that by doing uh, a Zeodine. We're going to revert with Gale, who has the change ring, and then we're going to use Reincarnate with Seraph. Here's a fun fact for y'all. Reincarnate's casting animation is uh, exactly 10 seconds. Right on. And uh, we're just gonna repeat this and he's gonna go down this turn. So we never have to see any of his other shenanigans that he can do, which is great because his other shenanigans is pretty awful. Yeah. Yeah, the reincarnate animation is amazing. It's very, it's a uh, very visually impressive, yeah. All right, and that's uh, Solar Camazots down. There we go. Did I, did he learn explode? Uh, no, that was Argilla. Oh. Uh, back to Seraph Gale, uh, Seraph Seal Gale, rather. And then you go back to having the speedy ring. Uh, I can do this menu now since I learned the skills. So now you get Zandine, and then you get Force Amp over six. Uh, and then Argilla gets Augidine there, and she gets a uh, Fire Amp there. All right, so thankfully in this section, we can go back to using Tentarafu against things so we don't have to worry about the, uh, you know, the 10 second casting animation in every fight. Uh, so here, I'm gonna finish learning our mantras. So now Gale is going to go for his final mantra, which is learning Dark Leader as well. He does need Mind Charge for later. Uh, Seraph is still working on that. You're okay. So Argilla is going to go for Lightning. Uh, again, like I said, I do want Argilla to learn Elect Drain for, uh, for the final bosses. And so she's going to make her way towards that. So she only has two mantras left. Uh, Seraph has only two mantras left, finishing Dark Leader and then grabbing Zeodyne. Uh, everyone is, and uh, once Cielo gets Holy Beast done, he'll be on his final mantra. So everyone's getting very close to their final mantras. Uh, so ideally after this segment, I never have to take any more random encounters for the rest of the game. So uh, shout outs to these these rooms here where you like enter and exit these rooms via these lotus flowers. Uh, meanwhile, the walls of this area in, to <laughs> me always looked like a uh, like an inward facing blue watermelon. You know, you've just opened my eyes. <laughs> so we're uh, we're in these uh, giant watermelon rooms covered in lotus flowers. I thought it was like the inside of a tree because of the flowers. I think it's supposed to look like that, but yeah, it just always looks like a blue watermelon to me. All right, so on these platforms, we have a couple of forced fights here. First, we have Palace Athena. Mm. But uh, when in doubt, Tentarafu it out. Yep. 
Goodbye. So almost has Holy Beast, which is good because we're about to get to a small terminal. Uh, so the, the secret for each of these platforms is just go left. Uh, when, whenever you're in these rooms and you're given a choice between two platforms, just go left or down. All right, so terminal is over here. I just need one more fight for the Hello to Master Holy Beast. Perfect, perfect. And lo and behold, this time it wasn't Berserk and it wasn't an ambush. Yeah. Uh, do not use Zeodyne on Thor. As you can imagine, using electricity on the God of Thunder tends to not end very well. Right. All right, so now we can grab, uh, we can make sure that Cielo becomes a very lovely maiden. <laughs> Cielo is truly the loveliest maiden. Oh, come on, don't eat my input game. There we go. That's it ate it and then gave one. it back to you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, here, I heard you wanted your input back. All right, so while we're uh, while we're going through through this area, it's just going to be a couple more forced fights and uh, navigating. This is the perfect time if uh, you have anything for us, Ghoul. Yeah, just uh, real quick, we got. But how much longer left in the run would you say? Uh, about uh, 35, 40 minutes. That is 35, 40 more minutes to get in for those prizes again. One last time. Uh, also, if you're curious to see the upcoming prizes, you can go to rbglimitbreak.com/tracker. You can go up to the prizes at the top and then set to the event RPG Break 2023. You can see all the awesome prizes that have been donated, the minimum donation, and when they are going to be available. Yeah, feel free to, to keep going. If you have any uh, anything else you uh, want to share. Alrighty, yeah, we got plenty. Uh, uh, once again, uh, we are RPG Limit Break. We are raising money for NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Uh, NAMI uh, runs a free US-based uh, nationwide peer support service, providing information, resource ref referrals, and support to people living with mental health conditions, their family members and caregivers, mental health providers, and the public. The NAMI Helpline is available Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time by a call, text, and live web chat to reach the NAMI Helpline. You can call 1-800-950-6264 or visit nami.org slash help to access all NAMI helpline resources and contact information. Again, it's a wonderful charity. We've been supporting them ever since uh, the very first limit break, and we are very happy to be continuing to support them for this event. Excellent. Once again, like I said, whenever you're given a choice of two directions to go in this area, go left. Or down. Right way. Or down. We do also have a $5 donation from Totagut that says, Shoutouts to the French Restream. Yes, shoutouts to our French Restream and our Japanese Restream. Mm -hmm. Wonder, do you know who's doing the uh, commentary for either of those? Because usually they end up getting commentators for them, so I wonder. Uh, I don't know. Let's check that out later. It's Sammy. <laughs> Goodbye, Sammy. There you go. Okay. Nice. I, I've missed that Samile like several times in my last couple of runs, so I didn't want to say <laughs> anything until it actually landed. I had faith. Which is always really funny when you know you see like a full like screen nuke effect like that and then just miss. Yeah. Like, what do you mean you missed? You were in the middle of it. But no, he slid slightly to the left. That means it dodged completely. Yeah. What was the uh, gale count at, by the way? We are at four gale misses in almost five hours. So we're not doing too bad. I feel like I saw way more than that in the practice room. I'm, I think this might be my least, no, like, my lowest number of gale misses that I have ever had. No, bye, gale. <laughs> <laughs> That's a type of miss, kind of. <laughs> that was one of those moments where just Gale stood there and was like, huh? <laughs> what? I guess I'll just die now. All right. This is the save before the next boss. Uh, I guess he can't miss if he's not awake to attack. True. All right, 
right, time for Rahu. Rahu, Rahu. Or not. These don't look good. Calling back, I mentioned the uh, hard mode all bosses category of this game. You uh, spend uh, like an hour and a half, two hours grinding <laughs> in uh, Berserk mode in that run. And uh, you get to hear that that specific line a lot. Like mm -hmm. basically once every battle and you're cycling, cycling through battles every couple seconds. So uh, either that or Argilla's, I'm losing myself. You, uh, lots of lovely, lovely lines you get to hear. I have no MP healing items. Again? I, I never got them back. <laughs> I've just been using data to, to get to use the ones that I needed. So All right, so here we can get the dual ring on you and you go back to the trick ring. Will you be paying a visit back to the shop at any point? Uh, yeah, after this fight. Okay, yeah. So for that all bosses, uh, I can't remember, is it EDS1 or DDS2 that is the really infamous difficult super boss? Uh, they both do. They both do? Yeah, DDS1, uh, DDS you fight the Demi Fiend from, uh, from Nocturne, and in this game you fight Satan. Uh, I would say Satan is a much... Uh, Demi Fiend is a more infamous fight because, like, it's Demi Fiend. Uh, I would say Satan is a harder boss, uh, but also, like, actually more interesting. All right, so we're fighting Rahu. Rahu consists of two segments. After uh, one of the set, or after his first turn, he'll actually capture a party member. Uh, we don't want that. We don't want him to capture any of our party members. So our goal here is to uh, blow up one of his segments before he gets the opportunity to uh, divide. Uh, so we're going to do two Aguilaus. Uh, the lower half is weak to fire. The upper half is weak to force, which is why it was important that we had Zandine and Agidine by this point in the game. Uh, we're going to pull up a Reincarnate to do a little more damage. We're going to put up another Agidine. We're going to throw our Impel Stone here to give us even more turns. More turns, you say? Yes, and then we are going to use Makakaja to buff our magic damage. We're going to do another Reincarnate to get some more damage contributed in, and then we'll use our last two turns to finish off the body with our Jilla's Agudines. Like so. And boom. Okay, I guess not. That was rude. Okay, well, it grabbed Gale, so it's going to die in one more hit anyway, so which is kind of unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. think I've seen this in a long time. Hey, there we go. We did it, yeah. And now he'll, re he'll release Gale. All right, so now we can uh, swap Cielo in over Argilla because we don't need Argilla anymore for this fight, and then we can... Uh, Start using Zandines. We'll also be casting Bufula with uh, Seraph because that's a good source of damage. It's a lot more MP and time efficient than uh, using uh, Reincarnate is. I think it's 12 MP versus 99 MP. Yeah. Ah, my body. And he always uses Dikaja this turn to counteract the uh, effects of the uh, the effects of the trick ring. So now we can just Zandine. Bufula. Pass. And Zandine should kill unless we're adding another tally to the chart. No, we are not. All right, good job, Gail. And that's a Solar Rahu down. We now only have two sections left of the sun. You know, even though Gale has missed four times, that is still a lot lower than it normally is. Yeah, significantly. I think yeah. my average is like six a run or something. Nice medical gear. Medical gear. Oh my goodness. Seraph is now getting swole. I literally could have sworn I saw Gale miss three times in a fight in the practice room earlier. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he missed three times. Uh, I was fighting Trivana too, and he missed three times in a row in the same fight. Didn't you die to that fight, dude? I did, yeah. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> I died because Gale missed three times in a row in one <laughs> fight. <laughs> he got all that luck out now. Oh, hi. This is the black cat that, uh, from the beginning of the game, his name was Schrodinger. So now we have first strike, which is good because this next <coughs> section is pretty scary otherwise. Yeah. Uh, We're going to be grabbing some more of our final mantras. So Cielo is done with his mantras, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, Argilla is one more mantra away. She will get that from the boss. So we are done with random encounters for the rest of the game now. Uh, so this, uh, 
getting this node, basically there's these nodes on the on the uh, mantra grid that require you to master the surrounding mantras to unlock them. They can include esoteric mantras with some special abilities or stat boosts. So that node that I got there uh, up in the corner gave everyone plus three agility, which is pretty cool. And so Seraph gets uh, Bolt Master for learning Zeodyne. Argilla gets Bolt Emperor so that she can learn Electrain. And that's everything for everyone. Now we're going to heal. We're going to go warp back to the surface of the sun so that we oops, so that we can uh, buy another Impulse Stone and spend all of our money in that order. <laughs> it's very important that it's in that order. You too. always want to buy your Impulse Stone first. Yeah, because uh, ideally we will end up with like, you know, maybe triple digits, maybe four digits of, uh, of money at the end of this uh, shop. And that's not enough for an Impulse Stone because you need 50k, so. There's the impulse stone. This is serious business, remember my friend. I miss Johnny. Alright, so we can sell this and the plant that we got, so we have lots of money and uh now we uh, spend all of our money on medical tools. <laughs> and we grab an attack mirror here. You can probably grab some chakras. Ah, uh, yeah. I, eh, no, I don't need them. Okay. No, because uh, we're not going to be using any any MP during this uh, this stretch here. Oh, yeah, that's right, because of the rules. Yeah, we're not fighting any more random encounters for the rest of the game. So, uh, And so we're not going to be using any MP here, and then the final uh, bosses have a full heal before them. Correct. All right, so this section here, uh, this is the penalty zones. Uh, essentially, you have two sections here. Each of them has a different gimmick that uh, negatively impacts uh, how you go through the area. I'm going to put the protect ring back on Cielo here. So this first area uh, forces you to be ambushed, uh, forces you into human form for every single encounter you in you run into, uh, including special encounters. So if we run into, like, Omoe Kane here, we actually can't do anything about it. Uh, so you're forced into human form here, and you cannot transform into demon form at all while you're in here. Uh, here is a very important ring. This is the shield ring. Uh, equipping this ring gives you uh, null fizz for your first, uh, the first turn of the fight. Uh, so if enemies go first and they use a fizz skill on us, they will they will waste their turn, which is very very nice. Also, I'm going to customize this ring. I'm going to throw some vitality on it. I only have the two hope diamonds. Uh, so I'm only going to throw one on that then. I think you got plus five from it. Uh, yeah, there was an extra text box there. Uh, so occasionally when you use a uh, when you use a gem, I Nara Simha. Uh, so there's two special enemies in this area. There's Nara Simha and there's Parvati. Uh, if you kill them, they have a chance of draw of giving you a rare drop, a Pinaka and a Nandaka, and those are the how you access two of this game's optional bosses. Uh, they're very annoying to farm for, but. Uh, Hey, sometimes you just get lucky and get it. Uh, I'm going to save here again. Uh, this part of the run is quite scary since in human form you are significantly weaker and you're very dependent on being able to get away from battles quickly. So I'm just going to save there again and save getting the speed, uh, the shield ring just in case uh, something happens and I die. <laughs> As the game has demonstrated this run so far, it is very capable of killing me if it wants to, or at least scaring, uh, scaring the heck out of me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, while we're running through this dungeon, we have time for a quick donation. Yeah, absolutely. We have a $10 donation from Arizato saying, Had to donate during Digital Devil Saga 2. Been listening to the soundtrack regularly since finishing the duology several years ago. Awesome speedrunning and amazing commentary. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so over here as we're going through here, there is uh, some more HP data. Those will be going to Argilla as she is our glass cannon mage character. So she needs more HP, uh, especially for an upcoming uh, boss. Every time you get an encounter, I kind of inch a little bit forward, thinking it's a he hoping it's a he ho. Oh yeah, we haven't seen any he hos. Uh, so like I mentioned, uh, Jack Frost gives you a quiz uh, and I was told by uh, by High Spirits that I'm contractually obligated to answer as many questions as I possibly can if I happen to get the quiz, so it'd be cool if we could show that off. Hey, let's go. 
So uh, other benefit of the shield ring is if an enemy does crash into uh, into the shield ring and it ends their turn, uh, that does have a pretty good chance of, like you saw earlier with Hama on human form, uh, that does actually have a decent chance of uh, forcing the enemies into fear, which will give us a guaranteed escape. Whoa. Blood curse. Okay, well, this could be fun. Okay, never mind. Gale dodged and is amazing. Gale proving why he is the real main character and best boy. Except Cielo, who is also best boy. Oh yeah, I forgot Surf doesn't have a gun in this in their human form. Oh yeah, so now that Surf and Sarah have combined to become Seraph, they now use hand lasers instead of guns. They have uh, they have ascended past such trivial things as guns. Which I mean, like to be fair, like you could shoot hand lasers. Why would you? Why would you need a gun? Exactly. Oh, that's not a bad vanity. Not a great vanity. Oh, that, that, that was a bad vanity. That was a very bad vanity. I should have never opened my mouth. <laughs> yeah, usually if he does vanity, he does it in groups of two. Okay, you can stop. Okay. Well, that's rude. I mean, hey, it's an extra press turn, I guess. You got out of there, though, pretty... <laughs> Pretty easy. Yeah. All right, so now we are on to the second penalty zone. Uh, this penalty zone, you have to do the, uh, you have to go through a one-way door maze, and every time you get into a fight, you have, uh, you have to fight with one fewer press turn. So now instead of three turns, we have two. Uh, except, uh, like I said, we're not fighting anything. So that basically just means we're, we would run anyway because fighting with one less press turn is pretty devastating so we're just if we weren't running already we definitely are now Yay. please go away kingu uh, kingu uh does that thing with his jaw and it makes me so uncomfortable oh the gritting his teeth yeah he like grits his teeth and like rotates his jaw back and forth and it just makes me so uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> I love teleporter mazes oh, with one-way doors, which makes actually makes them easier. Yeah, I mean, well, there's no teleporters here. It's all just one-way doors. That, that's what I meant. All right. Uh, this has a medical gear in it, so we have a full HP heal on our party. Oh, two medical gears, even, uh, if we need it. Fortunately, this maze is like the first couple of doors are a little weird, and but then after that, you just kind of go around the outside of outside edge of the area. Uh, mm -hmm. The secret for SMT mazes, generally speaking, is uh, if there is a way you can go that's like the most roundabout way possible to get to a location, that's usually the correct way to go. Yeah. So uh, since the bottom left corner was our destination, it means we had to go all along the entire uh, right edge of right and bottom edge of the uh, map to get there. All right, so we're done with the penalty zones, and we are at Ravana, who is the final of our DDS1 refight. So as soon as I get to there, and Cert leaves me alone. Here's another fun fact for, for people who are wanting to grind in this game. Cert is actually one of the best enemies for uh, mm -hmm. for AP and uh, HP grind or er, and uh, EXP grinding in the entire game. Uh, he is a pretty high level. He also drops uh, power datas or power noise. Uh, as uh, one of his rare drops, which is very nice if you are in Berserk mode farming, because that means more damage and faster farming. Also, fun fact, uh, Seth and uh, Satan, the, sup the two super bosses of this game, are, uh, are uh, that way. You need, uh, you need the powered up Pinaka and Nandika from beating Shiva and Vishnu to get to them, but that, that's where the uh, super bosses are. It's a fun little little detail. All right, our Jilligal Seraph and uh, actually, wait, is that right still? Yeah, our Jilligal Seraph. Item, equip ring, our Jilligal gets the high magic ring. Uh, Seraph is the shield ring. You still have the change ring. Yep, yep, yep. And now we set mind charge onto Seraph over ice boost because we don't need that anymore. And we're going to remove Palimpa from Gale because we don't need Tentarifu anymore and we want to re reduce the number of combos we have in our list. All right, everyone looks good. All right, it's time for Ravana. All right, so this is uh, everyone's favorite Colonel Beck. He's he's getting out of here, and he's so you know he's very distraught, and so he's gonna he's gonna offer us a hug. 
hug. Hug. Alright. So, here. So with, uh, like I mentioned before, with uh, power, with mind charge, plus a buff and debuff, we gain access to charge and debilitate. Uh, so now we're able to uh, to debilitate him, which is very nice because this guy hits like a truck. Uh, so his first turn is going to get blocked by the shield ring. And then we are second second first, same as the first. Uh, this turn to pass Microconja debilitate. Uh, and so now he's at minus two uh, attack, which is good because, like I said, he, he hits really hard. So ideally, he uh, will hit less hard now. Good, good. Uh, you, you don't really want to see Executioner because Executioner is his strongest attack. Uh, or Revelation is also really bad. All right, so now we're able to get buffed up to plus three. And then we are going to heal everyone. This should be enough. Uh, yep, and now our Jill's going to start pelting him with Ogidine. So Ravana is interesting. He's not weak to anything. However, he takes 2.5 times damage from all magic. And, uh, oh. You, you think it was as slow as he attacks. <laughs> you could just dodge to the left. Right. S SMT logic, just dodge to the left, but nope. We're, we're just being very polite. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now he's going to do his signature move with his infinite wind, which is why he put up force repels, and now he's just going to repel uh, lots of damage back on himself, which is pretty cool. So Agadine, we're going to do another force repel. So his next turn, he's going to use Executioner into another infinite wind. So depending on whether or not Executioner lands or if we dodge out of the way, it will depend on what we do our next turn. So let's see if this hits or not. It did. So now he's going to repel infinite wind on himself, which means we get to skip a turn of the fight, which is really nice. Uh, so here we do Agadine, which is going to push him into the next phase of the fight. We're going to pass with Gale. We're going to put up a Lek Repel. Uh, and then we're going to hit him with another Agadine. Uh, and so now he's going to use Rage into Jupiter's Fury. Hug. 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 Oh, sorry. Uh, and now we kill him. So now, Agadine, we're going to do the uh, the change ring trick again. So we get uh, as many turns as or we get much more turns. And we're just going to pass with Seraph uh, just because we want to get in more Agadines. Uh, like I mentioned before, the whole thing with Almighty damage is that you can't really exploit weaknesses, which I believe does, in fact, in this case, apply to uh, Reincarnate. I don't think he takes the extra damage. Oh, I actually didn't kill him. Uh-oh. Uh, I guess Argilla's magic is low or something. I should be fine to survive that. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. We got a dodge in. That's good. Armina. Hmm. Provided we survive this turn. Oh, magic repel. Oh, I guess, I guess we're using reincarnate then. All right. Also, that's a really goofy uh, stand-in he's got there. That's weird. I don't think I've ever seen him use magic repel. Reincarnate! Ah, there we go. We won. Yeah, he's easy every time. On that yeah. one. There you go. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. All right, so that was our last uh, boss before the final boss of the sun, I believe. Uh, we have, well, we have Meganata first still. Yes, the, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're approaching the, the final section. So yeah, we have, we're gonna go a little over estimate because we have about 20 minutes, uh, 20, 25 minutes left of the run, but that's fine. Uh, I believe doing the, doing the Shmup mini game adds like, you know, five or six minutes on. So that plus the, uh, the death. I forgot to swap in Cielo. Yeah, that plus the and the very exciting battles that we have had. Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm gonna take a take the sixth layer save to be safe because I don't want to die and have to read Ravana. Right. Okay. 
the last section. We just have a nice little little walk here to the uh, to the final area. Uh, which, uh, this walk has every single enemy you can possibly encounter in the sun back here. Prior, it was like, you know, enemies were kind of divided up into areas who could show up where. Uh, this final section just lets you have every enemy you possibly could run into. So, uh, basically between each of these warps we take, we'll be confronted with like a fork in, a path, in our path. Uh, essentially just it's, we go right at the first fork and then the rest of them we just go left. Uh, it's pretty easy to remember, thankfully. I wish I could have ran there. Oh well. That's... Fine, as long as Thor does fit here. Yes, he's okay. Neat. All right, so we're gonna take a slight detour here. Uh, there is a very, very important ring. One of the most powerful rings in the game is just hanging out over here. Uh, the ring we're about to grab over here is called the Synchro Ring. What the Synchro Ring does is it allows you to use combos with one less press turn. Uh, so that debilitate combo we were doing that took two press turns is now only going to cost one. Uh, same with using charge in a little bit. Uh, it's very, very important that we have this uh, essential even. So now we are able to give this to Seraph. And we're going to give the shield ring to Gale. And then we're going to customize this. Uh, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to use these pink sapphires. A, hey, let's go. Uh, which magic, it's whatever. Uh, and then I'm going to throw this, uh, wait, I'm going to give this the Hope Diamond. Okay. You want your Vit to be as high as possible. The, uh, the upcoming boss is an incredibly powerful physical move and you just need as much HP as you can possibly get for it. Explode. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Shoutouts to Sert's uh, fear animation there, by the way. He's just like, Ugh. dang it, Gary, why'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> His Sert's named Gary now. Oh no, the elephant is. Yeah, Gary Mikala. Yeah, they call him Gary because it's easier to say than Gary Mikala. Sert is just Steve. It is at this time that I would like to uh, remind everyone that we do have the first strike passive set on Cielo, which does give us a buff to our chance to go first. Just throwing that out there because we haven't gone first in a couple of encounters. No, we have not. Is that just bad luck or is that something to do with the enemy levels in the area? Uh, a little of both. Yeah, so your your chance to go first caps at 80%, so even if we were, like, on level for this area, which we are very much not, uh, we would still, you know, have a... There would still be a slight chance that enemies would just outspeed it, would just go first. But, uh, but yeah, it does have to do with, uh, like, the agility of the, the, uh, the person with the highest agility and having first strike and stuff, so... And levels contribute to that. So, yeah, the, like, the fact that we are low-leveled for this area doesn't help, but, uh... <laughs> But it is just still funny when you just get like several encounters in a row of, uh, of the enemies going first and you're like, wow, I am so glad I took the time to get the first strike mantra only to never <laughs> strike first. Yeah, we're having a rough time striking first, but... Well, yeah. Narasimha always goes first. That one's a... Uh, that one's scripted. Oh, I was just uh, talking about it in general. Yeah, oh yeah, in general for sure. Just like that specific uh, instance, Narasimha and Parvati always go first. Uh... The only, like, the first time that they showed up, they, like, have their, like, line of dialogue they have of, like, if you wish to see my master, or if you wish to see my husband, you must defeat me and take this spear, uh, that eats their first turn, but, uh, every other instance you run into them, they will always go first. Uh, that's an ambush. Well, thankfully, at least, uh, that means no weakness hits, which is cool, but we got away anyway, so it doesn't matter. Wee! Oh, this is the worst encounter. I'd like this is the worst encounter in the game, to, to be completely honest. Yeah. This Lilith plus two Mata's encounter is just absolutely dreadful because they can just spam Fatal Charm to uh, Mazeodine, Tentarafu over and over again, and just 
kill everyone but Seraph, but by that point, Seraph is probably ailmented in some way, shape, or form and can't do anything, so... <laughs> then you just have to, to wait there for, uh... And basically just wait for the game to either have mercy on you or for you to die, and, uh... Unfortunately, uh, it ends up being the latter more often than not with that encounter, at least. Right. We are done pretty much with this section. We just have a few more rooms and then we will be at the final couple of bosses. Uh, okay. okay. Thank goodness. Uh, Palace Athena knows the ability Allure, which tries to inflict charm on the whole party. And I've had a couple of runs in a row where I've gotten full party uh, charm locked by her. So, uh, fortunately... Did you say the last time it happened, it was about five minutes? Yeah, uh, my last practice run I had at home before driving out here, uh, I got charm locked by a group of three Athenas for like five minutes. It was it was wonderful, because they weren't doing anything else. They were just using Allure every turn. It was like, well, cool. And then eventually, like, my party kind of killed each other until just Gale was left alive, and, and they just kept spamming Allure and taunting over and over. And uh, eventually, uh, Gale uncharmed and got away, but it was... Uh, it was uh, quite a lovely five minutes of uh, <laughs> of sitting there thinking about my life choices that led me to uh, to staring at my full party uh, charm log. All right, so here there's a Soma in this flower here, which is pretty cool. Uh, Soma is a full party HP and MP heal. We got a few of them earlier, but we sold most of, or we sold one of them as money. All right, so this is the second to last save in the game. Uh, I'm going to this menuing now and actually remember to set the drain skills on people this time. <clears throat> uh, you get... Oh, I know it's you. Lek drain. Alright, now we're going to use the rest of our data. I only have these. Argilla's HP is a little low, which is kind of concerning. Okay, Largilla item, you get the change ring, which will give you a little more vitality, not as much as I would like. Uh, I'm going to, come on, oh, unfortunate. I was hoping that was going to roll fit. Okay, so Argilla's HP is a little low, which is kind of concerning, but hopefully it's fine. Uh, everything else is how it needs to be. All right, it's time for Mega Nada. Uh, so the, the scary giant cactus of death that we fought earlier that killed Argilla and uh, Roland. We will now be fighting him. Who? Uh, our uh, key item that opened doors for us. Ah! All right. Cactus man! <laughs> All right. Meganata. All right, so we are going to be first buffing ourselves. We have the sinker ring, so now doing this only costs one press turn. And Argilla does have the change ring, so we're able to revert with her. And so we're able to get our full stack of three charges up in one turn, and the next turn we'll be able to, we'll be able to get our three stacks of debilitate as well. So uh, this makes a, a process that in like the next fight, for example, where we won't be doing this, a process that normally takes like, you know, three turns-ish, uh, only take two, which is quite nice. Uh, since the longer you're in the, since the quicker you can get out of this fight, the better. Mm. All right, debilitate one. Also, here's uh, here's hunting betrayal again for for y'all that love this song, which because it's an amazing song. Yeah. And for those who are interested in the super bosses of this game, this song plays for every single optional boss except for Jack Frost. So uh, yeah. When you're fighting Satan, you get to listen to this song for 40 minutes straight. It's wonderful. Alright, we got fully buffed and debuffed, and now we fight. Spin! Get a lot of damage. Spin! Okay. Now we're going to mind charge. Heal. Pass, pass. Brrr. He has a really fun attack animation, especially when he misses, and he does all those, like, really fast punches in, like, midair. It looks very Yeah. <laughs> all right, so he swaps between basically two forms. He starts in his ma in his physical form, uh, and then he swaps into a magical one later. Uh, heal again. Uh, 
And so we're basically just going to repeat this loop of doing uh, of doing reincarnate, mind charge, uh, or yeah, reincarnate, healing, pass, mind charge. Punch, 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 punch. Okay, so now he used Black Bok T. That uh, advertises that he or telegraphs he's going to use one of his two signature moves depending on the phase he's in. When he is in his physical phase, he uses an ability called Virage Blade, which hits uh, multiple times for lots and lots of damage. It's really scary, uh, and we really, really need him to not kill anyone with it. Uh, if it does, it's going to slow down this fight a good bit. So hopefully Virage Blade either doesn't hit very many times or doesn't kill anyone. That's uh, pretty close. Uh, Mad Rush hopefully doesn't... Okay, woo! Let's go. That's the scariest That's the scariest turn of the fight right there. Yeah, it really is. Uh, because even if Virage Blade doesn't kill someone, if he follows it up with Mad Rush and then it just hits people anyway, it's uh, not a not a good time. So thankfully, not to, to, to not occur. Uh, so now we are going to use one of... That's the wrong way. Now we're going to use one of our Somas here to heal up uh, HP and MP because uh, Reincarnate's very expensive, as was uh, buffing and debuffing. And now we're just going to repeat this loop over and over again of uh, doing Reincarnate and then healing and mind charging. Indra. Uh, so once we do a couple of more dam uh, a couple more hits of damage to him, he's going to do uh, an ability called Moksha, which is him swapping from his physical aspect to his magical aspect, uh, and then he's going to use Black Bok T again to advert to telegraph using his magical special move called Meru Thunder, uh, and we're just going to again keep chipping away at him. Once he uses Black Bok T in his magical aspect, we will be able to uh, or will be able to put up uh, Electrain to prevent that. There's Moksha, and now he will use uh, Black Bakhti. So this turn, instead of healing, which is he didn't attack us at all, uh, we're going to pass to our Jill, and we're going to use Electrain. Uh, Meru Thunder is an electric ability, and I want you all to see how much damage Gale heals here. And remember when I do that, uh, and remember when you do see that number, that his attack is lowered as low as it goes, and Gale's defense is as high as it goes. Yeah. When you see how much damage Gale heals here, which would be how much he would be taking from this. <laughs> Whoa, thunder! Uh, yeah, you know, 433 damage when he only has... Uh, 374 health. Yeah, it's, uh, it hurts. Uh, okay, so now that we're uh, in the magic aspect, it's very likely that he's just going to swap out of it immediately back into his physical aspect because we have done a lot of damage to him. Just in case he doesn't, we're going to put up a magic mirror because it, there is a good chance that he will, uh, if he stays in his magic aspect, he'll start using death skills or Tentarafu or uh, very other fun stuff. He didn't. He just swapped back into his physical aspect, thankfully. And then, there's the dodge animation I was talking about. Uh, so thankfully he didn't do that. Uh, like I said, if he does, it's pretty scary, uh, which is why I put up a magic mirror because uh, that way he will not Tentarafu us. All right, so he should die in two more reincarnates here. Oh, no, right there, he's dead. Yay, we did it, we beat Meganata. Awesome. Meganata! All right, we have like <laughs> nine minutes left of the run. Everyone's final mantras learned. Meganata gives you a ton of AP, by the way. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to do our last menu. We are going to set Zeodyne onto Seraph, and we're going to set Elec Amp here, and we're also going to set Ice Drain. Uh, we don't need to because I actually do have everything I need for to not need it, but just in case. Uh, we're going to put Mind Charge onto Gale, and that's how we do there. We're going to equip the High Magic Ring to Gale, and I need him to have about 65 magic. Uh, so we're going to throw this purple... Uh, we're going to throw, throw the yellow crystal on him. Uh, and 65 magic, exactly. Perfect. Uh, we, we need him to have a very specific amount of, uh, amount of magic, because there's going to be an attack he does later on in the fight where he needs to deal less than 1750 damage uh, to a uh, to an enemy or to one of the phases of the final boss. If he deals more than that, then it uh, causes the boss to change his attack pattern to do things that are very scary that we don't want to see. Yeah. And uh, so we need him to do a very specific amount of damage again under 1750, which uh, ends up being you know about 65 magic is just enough. Uh, you know, plus or minus like one or two is usually fine, but you know you. Being right on the dots, pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna be in the final boss. Uh, I'm gonna explain it a little bit, but uh, mostly uh, we should jam to the music because yeah, the, definitely 100. The battle theme for the final boss is a song called "Divine Identity," and it is amazing. It is my favorite final boss theme in the entirety of SMT. 
All right, so this is God Brahman, the uh, AKA uh, Gigantic Train. All right, so we're going to be spending our first couple of turns buffing here. So uh, we're gonna, he starts off, uh, he has five phases, each representing one of the elements. So uh, we start out in the fire phase, and so we're gonna put up fire drain every single turn so that we block his, uh, his more powerful attacks for the most part, and we're going to use two charges. We're going to get ourselves to fully plus and minus three uh, before we progress forward. He always opens up by using Trisagion, which is the mega fire elemental ability. And here's our third charge. Now we are going to be swapping to Debilitate. And ideally he just keeps crashing into the fire drain. Uh, this phase also has some really scary things he can do. Uh, he has access to Hama on, which is something you really don't want to ever see. Uh, he can also use Makanda to lower your magic attack. And if he does that, we have to immediately go like buff our magic attack up. So ideally we're able to get out of this phase in about six turns, but it can take upwards of like, you know, 10 to 12 if he really wants to just be rude. All right, so he is now fully debuffed. What a do, Xana do. Nice dodges, let's go. Yo, what a do, Xana do. Hey, let's go. Good dodges and Saggy on, so we get healed too. Nice. That's a pretty good turn on oh, uh, a very Brahmin's good. part. All right, so now we're going to mind charge with both Surf and, or Seraph and Gale. And put up another fire drain. Once we get out of the fire phase, though, you're really going to see some damage. Yeah, the fight is incredibly scripted once we're out of the fire phase. Yeah. Uh, it's just this first phase can take a variable amount of time. All right, so we're going to do a Zandine here with Gale to chip. Uh, we are going to do a Fire Drain, and now we're going to Mind Charge Gale. The important part of this fight is we need to hold on to this Mind Charge for about two or three three more phases of the fight. So we're going to Mind Charge here. This is the last turn we're in the Fire Phase. Wow, this that was a perfect setup uh, setup phase. That was really mm -hmm. good. So this Zeodyne here will push the rest of his uh, will pu push the rest of his HP. Every single phase has uh, 350, uh, 3,500 HP, uh, 3,500 HP, and uh, except for the final one, which is 7,000. So we did 3,500 there, and now he's going to transition into his force phase. We put up a force repel shield uh, preemptively because he always, every phase always opens up with the uh, the severe or mega damage variety attack. So he's going to use via via here, which is the severe force damage, uh, so that we can just drain that off immediately. And now we are going to use Zeodyne. We're going to throw up an attack mirror because this phase can use uh, Gate of Hell, which is an ability that. Uh, is a physical attack that also can inflict da uh, can inflict stone, which we really don't want to see. We're going to revert our Jilla here with the change ring. Since he spams a lot of force attacks, we really don't want our Jilla to be getting press turns generated off of her. So we're just going to revert her to remove her weakness. Uh, Rakunda is totally fine. Uh, we really shouldn't be taking very much damage in this fight, so I don't really care if he throws out Rakunda's here. Oh, okay, I was, hope I was waiting for the third. And there's the dodge. Very nice. And by Avia, it doesn't matter. So he didn't use Gate of Health, but it's always good to have the Attack Mirror there, just in case. Uh, so now we can use Zeodyne. This will push him out of this phase. And now we are good to pass. Transform with Argilla. Uh, I actually wasn't supposed to pass. I was supposed to use a Magic Mirror, but it's fine. I can just do it here. Uh, so now we're going to put up a Magic Mirror. We don't have uh, any way of preventing, uh, of like draining Earth. So we're just going to throw up a Magic Mirror because it does the same thing. Uh, we need two Magic Mirrors for this fight, and we have two, so that's perfect. So this is the Earth phase. This phase is very important that we kill it in one turn because he has access to death skills, and this is also the first of his phases where if you push him beyond 50% of his HP, he can use an ability called Eternal Zero. What Eternal Zero does is it buffs him all the way up to plus three and you all the way to minus three on all of your stats. So uh, it is very important that we do not see Eternal Zero, so we're going to kill this fight in one turn. Also, so again, we don't have to deal with any of his death skills. Uh, we're going to use Reincarnate here for a little bit of safety. It does slightly more damage than Zeodyne does, and it's, again, essential we kill in one turn. So we did that 2200. This is going to do about 1600, so perfect. Uh, and now we are good to throw up Elect Drain. Elect is the fourth of his cycles. This is going to be, like, the one part of the fight that isn't exactly scripted, uh, depending on what he does on his second and third turns. Uh, essentially, he's going to open up here with Narukami, which is his electric attack. We'll drain that off. But he also has access to Neural Shock, which can inflict stun to your party members. And if he uses that and we get stunned and uh, Ser Seraph or Gale gets stunned, we do have to take some time to heal it off. So here in this first turn, we're just going to mind charge with Gale and Seraph. Like so. We're going to put up another Electrain and we're just going to hope he's like Zeodynes us. Uh, 
General Shock uh, hopefully doesn't land on either of my two. Nice dodges. Very good, very good. Uh, Light is an almighty attack that deals uh, damage to the whole party. There's Zeodine, perfect. All right, so this is the turn where it's very important. The Zandine does not do more than 1750, 1750 damage. Perfect, 1703 is excellent. Kind of get very close, but very excellent. Yeah, that was uh, that was an incredibly high roll from Gale, but uh, we are fine. If it did more than that, I would have to kill uh, kill uh, the phase this turn and push into the uh, push into his ice phase and do some setup in that phase, which isn't ideal, but we can do it. All right, so provided he doesn't stun anyone, we can move on to the uh, we can move on to the final phase of the fight. Okay, Seraph got stunned, so we have to stall for a turn. All right, good dodges, good dodges. All right, so here we're going to dis stun. We're going to throw a medical tool with Gale just to get everyone to full HP, uh, since we do only have plus one defense at the moment. Power. Okay, so he's going to do something. He's going to do power charge, mind charge, light into Narakami here. Light does get enhanced by power charge, but uh, it doesn't do all that much damage. And then Narakami. All right, now we are we are good to push now. So we are going to do reincarnate. This will push off the rest of his HP. Uh, oh, by the way, time is on last hit on the final phase, so uh, get ready on time. All right, so now we throw our final magic mirror. Pass. All right, final phase, he does Niflheim, which gets repelled. Niflheim animation is just always awesome. All right, so here we're going to do Zeodyne and then Zandine. And our Jill is going to throw the Impel Stone. Are we going ham? We are going ham! All right, Mind Charge here. And then Gale's going to just throw up another Zandine just for some chip. Jill is going to pass, and then we are going to Zeodyne, and time. GG. Thank you, thank you. Whew. Good All job, right. Frida. And we can skip most of the, the cutscenes up to the end. So yeah, we, we talked to God. We convinced him not to destroy the world. Seraph reaches enlightenment. All's well. Sun goes back to normal. Everything is cool. Oh. You did the thing. <laughs> we did the thing. I mean, there's one last thing to do now, right? Yep. Get to sing the credits theme. So this is the last. I can't skip this final cutscene. So there's like a couple minutes here of, uh, of ending cutscene, and then we will uh, we will sing the credits theme. And uh, if I could get the game audio turned up just a little bit so I can hear. The sun's back to normal! And get my lyrics ready. Uh, I guess we'll we'll take this time during the ending to uh, to kind of say our, our closing our closing words. So thank you all for having me. Thank you RPG Limit Break for having me here. Thank you all you wonderful viewers for for watching and donate, donating. Thank you to Zero for being with me on commentary. Really appreciate it. Not a problem. And uh, shout outs to the SMT speedrunning community. Uh, shout outs to Connery uh, who did a lot of the routing for this game. Uh, shout outs to Pink Pajamas for just being an absolute legend uh, in the SMT speedrunning community. Uh, Shout outs to uh, up, shout outs to Furit for uh, for showing up and hanging out with us. Shout outs, shout outs to all of uh, all of my community and for uh, yes. for everyone watching this Our run. Y'all are great. Y'all are begin. awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I glad I got to showcase this run. This game's really fun. Absolutely love the love the DDS games. This is my favorite game in the series, and uh, glad I got to showcase. The game was incredibly rude. This was uh, <laughs> definitely DDS showing uh, showing off all I had to offer, but uh, we had a lot of fun. Do you have fun, Hiho? Okay, well, never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> and Gail only missed four times. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's a whole $8 to charity. And uh, I'll go ahead and uh, donate, uh, 
we had the one in death, right? So I'll go I'll go ahead and just like round that up to ten to ten bucks for the for the death as well. All right, so we're getting into the credits here. There's uh, this little fun, happy jingle, and then we'll be, be getting into the credits theme, uh, which is called Time Capsule. Shoutouts to water. Water is very good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ai, 
福の巨匠で舞い上がれこの空に溢れる想い涙に寝る会えない今どこで笑ってるあなたへと届けたい抱えきれずしまったあの日あの想い Thank you very much again. I appreciate y'all having me. I've been Freedom Pulse. I've been Zero Blade Edge. And、uh, we are signing off. Let's give one last round of applause for Freedom Pulse. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All righty, don't any of y'all go anywhere. We have an awesome Final Fantasy IX run coming right up. That is also going to do it for me. I have been Ghoul Zero Two. It's been a pleasure. I'm going to leave you in the very capable hands of RJ's Mangot. And we will get you on the Final Fantasy IX as soon as we can. Good morning, RPG Limit Break. My name is RJ Smangit, and I get to be your host for the next couple of hours.、Uh, before we get on to some other things, why don't we give our previous host, Ghoul02, a round of applause for holding it down overnight?
did a fantastic job. Uh, just so everybody in chat is aware, we are going to have to restart the stream real quick. So if you see the stream go down, do not worry. We will be right back. All right, everybody, we should be back. Uh, before we get started with this FF9 run, they're all still getting set up, so let's read some donations. We have a $10 anonymous donation, for, or not anonymous, from Wonderlands Andy. We have a $30 donation from Anchor that says, Hello, Musky and friends. Been looking forward to this run for a while. Happy running. And then we have a $380 donation from the French Restream that says, To bless the run with Honey Clean.
All right, RPG Limit Break. I think we are just about ready, but before we do, we do have a couple more donations to read. We have a $10 donation from Fruit Skin that says, this is my wager for the Gale missing from DDS2 run. We have a $10 donation from Ye Dinosaur that just says, Ye. We have a $10 donation from Freedom Pulse that says, as promised, here is $2 for every Gale miss, plus an additional $2 for the death. Thanks again to RPG Limit Break for having me, and best of luck to all the runners. Let's see that wedding reenactment. Uh, we have a $100 donation from Twirlin Curtis that says, Steiner is the best Final Fantasy character because he rolls up the pant legs on his armor, which is such a powerful look. <laughs> and then we have a $420 donation and 60 cent donation from D Sharper that says, in everyone enjoys naming their favorite character their own name, and since Mutsky is already winning for Ico, let's add another and rename Freya to Mel. <laughs> <laughs> 